QH Land 24, day three. It's the last day. Why does it feel like the last day? Oh, that's right, because it's 4v4 day. And what brings 4v4? The sweat, the drama, the competitiveness? Nah, none of that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again, day three. It's, it just seems tiring. Tasty Spleen TV proudly presents to you again another wonderful broadcast. What are we expecting for today, though? It's been kind of a long day. Why don't you come with me? It's already been, it's already been really tough. We've got the group stages finished. We've got brackets set. We've got all the other events, all the other tournaments completed in the books. Today is the day. Today is the prestige. Today is the 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 creme la la creme, if if I said that right, uh, speedball. Maybe, maybe you'll you'll correct my French another time. Again, we welcome you. Andy and Jahar are ready to rock and roll, but are you ready? Do you have everything that you need today to enjoy what's absolutely going to be a chaotic cast? And not chaotic from the sense of the stream. Chaotic because in-game, these players are playing for the best. They're playing for that, that, that top-tier level of competitiveness that, that 4v4 brings. Andy was telling me this morning before we went live, this is what everybody plays for. This is what everybody travels from across the world, across the country, or just down the road. They come here for this today for the 4v4 tournament. 1v1, Locus, he's gone. He's disappeared. He doesn't play in the 4v4. BPS, not here. Not 2v2, so your 2v2ers, gone. It's all about right here what's at the land right now, the 4v4. These guys are sweating their, sweating their butt off. I was about to say something inappropriate, but not for Saturday, not today. Guys, I don't know if you're ready. I think I'm ready. Viewers, you go get your favorite adult beverage, even if it's 9 a.m., even at 7 a.m., get that favorite adult beverage, kick that feet up, get that snuggly blanket going, because it's snowing and blowing over here in Stockholm, Sweden at the Epic Arena. Turn that Bose sound system up all the way to 11. Guys, get ready. It's QH Land 24, Masters, 4v4 day. Andy and Jahar, kick ass and take names, guys. Thank you, Boov. Even though I think uh, it's been now revealed that, uh, oh no, we're, we're, we're in front of a green screen. Damn. The illusion's been ruined. Why did they show that? <laughs> Come on, man. Nobody was ever going to know. We totally have the land in, behind us. <laughs> oh, me. man. Yeah. Okay, what's going on today, Andy? <laughs> uh, well, we have the Forum 4, which is uh, what everybody has been looking forward to. Um, and um, uh, a little bit of... Uh, uh, well, a few issues before before we got started. Issues? No, no, that's not uh, how that works. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, BPS had to uh, uh, run back home because his uh, wife was not feeling right. well. Right. Okay, that does count as that an issue. is yeah. an issue uh, for Team Sudden Death specifically. Yeah. Although, of course, Rio was here. Rio's no slouch. He's no slouch. He's gonna take over uh, for BPS unless BPS magically reappears. We you never know. Um, yeah. And uh, we also had a couple of other issues in the group stages, uh, but we have reached the quarterfinals. Yeah, and it means that uh, it's time for 4v4. Yes. A lot of pedigree, a lot of uh, attention at the very top level of players here. And uh, for, uh, for better or worse, but really better, uh, a lot of teams have hopped in just because 4 on 4 is also fun. It's pretty intense. Um, and uh, due to the way the group shook out, uh, we are going to be starting today with uh, <laughs> with the Commandos uh, versus a team comprised, uh, kind of thrown together by uh, Zorak, uh, Burnkalk, uh, uh, Nico, Nico, and oh, I have my name. I actually just read uh, Goral. and, and Goral. Um Burnkal played one yeah, round yeah, of four so on four and said this is not the mode for no, me no no so so jesse's actually gonna be swapping in, and that's kind of exciting because jesse has been putting love together jesse. i love jesse um he's been doing a lot of graphics for qh land for a long time 
And to be honest, uh, he uh, he also did a lot for us back in 2017, all of our map graphics and all that. Oh, yeah, so yeah. really appreciate his talent, really appreciate that he's here because he's been doing so much for QH land for a long time. But I've never seen him until this year. So he's this year is special hair. for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I love yeah. his hair. Really glad he's here. Uh, a lot of cool names uh, also showing up. Um, Faz, like Quake Champions, Quake Live. CZM, Quake Reed, uh, Faz. and today. CZM is actually here. It's really crazy. Prozac was here. I think he took off. I think he's here guys, for just the one uh, day. So for the Quake World people out yeah. here, we yeah, people had a, really we had a, uh, well, yeah, you know, CZM and Faz, that's a little bit yeah. more Quake 3-esque, but... Uh, we had a special guest yesterday, actually two special guests, and I think they're going to be here. At least one of them are already today. Uh, we had Dag and Space. Wait, Dag's here? Well, he was here yesterday. Shit. I'm not sure if he's here right now. I this has been such a compressed event. There's yeah. so much happening, and we're here for you people, so I hope you appreciate it because I don't get to say hi to Dag. Yeah, and uh, and space is here uh, right now as well. I saw him earlier, um, and that's pretty cool. Those are two old legends from uh, from way back uh, for Quake World players, and I'm, I'm sure most people know Dag from earlier QH lands as well. He yeah. he and Griffin uh, basically met in all of the one-on-one -on -one finals, and he was also very very strong in uh, Legge Artis, which uh, the LA. A team that they dominated with back in the mid 2000s. So it was cool to see Dag, because when he disappeared from the scene, he was uh, he was kind of just like gone. Like yeah, he just as, as it happens with a lot of yeah, players, he just yeah. cut ties with everything that had to do with Quake World. Out of well, not out of nowhere, he kind of lost interest and then just <laughs> cut ties. But it was so nice to see him in the venue, and we actually, well, I mean, we have a QH land in 2024, and Dag yep. is there. Like who thought? So I, I'm sure the Quake World community knows how crazy that is, um, because yeah, most people thought we'd never see him again. Yeah, and I was surprised also to see Dev actually show up today, just oh, yeah. for today. Yeah. Always happy to see him and the other uh, Brazilian players. A little bit easier for Dev than everybody else, because um, I think he's still living in, in Spain, I think? Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, he lives in Spain originally from Brazil, and uh, there was birthdays going on his daughter or something yeah. so he like rushed in here last night and now he's gonna spend 36 hours here and then he needs to go back for a birthday and compressed yeah is the very word compressed. for for qh yes. land in general uh so it's gonna be back-to-back -back matches today we're doing all of the playoff games we're gonna be uh seeing single elimination best of threes 20 minutes a map all the way through and we've got most of the bracket hey hey bracket you, you need to play when i hit play uh We've got most of the bracket filled out. We're waiting on one group to finish up to fill out those last two spots. And we are going to be starting with uh, Commando versus uh, NZGB, even though that B is now an S, I believe. So I think we're still looking for Milton in the server. And uh, once we have him, uh, we'll have our first match going. So I think this first one is going to be, you know, it's going to be some four on four. <laughs> It is going to be some 4-on-4, and, four and uh, well, it's not going to be the most even game that we might get to see today. Right. Obviously, we have a couple of really strong teams. So we got Sudden Death and specifically the Firing Slackers. So the all-star team put together, as Paradox would say mm -hmm. yesterday, he said, well, we had to put together a, an, an all-star team to put Milton in his place. And... Um, we're going to have to see if they're going to be able to do that. It's going to be uh, uh, interesting to see. Obviously, um, Commando has been dominating the scene for many years now. They've been the best 4-on-4 four four team. Um, and uh, Reppy and Razor, they just kind of went, well, we need two players. Who can we get? And then they reached out to Slackers. Like, can we steal one player? There is a point where... Like, in this entire bracket, you need to stop going, okay, who's going to be able to, to take it? Because who's going to take it? It's going to be who can frag Milton the most. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the goal. And and he's got the same goal versus everybody else. So. Yeah, yeah and just the fact that they managed to get <laughs> both Including Paradox teammates. and Zero to join that firing Slackers team. Yeah. Um, basically, the two drivers on Slackers uh, originally, right? So that that's an all-star team that might actually pose a challenge for Commando. Of course, last year... Um, the finals were a uh, 3-2 victory for Commando over Sudden Death that yeah. time. Yeah, that was so that, that was, was a very, hell of a very, very close. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm very curious to see how this uh, day pans out. Yeah. So on Sudden Death, 
this year. You know, we, we potentially don't have BPS, um, but Rio yeah. was part of that crew last year as well. Yeah. So he was doing awesome. We've got Carapace, who, as we've seen, is entirely on point. He's entirely on par today or, or this during this event. And yeah. yesterday, I would say he was even like, outperforming BPS a little bit. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, Carapace, uh, he's... He's known to be yeah. probably the best Swedish player. Or carry player. pace. Ca car carry pace. Hey, that, yeah. I like that. I like that. He actually, whenever That's he joins the server, he has an automatic message that says the carrier has arrived. <laughs> so it's a it's an uh, it's a homage to an old StarCraft unit. Whenever it spawns, it yeah. says that. But it kind of suits him uh, because uh, he is the carry most of the time <laughs> when he plays. Uh, so carry pace is obviously going to be playing for Sudden Death, but we're not going to see them just yet. Right. The first game is going to be Commando versus... Oh, man. How do we... NZGJ? <laughs> NZGJ? Uh, yeah, N NZG... Uh, B? No, it's going to be J now. Yeah, yeah J. Because I'm going to go ahead Jissy. and swap that. Yeah, Jesse took over. Burn realized that, well, okay, 4-on-4 four four was not as fun as he had hoped. He's more of a dueler, um, and uh, he, he wants to play one-on-ones. And so two, we, and two we and now have a, a mid um, tournament uh, team swap, player swap, and uh, and that also means a, uh, a a team name change. Yeah, uh, just a small a one letter. There we go. There we go. So yeah, they advanced through Group B. Group B had a lot of fun going on in it, and uh, as a result, Zorak has to play a little more quick today before getting to go enjoy Stockholm. Uh, Commando, of course. Uh, so we've got Milton, we've got Xantum. Xantum, of course, has been doing a lot of work for the event as well. Uh, yeah, haven't yeah. gotten to see him play too much yet. Uh, same thing for Dickie and uh, Vaya. So I I'm happy to see them here now for 4v4. Yeah, me too. And I'm also, um, I w I'm curious. So something that I want to see out of this game, obviously Commando, the heavy favorites in, uh, favorites in this uh, first one, uh, but what I'm curious about seeing is like how's the shape of like Milton and and, and Vala for example. Like, yeah. Uh, Vala uh, last year he kind of ran away with the DM threes and really carried those games. Um, and um, and uh, I kind of want to see what shape he's in. How how's he looking? Um, to see because that, that's telling to someone like me who watches so much Quake World every single day. Uh, it's interesting to because I can notice the patterns, mm -hmm. you know, like is he playing well? Is he feeling it? Um, and that's what I'm gonna be looking out for. Um, it's gonna be a rough ride though for <laughs> uh, for Zorak and Jesse and uh, Nico and the guys. Uh, it's gonna be a difficult game for them. I I think so. Yeah. Um, I was really kind of banking on Burn to be in there. Uh, yeah. So to kind of float them along, but I, I guess four on four really wasn't his cuppa. No, uh, they played, I guess, one game against uh, Firing Slackers, and I'm sure that was uh, <laughs> because they were in the same group, and um, I'm sure that was rough for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Burn was like, okay, yeah, this is not my cup of tea. Or uh, They're not playing Arrow Walk, obviously. obviously. No, they're not. Right. They are not. It's all one pool on my end. But yeah, today it's just the three-map pool, which will be fun in the best of five in, in the final. <laughs> yep. You Quake players. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. We're actually pretty close to uh, uh, getting to a, uh, a, the big five in, yeah, uh, in yeah. Form 4. So for the for 25 years now, it's been the, the big three. E1M2, mm -hmm. DM2, and DM3. But uh, we got Schloss in there lately. Uh, a lot of p players are playing that map. And we're just looking for that fifth map to stick. And once that does stick, then we will have a five map pool in uh, Form 4. <laughs> Maybe for the 30th anniversary or something. Who, who, who knows? That would um, be crazy. That would be a huge change. Yeah, it would. <laughs> All right, well, so we're the starting to see are, some F3s. Yeah. Yeah, the players are on the server. I'm just waiting for, to see them on Discord. The uh, commando team, they're ready because they're, well, they're always ready. They are. They are so efficient. They're so reliable, and they always show up when they need to. Now I'm just waiting for. Yeah, we'll hop in here and see what we can get out of them. So yeah, best of three through to the finals. Yeah. And then we'll be in best of five mode. Thank you to Andy for corralling people on the server, getting them in Discord, getting them uh, going here. 
It's not easy herding cats, especially when there's eight cats today. Yep. More cats, more work. <laughs> <laughs> We're close, though. To get the first map, and it looks to be E1M2. I assume that's where we're gonna end up. And uh, we do have a couple of hot camera hotkeys for this. We got the quad, we got the rocket launcher, uh, the mega room, and of course the yellow armor room. All set up. Oh, look at Sora just looking out over yeah, Stockholm. Yeah, enjoying, uh, enjoying the sights. He always <laughs> he doesn't want to be a tourist today, so he's already thinking about getting out of here. It's like uh, pining for the fjords, as it were. He's going to uh, an Ethiopian place here. If you're in, Sto in oh, Stockholm, yeah. just uh, try to find an Ethiopian place if you want to meet Sora. There's probably like one. No, actually, there might be more. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> That's not to say that Zorak is going to throw this, but he does have his sights set. He's also going to do some dinner. commentary today. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we're going to hear Zorak on the mic later. Giving us a review of the Ethiopian place, yeah. Or a preview. Yeah. And, um... Uh, Looks like they are almost all of them on there. Just missing Nico, and then once Nico joins, you are good to go. Good luck, have fun. And yes, Zorak is always overdressed. He yes. has he has a suit that he sleeps in, and I think he's the only <laughs> person I know where his birthday suit is a suit. <laughs> I've never seen him without one. Have no, you? me neither. Yeah. Like even like casually between games or like to <laughs> just like when we're relaxing in one of the couches and just talking, he's always got it on. I'm not sure what issues Nico is having. Yeah. But he's in there. Yeah, he's on the server just trying to figure out how to get onto Discord, it seems like. Hmm. Advanced technology. Yeah, because in Forum 4, obviously, uh, yesterday we were listening in on the teams. Now, 2 on 2, of course, is a much different... It's a very different uh, game mode where you mm -hmm. don't have to communicate as much as you do in Forum 4. Um, but just like in 2 on 2, obviously, people are going to be using uh, team uh, team binds and so on to, to give information to your teammates. Yeah. Which is uh, something that Quick World players... Uh, you know, they learned for so many years to, to <laughs> be efficient with. However, um, nowadays, everybody uses voice as well. Oh, we're going to uh, DM3 first, oh, okay. actually. Yeah. Still waiting on Nika, though. So DM3 could allow for a little bit more of individual uh, play to come out. Um, it's a larger map. You're, you're kind of left on to, to your own devices for a while sometimes, especially if you're defending red. Yeah, and you always kind of want to have at least one guy defending red. Also, look at those graphics, by the way, made by Infinity. I love the lighting here. Yeah, yeah the lighting is done by Infinity. Obviously, the rest of the map is made by PPS. Unfortunately, not here, so I can't like wave to him or anything <laughs> and say thank you. But the lighting here was done by Infinity, and it's pretty cool. It's very different. It's like if you if you were to see a comparison to the original map, it would be very apparent. Uh, but we just kind of want it to be a little bit subtle. You can see a little bit of blinking in here. Oh, that was Ooh, a, yeah. a little bit of an Ownit logo. Ooh. Thank you, Ownit, for all that the you do for us. Light styles, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you can see some blinking in this, mm -hmm, these mm -hmm. lights, which is something that is not original. There's also these shadows. Yeah. Like, what's this? This is something that we don't usually have in Quake World. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so a lot of cool lightning lighting done uh, by Infinity. Let's see if Nico has made it onto the Discord. He has not. What is going on? Why are you AFK, Nico? Maybe he had to take a bathroom break or something before the game. Is you know you're gonna be nervous when you're playing uh, Commando. Yeah. This is no no easy team to be up against. You got Martin, you got Milton, you got Xantom and X Term like. Every single one of those are star players. And here's Nico and Zorak and Girl and Jissy. Um, pretty good players, especially uh, Zorak, of course, a very, very strong player. Nico is also very good at uh, uh, 4 on 4. Um, but um, yeah, they're, they're not quite the star players <laughs> the, uh, the Commando team are. It's a tall ask, yeah, we'll admit, yeah. It's a very <laughs> tall ask. I mean, Commando, they basically win Especially everything. for a single win. Yeah, single elimination also is brutal, of course. If you do hit Commando in the first round, 
you go, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I do love some DM3 though. Alright. Yeah, let him know that we're ready. <laughs> oh, he's totally right. shitter. Okay. Okay, so I was right. Uh, a little bit of nerves, I guess, before the uh, the game, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just feel thankful that we're in uh, a venue that has uh, such well-maintained facilities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, between the, the lunches, the dinners, and the bathrooms, this, oh, yeah. and you can sleep here. This is a one-stop shop. Yeah. Um, especially the food. I mean, Never need to leave. That's something different. Like, we... Lunch was just served uh, a few minutes ago, and people were spamming the Discord, like, the lunch is so good. <laughs> Which is something that is new for QH9. Usually we have, you know, your favorite, the Gorbis. Yeah, I haven't had any Gorbis this trip yet. Can you believe it? Yeah, because there hasn't been a need for one, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's it's emergency food for sure. Let's see. But I've been feeling pampered this year. All right, so we can see the, the one empty seat there. Zorak is still looking over his shoulder. Oh, he took his uh, suit jacket off to oh. play. That's how you know he's serious. Yep. Yeah. He's getting serious now. <laughs> wow, I noticed a small bug on the map. We're not going to talk about it. But... <laughs> it's too late now. Yeah, it's uh, too late. Infinity, take note. We're missing a lift. <laughs> also, we don't endorse sitting this close to your screen. Like, what? <laughs> Zorak is just <laughs> getting blasted by the sun. <laughs> yeah, so what you're seeing is Zorak. Uh, he's. Uh, so it's a running joke in the North American community that he sits so close. That's why he needs to have all of his uh, HUD items at yeah. the center of his screen, because otherwise <laughs> he can't see them. And one of the reasons he uh, struggles uh, with playing with like team binds and stuff is because they usually show up, you know, originally <laughs> up in the top left corner, and he just can't see them. Why do we not see these these lifts? This oh, invisible oh, lift. There we go. Yeah. Now we see them. Okay. Oh, it goes. Down. The lift's got a ring. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, I also um, want to apologize yesterday, we did not have the location files for a couple of the maps, so it said some place and we got called out for that. That's so. what happens when you have new maps that haven't been there for 25 years. Yeah, yeah. You'd think, you'd think, I'd, I would think <laughs> of that, but, uh, you know. Still looking over his shoulder. <laughs> like, where's this fucker at? <laughs> <laughs> looking out for Nico. We'll be here soon, hopefully. Yeah. So good time to practice, good time to warm up. Yeah, they get a few minutes. They're starting to ready up, but yeah. obviously waiting for Nico. <laughs> you can see Boov over there actually talking to Zorik, <laughs> asking what the hell is going on? And he's like, yeah, well, Nico, Nico is on the shitter. <laughs> I appreciate that Link has been so active in chat. It makes me miss him even more that he's not here. I wonder if Link is uh, bummed that he didn't get to see Dog. Yesterday. Do you think Link is actually a dildo in, in your ass? <laughs> Secretly? Maybe. Think they're the same person? Yeah, because he, he hey, has Link, all of these What do you think of E1M7? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dildo. Uh, no, not dildo. I mean Link. What, <laughs> what do you think about E1M7? Is that a good map? Especially for like 4 on 4? Ooh, there he is. We got uh, him. We, we got, got him. We Nico. got Nico's in, in his seat. And I think he just got told who they're playing. All right. Yeah, and he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine we're going to get either a Martin cam here, or Vala cam, if you will, mm -hmm. or a Milton one. So last year, of course, Martin was just dominating DM3. Good luck, boys. Have fun. And All here right. we go. Welcome everybody to QH Land 2024. It's time for four on four. We're in the playoffs finally. And yes. here we go on DM3, first map of the day, for us at least. The first rocket launcher goes to Jissy. He's gonna, he's gonna dive for the lightning gun. That's kind of ill-advised, uh, but that's what he uh, decided to do. Just making sure everything is correct. And it is, nice. 
Yeah, so immediately, seven on one. We've got Ekstrom on the quad, Martin on the pent. Yeah, we can swap over to them. I just wanted to see what Jisit did with the first rocket yeah. launcher. Obviously, he dove into the water, trying to go for the LG as well. Uh, that's usually not going to work, because you're going to face one of the other spawns, who always goes for the uh, hill mega, and then down to the... Um, the lightning gun, and he's gonna be more stacked than you are when you respawn with the rocket launcher. So, um, yeah, that didn't work for him. And now we're on board with Martin with the second rocket launcher, obviously. Jesse also dropped the pack to Xanthan with that first rocket launcher, so that means two rocket launchers and the lightning gun for Commando. And this is where it might start becoming very brutal. Yeah, we're not seeing any weapons over on the other side, so Xanthum's going to be able to pick up this quad basically for free. Yeah. Not a lot of opposition there, but really what I'm looking for now is for NZ, uh, GJ, NZ, we'll just N stick with NZ, NZ yeah, NZ, yeah. <laughs> uh, to get any kind of weapons at all. So zorix has got an LG, and it's going to be down to Xanthum to hunt him down, securing the YA room. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know um, how Commando are going to play this because they know that they are so favored. So there are two ways to go about it. Otherwise, or either you um, you play it like kind of loose and you just try to do fun stuff. Or you really try to get the practice in and lock the entire map down as much as you can and just completely destroy your opponent. We'll see what they do. Commando usually decide to destroy their opponents. That's usually what they do. It's not a bad decision. So now, two LGs on NZ. Uh, yeah, I, I want to see what Zorak is doing. Let's find him. Yeah, uh, that's only not a lot cells. of armor. Yeah, they're going to be trying to keep their back to the rocket launcher. Nico's got rockets now and making good use of it, but he ends up killing himself in order to kill Milton. I can't entirely blame him for it. Oh, oh no! Oh, wow. From the top with the discharge. Hey, and but Jisse got the discharge <laughs> back. Nice job by Jisse killing the quad. Well done. It's like they know exactly who they're up against, and any victories that they, they're going to have are going to be very specific, yeah, very yeah. constrained, and the they have to be planned man. out. <laughs> and especially, like, if you can manage to get a discharge, that's probably what they're going to be going for. You might see them swimming a lot in the water, trying to get LGs, and then just uh, discharging. That will sound weird, but discharging on top of the <laughs> commando quads when they come running in. Uh, that's probably what they're going to try to do. Martin setting up for this quad. It's not spawning just yet, but he is so stacked. He doesn't have a lightning gun, though. Girl does have a lightning gun for Team NZ. He's going to be in the water. Let's see if he goes for a discharge as well. Nice. Right. It's going to be Milton on the quad. He has a lightning gun, so you always want to give the quad to a lightning gun player. It's just that strong. He knows. Milton is aware that they're going to try to discharge me. So he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take it easy. Not diving into the room just yet. That could give NZ a little bit of breathing room to maybe secure a rocket launcher. Milton's coming back in, though, and nobody's on the pad. Nobody wants to be there anymore, so Milton's going to scoop up this rocket. Yeah, he's like, okay, well. And, uh, and walk back out. So I got to hand it to NZ for at least uh, evading a lot of that. There's Jissy. And uh, again, it's kind of unreal that he's actually here and we get to see him play. Yeah. I, I, he's such a Claude. Claude, he's such a nice guy. The 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 French. The, he he looks very French as well, <laughs> with the candy hair as well, and just very fit and uh, yeah, great guy, great guy. Nice to see him play. Also nice of him to stand in for uh, for Burn, of course, who didn't want to to play more. Uh, four on four. He wants to stick to duels and two on twos with. Uh, with speedball. Milton is out of ammo here, so he's gonna have to try to kill Zorak with a super shotgun. He has one rocket, but he's gonna save that for a dire situation. Oh! Um, oh, that was a nice little trap yeah. that girl was trying to, or girl. Hey, there you go! Nico nice. gets a discharge onto Milton. So that's probably gonna be the name of this game. Just trying to, <laughs> just trying to discharge whoever they can yeah. of Commando. That takes them up from four to five frags, and <laughs> that, that, that's all they want. Yep. They're not running around just uh, trying to make anything happen. They've got very specific goals, and they've been able to execute it on it two or three times now. But uh, here comes Pent yep. and Ring. So we do have, of course, the, the Pent camera here, but I don't think it's going to be much of a fight here yeah. for, for Xterm to grab that. That was uh, 
as uh, I think they're drilling beneath us. Is that what that is? Yeah. It doesn't make me feel good. No, it's like... I think they're building a earthquake? tunnel yeah. under yeah. the building. Yeah. The entire, the entire venue starts shaking. Yeah, it's happened a few times, and yeah. uh, it makes me wonder, you know, is this line going to get cut short? Do we need to find a couple of Quake <laughs> World floor stairs? Collapse? Yeah. Quake World stairs to hide beneath? <laughs> exactly. Alright, so Martin on the quad here. Oh, oh. Nice attempts. almost rockets himself. Alright, oh, nice. nice. Alright, good, hey, good pickup by Nico. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Zorox actually got a rocket launcher now. Hey. See if he can get some use out of it in the water <coughs> or even break out and have a rocket launcher on the other side of the map. It's the first time this has happened for NZ. Incredible. It looks like he has no idea where to go and then, yeah, he's uh, gonna die pretty quickly. What now? Yeah. yeah. What's, what's step two? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I know that he wanted to go, get to red and try to, uh, you know, get an armor, but he realizes that, well, there's no way that Commando has let go of the red control. No. So if you try to attack on your own, you're just dead in the water against one or two rocket launchers. That's called so, balance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this map is balanced. You know, that's something funny about Quake World. <laughs> it's that nothing is balanced. Right. Like, there's no balance, but that's kind of what creates balance. Exactly. Because it's equally imbalanced for both teams, and, <laughs> and you find ways to play around that, and that's what makes it beautiful. That's why Quake 3 was a mistake. That's why Quake 3 was a mistake. It's a long list, really. Yep. All right, but nearly halfway through here. And yeah, we knew the way this yeah, map yeah, was yeah, going to yeah, go, yeah, yeah. but it, it's worth calling out the little victories for NZ. Exactly. Like, we're not going to pretend that, oh, this is w this was going to be a close game. <laughs> Everybody knew that it wasn't. Uh, but, you know, the small victories, the small, the couple of discharges. Let's see what Nico can do with this lightning gun that he's got. Oh, almost catching X term. Nice attempt from Nico. Now it's just his oh, I tried to quad. discharge as well. It didn't work. He's going to go for his own pack. One HP on the quad for Jesse with no weapons. Okay. Oh, yeah. Jesse oh, he stole a red. What? Hey, what? <laughs> now he's trying to get some health. He's like, help me, Zorak. <laughs> and Zorak is going to help him. There you go. <laughs> what do? <laughs> do you want to listen in on, on this poor yeah, NC let's, team? Let's try it. Let's see what uh, they say. Are they annoyed or are they just team. enjoying this? Yellow. You take red? Okay. Okay. Uh, L8 is red. LG sells up. Nico? I'm dead. Okay. Oh, you, sorry. I wait, wait, <laughs> said you were dead, so I didn't yeah, yeah. Okay. I got I LG on five. Oh, okay, quad is 11, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going rocket. I'm too late for quad. Yeah. I yeah. won't make it. My rocket, 42. Dead. <laughs> yeah, very dead. Go out the water, I tried to discharge him. Quad is low. I'll try and bait him into the water room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bait he's, him he's, into uh, the water he's room. Pen. He's at pen, outside. 42 is uh, rocket. I'm going to get LG. 04. Oh, Rocket trying to now. go for the discharge? No. Oh. Hmm. I didn't manage to discharge him. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Kill nice. him. That's yeah. pack, 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 pack. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm holding. They're, they're holding too. Yeah, they got me. Dropped LG, low bridge, pack, high bridge. Okay, uh, quad is 12, and so is Rocket. Yeah, I'm going to quad. Yeah, LG, they're quad on, LG on 12 as well. Okay. <laughs> It'd be quad. Okay, rocket's up. I'm going to grab. Okay, my rocket, 49. Okay, playing for yellow. Can uh, can a boom sticker go first? Weak on hell, maybe? Hook high. Uh, Mega. Damn. Okay. Uh, Coming yeah. yellow. No. Yeah. 45 is rocket. 42 is LG. Going LG. Oh, what a shot. Nice shot. Oh, he even said it. <laughs> <laughs> Zorak has the voice of an air traffic controller. Yeah. You know? You just feel but very safe. They're not discouraged whatsoever. Yeah. They're, they're trying, you know? The way they're talking, you wouldn't imagine it's 167 is 7. No, no. They're actually trying. They're trying to time the items, and they're trying to go for the discharges. Pent is coming up. It's going to be free for Milton. 
Uh, I like Zorak, even com like uh, giving uh, a pat <laughs> on the back for, to, I think it was Vala who shot that rocket. Yeah. It just connected. Because obviously the players can't see through the water from, from above the way we can. Ah, the spectators, yeah, so. we have the wall hacks. Yeah. The water hacks, yeah. Yep. Which was... Uh, why that was pretty. Yeah, it's interesting just with like the long view of history of oh, Milton going off. Um, because originally, like, if you could render the transparent water, you would, but the maps weren't built that way originally, but it mm. became part of the way of how it's played yeah. due to the fact that, you know, being able to hide in the water is a, a strategic avenue. Yeah, yeah. And so even when you get the ability to render the water transparently, you don't necessarily want to do that for the players. No, uh, no, because that changes how it the map is played. It takes away one part yeah. of the strategy yeah. that has been evolved over time. So, oh, Molten waiting for rockets here. That's why he's standing here. Girl has a rocket launcher. Let's find him on the pent at the moment. Got quad coming up, so he could rotate back around. He's got a bit of mega. And he's going to be avoiding that quad. He's just picking up a lot of rockets, but. You don't really want to fight with a rocket launcher yeah. from down here. He's acting like he's got an LG ah, well. and no rocket launcher. Okay. Harassing the quad a little bit here. Okay. Nice defense, actually. That's a little bit annoying because it's difficult to hit someone in the water. You need to hit a 100% rocket yeah. because you can't, there's nowhere to splash from. He kills a teammate with that rocket jump. It's unfortunate. It's so the thought that counts. <laughs> yeah. So they're down to six frags. But they're trying. They're trying. Oh, he's going to take a fight against Milton. That's ill-advised. <laughs> oh, Nico sneaking in with a lightning gun. Almost catches Martin up there. Uh, good attempt, but Martin survives. 15 HP, though. Almost close. But as you can see in the lower right corner, uh, four rocket launchers, and they're just swimming for the lightning gun, which uh, Zorak found one. We're going to try nice. to pin someone. Didn't manage this time, and now he's going to die. Nice attempt. They're dealing damage, but uh, they're losing frags, unfortunately. They're down to five now. Oof. Two, over 200 frags now. Yeah, that's that's kind of nutty. But again, uh, I, I would like playing with these guys. Um, they, they know what their goals are. Yeah. And, and I think there's something very psychologically like healthy about knowing, okay, we can't win, but we can learn something, or we can try to apply something that we know should help us. Yeah. And it's very measurable at that point. So if you can disassociate from, I'm losing at a video game, then you can still have a pretty good time. Yeah. Burn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a good time even though you lose. Like yeah. there's, there's no shaming losing to, uh, to commando. Just try and to it's it necessary up. because for games like this, uh, Quake or or any other like arena shooter or even like you know Street Fighter, you're gonna be losing a lot. You're yeah. going to suck for a while until you start to win against yeah, anybody sure. appreciable. So you, you need to learn how to lose and it be okay. You know, it needs to be okay. Yeah, if you're not okay with losing uh, and you start playing in an arena FPS yeah. game, you're never going to get anywhere. Let's see if they can connect with a discharge here or something. Nah, it doesn't look like it. They don't have an LG. Martin just trying to hunt for frags. Uh, so, something funny about Martin, by the way, or Vala, if you will. Yeah. Um, when he, like, he plays so calmly, he looks so, like, methodical <laughs> and calm. But when you listen to him, so anybody who's seen uh, Milton's stream, they will know that whenever they play, Martin sounds like he's in a war field. Like, the way, <laughs> the way he communicates. So, for the next map, I do want to listen in on Commando yeah. and, and, and just see if Vala sounds the same as Lan. <laughs> Because, oh, nice play from Jisei actually getting the kill on Martin. Zorik nice. is going to steal the quad. Go, goes down, though, but nice play. Jisei making it happen there. Let's have a look at the scores here. Girl is on negative one. Nico, negative one. Zorik on five. Zorik's got five. All right. Yep. There you go. <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> yeah. And Jisei got two. Yeah. And it's specifically that play on quad was very nice from uh, Jisei getting the kill and allowing Zorak to, to grab the quad. See VVD in the spec there. Oh, Hello really? VVD. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so final Let's five see if minutes. We, uh, get another appearance from uh, Mr. Dildo. What is <laughs> happening with these? Uh, I with think these? they're just uh, they're just offset. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. Hey, if I'm not the only one having technical problems today, I'm I'm pretty thankful. It makes me feel okay. 
melt him with the quad here. No, not the quad, the pants. I wanted to steal that rocket from Nico, and Nico is just trying to run away. Oh, nice, Nico. He wasn't even using the rocket launcher. He was like, I don't want to drop a pack, even <laughs> though Milton has every gun in the in the books, basically, except for the SMG, which he probably will grab at some point. Oh, that's a nice rocket jump from the from the stairs up there. It's very difficult to, to hit that. Oh my god. But who's, who's surprised Milton is one of the uh, masters of movement as well? Yeah, it's so funny how, how different this is from like 2 on 2 DM4 where you could just grab and go. Like, yeah. There's so many prerequisites for being like combat ready in this map. Mm -hmm. um, getting a weapon is is a big part of that, and you know I'm a Quake 2 player. I love weapon denial. Yeah. Um, it is really taken to an extreme on DM3, uh, yes. but to a really readable and, and like tractable point. So, oh, seeing three rockets on Commando, um, that's all they need to just really dominate. So at that point, like the stack doesn't matter. Even if if, if NZ manages to steal a quad. The quad is for getting a weapon, not the other way around uh, in this map. I think Nico is looking for potential... Nah, he's going to the mech, actually. He's got 27 cells. <laughs> is he going to go for the discharge now, though? Let's see what he does. Martin yeah, is doing yeah, a lot of he's damage. He's setting up for yeah. it. He's setting up for it. Oh, and no, he, he got it! He got oh, a he got double! Yeah. He got a double! <laughs> nice discharge from Nico, and then he's going to go for his own pack. It's, it's not going to have any cells left, of course, because they all disappear when you discharge. But nice play. He got a double kill with that. More games need discharge, that's a fact. Yeah, it makes no sense whatsoever, but it's a <laughs> great, great feature. I mean, has it ever been tested? Maybe it does work that way. Have you ever taken a lightning gun into a swimming pool? Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, you would electrocute the water. That makes sense, but why someone outside of the water? Uh, because of the transistive property. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. We need, we need Mr. Savage to, to settle this one for us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man. Somebody take it? All right. <laughs> yeah, he's just waiting for Vala to get there. Even though Vala doesn't even have a weapon. Yeah. But Vala probably just wanted it. Oh, nice play from Zorak. Oh, no, the SNG. That was a pretty good LG, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Zorak defended that well, but uh, Martin connected with every single SNG shot almost. And even that deals a lot of damage when you have the yeah. quad. Got up to 19 frags now. So look at the scoreboard. Nobody on any negative score. Jesse is on two, Nico three, Laurel on four, and Zorak on ten. Not too bad. I mean, you're against Commando, so it's not too bad then. <laughs> uh, I do hope that this uh, team gets to play uh, a lot of like practice games against uh, some of the other teams that got knocked out. Uh, yeah. And maybe, I'm not sure if anyone is organizing like a, an unofficial lower bracket or something. Um, you know, we, we had that last year, yeah. and I, I think it ended up taking more time than anybody thought it would. Mm. Um, just because lower bracket, people are going to go take their breaks, go chill out. Yeah. I mean, th there are two halves of this event, really. It's, it's this half. Yes. And the other half is actually seeing people talking. So getting knocked out isn't the worst thing, really. No, and also, like, yeah, you get to do whatever you want. Whatever. Now, if there was, like, some CTF going on or blood rails or something, that would be, uh, yeah, I, w I would pay attention to that for sure. 300. Wow. Yeah. It's a brutal score, but it's uh, to be expected. But they've taken it on the chin. And I think we're going to have Zorak on, on mic later. Yeah, yeah, um, cool. yeah. So before he goes to the uh, for for dinner, I I think we can get him for That's awesome. a game or two. That's awesome. I actually need to check like who. Uh, you uh, go for for one second. Yeah, yeah. So thirty seconds left here. Sorry, we're we're both. Looking at the bracket, looking at uh, the technical things, making sure everything's smooth for today because we are buckled in for a long day of 4v4. The final last year went to all five maps, and we fully expect that this year as well. So it's going to be a crescendo to wait for. But here, Zorak, Gurul, Jesse, and Nico, they've got one more map to play here. 20 more minutes to survive the onslaught of uh, Milton, but you know they can sl say that they were at the hands of uh, of these guys. But look at th this frag uh, count, though. 
Uh, 95, 85, 83, and 78. So pretty close across yeah. the board. Yeah. Not bad. GG's. I also need to Come figure out under. who... Uh, He's going to be casting which game? Obviously, Rio, as um, as he had to take over for BPS on Team Sudden Death, he was scheduled for uh, commentary for four games, so we're trying yeah. to figure that out as well. Um, worst case scenario, you've always got me in your harbor. Yeah. We're always here, so. <laughs> we don't go anywhere. No. But we do want to allow other people to try and do a little bit of commentary and have some fun and be on the mic and get to speak their mind and share their perspective of Quake. Where are we, we going to here? E1M2? Who is this? Who we got? I think that might be Coral. Okay. Yeah. I mostly recognize people by their configs more than their like mm, yeah. faces. Or I recognize them by their tiny mice. Alright, so E1M2, definitely a different map from DM3. Um, a lot more shotgun on shotgun fights. Yes. Uh, just because so many of these spawns are, are much closer to each other and you're kind of forced into a melee a lot sooner than you usually would. Uh, yellow armor is all there is to really play for. So the overall stack you can expect anybody to have at any moment in time is going to be a lot lower. Uh, the quad is always a big dog pile. It's probably the closest uh, you have to like the Arawak quad in two on two, where everybody just needs to but bum in there no matter what stack they have no matter when they spawned and just try to get a pickup there or die on the pad to prevent the enemy from getting it uh, but then once you're out with the quad going through the grenade hallway ends up being really dangerous and getting good frags out of the quad ends up being a bit difficult and even then like what you're really gaining from that quad other than frags of course is you know taking over the mega room uh, taking over rocket launcher and getting some of those key positions yeah <laughs> Sorak says NG only. <laughs> Nico says go handicap 50. <laughs> might even go for it. Yeah. They're even making votes for like our pickup. Like <laughs> let's just random pick up this game and see how it goes. Just mix the teams. But no, that's not what we do here. Um Second game is going to be on E1M2, and uh, well, the boom, well, this shouldn't be that much of a blowout when it comes to the score. It should still be not close, but um, I mean, Zorak has a pretty crazy shotgun and aim. He's going to get the first quad as well, as well as the first yellow armor. That's interesting. So nobody spawned yellow armor. Zorak is just waiting for that first rocket launcher to attack nice. him. Nice. It's one. Where's the rocket launcher, though? It's in the hands of Xantum. There that, he is. That's a dangerous place to be standing, Zorak, even with quad shotguns. So taking over the shotgun, uh, the rocket launcher room, it won't be there, of course. Yeah, nice play, though. He made it, made his way over to the second rocket launcher. He's going to be able to grab that. The mega is still in the hands of Xantum, so that's not a good way to go. That's what I love about this map. You have to use a rocket launcher to defend the rocket launcher. It's yeah. Gonna be Diving out though, only Xantom's got RL on the other oh, side of things. Oh, he's here. Two, two teammates are jumping in first. You heard the pickup of the yellow, so... Oh, nice! Ooh, okay. That's a pack as well. He's going to try to save that for a teammate. Is anybody showing up? This is the, the room with the most spawns here. Dicky on the quad. He's only got shotgun, but he's got to deal with Zorak with that rocket launcher. Nico's actually here defending as well. He's got grenades out. Oh, and the grenade actually bounces right into him, so they're able to shut down that quad. Martin with the other rocket launcher. He's trying to set up a trap here of a green and also just waiting for the green to spawn. He's got the mega, so once he has the green, he's very stacked for the next quad. Or if he wants to make a move on yellow, we'll see what he does. Looks like he's going to go towards the quad. Oof. Zorak's still getting some work done, but yeah, Martin's going to be very dangerous here. Xantum with a rocket as well. Yeah, you want to listen in on Commando and see if uh, Martin sounds like he's in the war zone that he usually is. Yeah, let's uh, hop over to, uh, to Milton's team here. Yep. Nice. I need the new rocket. What? I'm at quad. Team quad. Do you have the Mega? Team Rocket. It's ran out. Okay. Drop I'm at Mega. At yellow. Two guys. Yeah, I'm at Yellow. Yeah.
I'm coming to yellow, nails. Uh, it's safe. Rocket still seven. I need oh some rocket God. as well. Yeah, I'm coming rocket. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Oh. Yeah, yeah, rocket you, you take ten. Rocket up. Diggy, do you have a rocket? No, I thought you will take it. Yeah. <laughs> Just... yeah. Come take the rocket when you can. Okay, I'll come. Uh, enemy at water now. Coming. Yeah. I'm at quad. I might, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna need help here. Coming. I, I have no rockets. Two injured, injured enemies. Okay. Oh shit, quad dead. Rocket dead. Yeah, they are guarding this water. Yeah, rocket dead, it's on Fighting yellow. Yeah. I'm just camping rocket, I have rockets and a stack. Yeah. I need rockets. I got rockets. Green um, is lost. <laughs> Mega empty. Did you take the rocket yet? No, come take it. Yeah, I'll try. They are in the middle. <laughs> Got green. And repeat ad infinitum, yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> you have rockets? No, I thought you had rockets. Come oh, rocket. Diki yeah. finally managed yeah. to get that rocket. He tried for a long while to get there. Martin was just keeping it safe and trying to get Diki a rocket. Uh, we did see Jitsi steal the uh, the quad, though, and yeah. kill Milton with that. So that was a uh, good play from them. The unfortunate thing was, yeah, Martin's last quad run was a really, really strong one, and now you can see the frag counter. Things are not going well for NZ, oh. GJ, but girl with a quad. No weapons, really. Yellow armor, nothing's there. Zorak has got not a whole lot either. They've taken over yellow somehow. Yeah. Without weaponry. <laughs> So that's gonna go down. Okay, nice. He's really just staying defensive, even behind the, the yellow armor pillar, in order to get the grab. Yeah. And get that first shot off with the shotgun. So he's able to get a couple frags on this rocket launcher. It's gonna be a boomstick fight, <laughs> peppering each other at rockets. Nice. But where's the pickup? Girl's got it. Nice play from Girl. Yeah. As he got that uh, quad and used it to get the yellow and then to the rocket launcher. Exactly kind of what you want to do if you don't have a weapon already. And now a little bit... A little bit of control here actually for, for Team NZ. Martin still has a rocket, so does Diki. But uh, Girl with a rocket, Nico with a grenade. Jisse is going to nice. be the one who grabs the quad. Okay, every steal is worthwhile. I was hoping he would get a grenade launcher there. Hey, it's one less. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna yell. yeah they were probably fighting over that uh, because um, Girl had the rocket launcher and GC had the quad, and they both wanted that yellow. Yeah. That not means... fighting, some discussion. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Some tactical discussion. So GC is looking for some easy pickings outside Ooh, of the main nice. areas. And. Gets a back from Martin. Turns into a pickup. Yeah, so really good for GC here as that quad runs out. But that could give them something to work with. Milton is doing so much damage in the grenade hallway, though. Jesse down to 25 HP. This is going to be difficult to survive. He's spamming rockets left and right. Oh, he gets a kill on DK. That was a rocket launcher, too. But now oh. he's going to go down. Didn't drop a pack, though, so well right. played. Very well played. A lot of uh, good, good mindfulness. Yeah, yeah, Milton was really dangerous there, uh, even without full weapons. All right, so we're back on this hey. quad with nails. Uh. SNG only. Milton managed to dodge the SNG nails and, uh, and get the kill on Zorak, but nice steal. Yet again, another quad going to uh, to NZ. And remember last year, um, Commando, E1M2 was really their weakness. They lost two yeah. E1M2s against, against uh, or one or two against uh, Sudden Death in the finals. We had that overtime that you might remember. And... Um, so maybe maybe they actually appreciate a little bit of practice on E1M2, obviously against a lesser team, but still, you can practice the small things, even even I mean against any opponent. Yeah, yeah. This is not NZ just flailing and, and not knowing what to do with this time that they've been given. They no, they're, they're not beginners. You know, no. they know what to do. It's just very difficult against a team like yeah. Commando, who has just reached the 100 frag threshold. Xantum on this quad. And everybody's got at least grenades and rockets. 
This is uh, going to be a tough few minutes for NZ. Uh, girls got a rocket launcher, though. Mm -hmm. If he can get a frag, then that could help turn the tide or at least slow down Xantam and crew. Martin goes down. The girl is still in the rock. Ooh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. This okay. is where they are. <laughs> They're setting up camp here. Uh oh, look out for the grenades! As they come flying in and... I think, I think Commander realizes that they're camping over at the rocket launcher room. Yeah, girl's still alive though. He's yeah. got a little bit of that armor. Xantum's already defending the quad. Or at least looking for girl to cross the map. All right, we've got two rockets now. Zorak just got to pick up as well. They're both at spikes. I want to see what they do. So they're both here. They're setting up an attack together. One below and one above. Here they come for the yellow armor takeover. They fo both fall down to the ground. Was that Girl intentional? Oh, okay, it was jump. intentional. Nice. <laughs> down to eight HP though. He needs some health. But nice steal of the rock uh, of the uh, yellow armor there with the rocket jump. Xantum's gonna be very dangerous with the yeah. With let's the swap squad. over to see what he does if he can find Zorak or Girl. Zorak is up there. Yeah. Gotta be careful, yeah. Zorak. Oh, nice first initial rocket from Zorak. Can he win the fight though? Deke How comes in. Oh! oh my god. <laughs> Uh, Zorak. Uh, you know, Zorak played that the way he was uh. supposed to. He tried to get up close and personal <laughs> as well, hoping that Santa would use the rocket launcher and kill himself in the process. No fear, Zorak. Yeah, I like I, I like that play from Zorak. Obviously, Santa just the presence of mind to just use the shoot uh, the the shotgun instead. It is a shoot gun. I, the, the it, shoot you gun. are correct. Yeah, it is the shoot gun. It shoots. It shoots. All right, halfway through here, and unfortunately for NZ, that's the end of their rocket launchers for a little bit, but I love what they did with them. Yeah, I like the attack. They coordinated attack on uh, yellow. The entire team helped out with that, so. Yeah. And that's that's what I love to see. You know, some some teams, when they're up against Commando, they just kind of start AFKing and like, yeah, whatever. Especially when they're not really teams. They're just here because, I mean, Jesse only hopped in because Burn didn't want to play anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But they're actually trying to set up clicks. Yeah. And, and I love to see that. So you saw them camping in the rocket launcher room to get a, uh, two rockets. And that was a good play. They managed to dodge the grenades flying in. And then they set up the attack on the yellow. And they're doing things together and actually playing as a team. It's not going to be enough to beat Commando. But, you know, it's better than just standing there AFKing and hoping or waiting for the timer to tick. All right, so we've got one rocket for Girl here. Dicky's really doing a lot of damage in YA, though. He is on if the other side down. of that, that wall. Dicky has no idea, though. Nice. Okay, so Xantum back on this quad. Gonna find got girl three rockets on Commando. I want to see Girl what he does with this. I love this play. Oh no! I think he should have gone for it. Okay, he's gonna go from below. So one thing that you can do on one of two is when the enemy goes for the quad, that's the perfect opportunity to go for the yellow because they're yeah. gonna leave the yellow to go to quad. So it might open things up. Oh, that's the unfortunate event of uh, slipping <laughs> through into a quad. You don't want to do that, but um, I like the idea of going for yellow once Commando went for the quad. That's how you want to do it. It's just so good. Oh, Sand was like, I wanted that mega. I was super low. <laughs> he was just checking. All right. Up again. I'm keeping track of the weaponry on NC. Whenever they get a weapon, I want to see what they yeah. do with it. Yeah, Zorak's on grenades right now. That could help spam out on the quad for a little bit, but uh, they've actually dispersed it a little. Only Martin's on the pad itself. Very dangerous to get in there. And Martin might not find anybody on the way to yellow, but yellow's chock full of targets. And that yellow just pops right back up. So yeah, just reward for him. Ouch. Oh. <laughs> Nobody told Zorak. <laughs> It was very close to connecting with that grenade though, so... But now four rocket launcher, this is... This is rock. Hopefully they can do something similar and stack stack up in the rocket launcher room or something and try to get a couple of rockets. They do manage to kill Xantum. So Xantum goes down to GC. GC has been good at just finding random frags on, yeah. on, on, um, on enemy rocket launchers. Swap over to Snorak here. He's got a rocket. He's swimming around. HP. One <laughs> in one rocket. He's probably asking someone to kill him, but with only one he's rocket, it's not oh, even worth it. Yeah. Oh, Santa with a triple kill. <laughs> Ooh, wait, that's, that's, a, that's a pack. What's that's going a pack. On? 
Oh, he got the pack, and now he's got rockets as well. He's gonna use it. Oh no, he's gonna throw <laughs> the pack with shotgun. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, right. He got like five frags in a row with a shotgun. Must work for Courtney Love. But look how many rocket launchers they killed though. Like they're down to two, and Santum just picked this up. So Martin, the only real rocket launcher on the map, really. Santum did escape to Mega though, so he might be fine. Nice. Again this is actually a little dangerous for Martin. So yeah. it, it's nice funny to me you. because they have the grenade, grenade launcher hallway has a lot of spawns. Uh, it, it's an easy place to be if you've got rockets yourself, or especially if you have the quad and you go, oh, you know, free frags. Like any other map, it's you know, you want to be where where the spawns are, like Blood Run. Yeah. But the possibility of having somebody spawn with a grenade launcher and pop it out immediately, or even just a shotgun cess, you're not going to be able just to keep a stack there very long, especially in a map with no red armor. Yeah. And you're spawn on because um, just then you saw Martin having to dodge a bunch of yeah. uh, grenades from Sorai. So, so oh they're, my they're, god. Yeah, the super shotgun. That's going to be a... Wow, Jesse. Wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> the Matrix moves. <laughs> just avoiding dodge every bullet. Scans. Yeah. Martin realizes that the yellow is not going to be up for a while, so he's going to hunt for a few more. So that's full rockets on the side of Commando. NZ's got nothing but a smile on their face. <laughs> so right now with the rocket launcher again, swap over and see what it... Oh! There we go. Oh, he's gonna take a fight here against Martin, but that's not gonna work. It was close. I like the fight, but Martin just too good. He was also way too, way too stacked. 71 HP though, quad is coming up, it looks like it's going to be a DK quad, or maybe they're leaving it to Xanthan, yes, they are. Look at that though, the entire <laughs> team going for the quad, they yep. were like two seconds late though, but they're trying. And it kept Xanthan out of the other spawns for a while, so depending on when things are coming up, Xanthan being slowed down here could help them. I mean, Nico's gotten a rocket launcher Ooh, out of the nice. deal, and he's making good use of it, keeping Xanthan in the mega room. Is he still going to be looking that way? He's dealing with Martin. Yeah. Oof. All right, girl with a new rocket launcher as well. I'm going to see what he does. He's going to take a swim. Yeah, he's looking for some easy targets here. Going into YA, grenades, quad, that's just asking for a fight. But really, the quad is coming up. Oh no, he should have waited with that one rocket because nobody knew that he was there. Milton's on the quad. Yeah. As soon as... The girl is still alive, <laughs> that's what's important. Now, Zorak has a rocket launcher too. At what point does it feel like, oh cool, I've got a rocket launcher and, and more of, oh shit, I've got a rocket launcher, they're going to be looking for me. <laughs> oh, 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 oh no, oh, what a play Oh, nearly from, took him down. What a play from Milton. Down to 19 HP, obviously survives. Oh, gets the green stolen by Martin. Martin is like, nah, this is mine. And that's Milton in a little bit of trouble, but they're going to save the yellow for him. Four rockets to nil. All right, girl's got a rocket though. Milton's looking at about as good of a stack on UNM2 as you can really hope for. But seven seconds to this quad, we'll see if he can hang on to it. Girl could show up here with his own rocket launcher. I think Santum is top fragging, is he not? Yeah, yeah. He is. Milton is bottom fragging. He's chilling. Yeah, he's, he's chilling. chilling. He's being nice to the NZ guys. Like, he's saving, saving the energy, the real. The real stuff <laughs> for uh, for the real tough opponents later to come. This is a difficult attack from Milton. He's gonna try anyways. Wow. Oh, nice use of the super shotgun. Oh, he gets Nico as well. Oh, they were doing everything they could to kill Milton there. Two rocket launchers against Milton, but nope. And that's the tough thing about like the the scarceness of rocket launchers on this map. You you don't get to go four up on one and, and really gang up on him. You've got like one or two chances yeah. at best. You really need to connect with the rockets that you do have. There's very little ammo as well, as yeah. you can see now. Milton is out of rockets. 
damage. Usually, like, when you run out of rockets, that's usually when it's time for you to die, basically, <laughs> on, on E1M2. That's usually how the cycle goes. Well, Milton will and be unique like that's that. Exactly he knows what's exactly how to, to route the pack. Yeah. Actually, never mind. He survives because he's Milton. <laughs> Who am I to question whether he's going to die or not? Oh, Zarek with not. the quad and a grenade launcher. Yeah. That's like a weapon. Hey, he's going to get the yellow as well. Yeah. Sneak it through, grenades nice. on grenades, and yeah, at that point, it doesn't matter if, if you've got quad or not. No. He did a good job, though, and Milton is saving this pack, of course, for DQ, who did go down, so someone can pick it up. Girl with the rocket. Nice. Waiting at the rocket. Okay. He's Wanting trying to, to help his teammate to get another some one. more for yeah. the rocket harvest. Zorka is going to grab a rocket of his own as nice. well, and now they have two. Okay, and he's immediately going into the water with it. You know, massive kudos to them. They're, they're yeah. trying so hard still, and, you know, making plays together. Now Zorak and Girl probably going to work together to try to get a fight here. Maybe set a trap. Nico just popping out of the TP, or DK. Yeah, doesn't have anything though, so... Ah, nice. Where did Zorak go? Okay, Zorak died. That's unfortunate. <laughs> oh. The girl is still alive with this rocket. Xantum has the quad on the other side of the room. Actually, uh, he's in the rocket launcher box. So girl is fine for now. Uh-oh. Oh, nice play from... Who was that? That was Milton. But he did go down to Zorak, so I think Zorak got a pack from that. And yes, he did. Yeah. I know, I know the quad is there, but I want to see Zorak. Very low health. It's the last appearance for him in this uh, land, yeah, yeah. apart from being on the mic later. Uh, but it's the last time we get to see him play. He finished uh, fourth in the in the dual tournament, and then I believe eighth um, yep. in uh, in the two and twos, or five to eighth. Whatever yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah, very good showing out of Zorak during the whole land. Definitely showed up more strongly than he did last year. And uh, hopefully that trend will continue. But yeah, when it comes to four on four, you really do want to show up with a team pre-baked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the fact that uh, these couple of these teams, like NC, they, they form on spot like at the land. So yeah. and so they compete and they try. But obviously, when once you run into commando or firing <laughs> slackers, like the the developed teams that have been playing for years together as a group, then uh, you know the 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 journey usually ends there. And there we have yep. it, 341 frags later, we're going to be having Commando taking the first round in the playoffs. Yep. I mean, well, I mean, GG's. They, GG's, yeah. They didn't stop playing, and that's I, what I, I love about I appreciate it a lot. Yeah. They, they kept trying, they kept trying to do whatever they could to make a play. They saved rockets for each other and uh, really did what they could do, really. Yeah. So that is going to wrap up our first game in the playoffs. But the way we're structuring it at QH Land this year, we're actually covering all of the quarterfinals, all the semifinals, the bronze, the and the final. We're doing everything. So it's just going to keep getting nuttier. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's that, that's going to be it for Zorak and Nico and Goral and Jise. Um, and I, I'm just so happy that they kept playing. Yeah. That's yeah. And now they can all take a, a bit of a breather. But they, yeah, they sounded really the chill. Really, really nice. Nice, like, spectate, easy Saturday. Spectate some uh, some uh, brilliant games coming up and then the party tonight, of course. That That's the plan. I know Zorak is looking forward to that. He's, uh, he's a drinker. He always has a beer in his hand from what I can see. But... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love but that about him. He works well with it. He's also so he, he like, he's on vacation. Yeah, he gives and and he always he takes a trip down to uh, Systembolaget in 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 Sweden and yeah. uh, grabs everything that he doesn't recognize. So he gets <laughs> one of one of basically everything and then he gives it to people and just he's so he's such a nice guy. So yeah, yeah, I'm really glad he started coming here. It was a bit of a surprise. He's actually been going to like different lands of, of various types just for whatever. He was in whatever. Poland, actually, in the yeah. Radomsko land. Yeah, exactly. I don't know where. Yeah, he just shows up. Yeah. He just likes to play Quake. Yeah. Gotta love that about him. Um, what do we have next? Well, Jamar? I think Boov is, is lining something up for us in his wonderful Whataburger shirt. He's asking for a minute. Yeah, and we don't uh, have those here. No Whataburgers here. And just in case nobody believes me, uh... I have been like 
optimizing things for today because I wanted things to go really, really smooth. I'm still seeing like a little bit of like weird stuff, so I, I do apologize. Everything was great in rehearsal, even with all things running. Now it's a little different, of course, but uh, the matches aren't affected, really. That, that's what's really important here. All the other stuff is just icing on the cake. Yeah, I'm going to try to fix today. that DM3 issue as well. With the, oh, really? Yeah, with the, with lifts. the lifts, yeah. Yeah, I think <laughs> uh, we might just need a restart of the client. It's been running for two uh, or yeah, three days yeah. at this point. So I thought I restarted. Uh, no, I restarted it this morning. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, Maybe the something. server? Because usually in Quake 2, if yeah. you leave uh, the edge running for several days, which is every server in Quake 2, mm. then, yeah, the lift will also disappear. Right. So It'll get its offset yeah, 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 yeah. changed. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because I, I'm, I'm, I'm positive that bug did not exist in testing, so uh, yeah. it showed up now. Isn't but that the way not, it goes? It's not too bad, though. It's just a we lift do it missing. Yeah. 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 All right. I, I like this uh, lineup that, that Boob is setting up here. Are we good? Yeah, well, I'm just going to ask a question to everybody. Oh, yeah. QH Land 24, Team Commando, 4v4, but there's five. So I asked a couple of the attend uh, the other uh, QH Land attendees, and they go, yeah, Commando has five. So you have a lot of cream, the best of the best. You, you guys build the best team. So who gets to get pushed to the bottom? Who gets to sit on the bench? For, for each match? Mm, I mean, we have six players, five at the LAN, but um, I mean, we just decide. It's like whoever feels like playing, I guess. So, so yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it depends on who's in form, maybe, and depends how much uh, training one have gotten to play the last couple of weeks, say, for a game or days, and how the form is. Uh, pretty much decides whoever gets to play. But of course we rotate also so that everyone can't be in form all the time, basically. So so do you guys end up just rotating who plays or is there a specific map that you guys are, if it's this map, it has to be these four guys? Well, I wish we would have some sort of a best map for each one, but I think we are quite equal. Of course, we have two like uh, star players, Martin and, and Milton, and we others. We are covering different tasks on the map, so that's basically the thing. Um, anyhow, uh, we have been having discussion, of course, already that who will be focused on which map, and we are starting to have some kind of picture about that. Yeah, nothing to add, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so. You guys just played off uh, a Zorak and his team. If they, if you guys were to play against them, what, what could you offer them as a suggestion to be like, hey, you guys are playing us, you should be watching out for this. What kind of feedback would you give them if you guys were coaching them to say, hey, you guys are going to play these commando guys? You guys as a team, what would you say to them to, to give them some feedback? Mm, I, I'm not sure I got all the questions there, but in general, like it's all about playing together as a team to, to, to form strategies, both when you're like uh, behind on the map or in control. So uh, it, it's all uh, getting to know uh, each other and the, the team play and just grind. I mean, there's no, no, no shortcuts here. It's just to grind as a team. The more, the merrier in ours. Um, just kill Milton and you'll be fine. Yeah, I, I guess that that about does it. But of course, you, what I would suggest is to play 4-4 four four if you really want to play 4-4. Four four. 
not just because you are kind of forced to or you feel like you are obliged to join a 4 and 4 tournament here and if you have the passion for 4 and 4 then you will play more and you will become better but if you feel like it's more like obligation or work for you then it's just never going to work you need that passion so when QH Land 24 was announced which one of you guys was like we got to get the team together who's who was the who was the starting point I mean, we were already playing some online tournaments, so it was kind of obvious that we had to go and play like the most competitive game or the most competitive uh, like stage and a lot of teams. Uh, but I think Xterm was the last one to join. We were four attendees until like last week, and then he joined. <laughs> so was that one of those like, hey man, we 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 yeah, want I you mean, here? I mean, who knows? It can be like another pandemic or whatever. Who knows? There might not be another QH loan. I hope so, but you don't know. So it's better to just get everyone here, even though we're one extra. We sort it out. Congratulations, guys, on your group stage plays. Congratulations on your win here. Thinking forward, we've got some questions. I think we're going to see you guys very soon. Andy and Jahar, we'll catch you in a little bit. Thank you, thank you, Boov. And yeah, hoping to see the Commanders go all the way to the finals, which I think is, it is written. Yeah, um, if uh, the stars align, we might get the finals of the ages. Uh, I don't, like, if, if the stars align, I think we might get the best game we've seen in a very, very long time. If they make it all the way there, um, we'll see who they, they catch on the road. Um, next up... We Next up, the Last Minuteers, yeah. which is a great name, by the way. Yeah. I didn't get most of them for uh, for for headshots um, earlier in the week because, again, like they said, the Last Minuteers, they just got here, especially Dev, and uh, they're going to look very Ranger-like today. The Axemen, though, yeah. full team, uh, Premortem, Trigve, Barisi, Timmy. In fact, I think they've got a few more on the roster, so we'll see who we actually get in game. Are they looking uh, ready to get into the server? Um, well, we need uh, Commando and uh, those guys to clear out uh, first. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have a few minutes to That's kill. That's what we need. We need an auto like admin, like boot everybody yeah, off actually, the slot. Uh, so yeah. I have a special relationship oh. to uh, to Axman because uh, there was a season of uh, Form Four games where Sudden Death didn't actually play, so I was uh, left teamless all of a sudden. Oh and, no! Uh, yeah, and uh, TCO, the chosen one from the Axman, he reached out. Uh, a couple of other teams reached out as well, but he was the first one, and he was so nice to me. Uh -oh. And uh, so I actually played a season together with the Axemen, so I pretended to be Norwegian for a little bit. How, how did it go? Did, were you able to pull off the accent? Uh, no, actually, sometimes it's difficult because, <laughs> like, um, we can understand each other when we they speak Norwegian, obviously. I speak Swedish. Um, but sometimes it becomes difficult, especially because they're pretty loud against one another uh, or yeah. like towards one another. So whenever somebody makes a mistake, um, they let each other know. And when they really start going, that's when, you know, you, you need to stop and try to try to catch what they're saying. But <laughs> it worked out and it was really fun playing with them. So, so I'm a big fan of the Axemen. I love them. Um, yeah, um, definitely a, a staple uh, throughout uh, the tournaments oh yeah. past. Oh yeah, and so reliable. And the Axemen, they've been yeah. around since uh, the 90s, like mm -hmm. um, even in other games as well. So they're not only a Quake World team, they're a, they're a multi-game team. But, but Quake World's the only game we care about. Oh yeah, 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 of course. But it's a cool thing about them. Um, a few people yesterday were trying to say some nice things about Half-Life, and I, I will not have that on our show. No, not no, no, not no, here, no. not in our house. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, so we should have these guys here in a little bit. In the meantime, I think we'll be uh, back in just a Jingleheimer jiffy. Uh, we'll leave you guys staring at the bracket for just a little while, but uh, we'll have our next match very shortly.
There we go. Well, we're here. I caught it. <laughs> we're here. Hey, all right, one hey. match down, and we're, we've got our other – uh, playoffs going on here in just a little bit. We're going to have the Axemen and the Last Minute Tears in just a second. And uh, they're starting to hop on the server. So yep. we have another situation where, like you said, the Axemen been around for a long time, been around since the 90s, played every game, even you were in them. Very seasoned, very veteran players uh, versus the Last Minute Tears. Um, do they have any hope at all? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, this is a super strong team, to be honest. Uh, you got Dev, you got Hang Time. Uh, you got Racket, or Rocket, if you will. Um, who's the fourth guy? Uh, Greco? Oh, yeah, Greco, yeah. of course. And Greco, obviously, also a very good player. Yeah, so Greco had my favorite DM2 match last year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was Greco and Raga, I think, right? Was it Raga? Was it Raga? Mm, Greco and... I do remember which game you're talking yeah. about, though. I don't remember the slowest DM2 it. ever. Yeah. <laughs> it might have been Razor, actually. Wasn't that the one where you Carapace, might be right. yeah, Carapace yeah. asked Razor to just camp in the... <laughs> no, it, no, that, no, that was the other way around. Somebody told Carapace to just camp at Telly. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, whatever. Um, yeah, Too uh, many matches under the bridge. Greco, yeah. Greco is pretty in entertaining to mm -hmm. watch sometimes, especially from a streaming standpoint. Sometimes uh, I know spectators can get a little bit angry <laughs> with him. Uh, we got the players on the server. Let's introduce okay. our little co-caster for this one. <laughs> You've seen him before. Hello, little co-caster. Little co-caster. Welcome back. It's probably the smallest one, yeah. Oh, am I? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Volume is good now. Yeah. Probably the youngest one, at least. <laughs> You've yeah. been playing oh, some 4, man, four on 4 today as well, right? Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have. And I was in Clan Kof, and uh, yeah? I was completely demolished by Commando. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to play slightly, Commando. Slightly Yay. less uh, demolished by uh, Fraggers United. But, mm. uh, yeah, playing uh, against Commando in uh, especially DM2, which is one monster of a map. It was, uh, yeah. what did we get to? A, a frag difference of 650 something. Stop counting, yeah. You're just going to hurt yourself. <laughs> so you got your M card punched was, as well, was, so that's yeah, good. But, but it was one hell of a match still, yeah. And uh, we also played A1M2. That went a little better. Uh, yeah. A1M2 slightly less cramped with the hallways. And uh, we got a few denies on quad, even though we didn't get that for longer than a second. But we still denied a few <laughs> quads from uh, uh, the commando. And, uh, yeah. Fraggers United games went also a little bit better. We had a bit of a more even uh, matchup. I uh, see so you had a full group, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DM3 Oof. was pretty good in the start, and uh, E1M2 was a slightly less <laughs> worse, but yeah, it was it was a much better game than uh, <laughs> Commando. Slightly more closer to our scale. <laughs> it's all a matter of degree. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, we see the last minute tiers able to uh, to perform just as well, if not a bit better, against the Axemen. Let's go ahead and hop into it. Ande and Capelli, I'll leave it to you. Yep. I'm going to keep looking at numbers until they make my ears bleed. <laughs> Yeah, so the Axemen, a bunch of Norwegians, great guys, uh, been around forever. And look at those faces. They're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Rangers, uh, the last minute here is, I mean, kind of kind of fitting that they're Rangers because they showed up last minute, all of them basically. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we didn't have them on the media day, so. Um, but yeah, this, this one I believe should be much, much closer than the last one that we saw with. Um, uh, Commando and and uh, the other team, the NZ team. Uh, this one, I I don't want to, I don't, I can't predict it because we got uh, the Norwegians. They play so well together. Uh, they they uh, have played together for s the longest time. And then we have Dev, Greco, Hang Time, and Racket, um, the last minute tiers who aren't really a team, but they're all very good individually. So that could be interesting to see how, if they can. Like, it's going to be team play versus individual skill, basically. Uh, and that can go either direction. Let's see. I think we do have all of them on the discords as well. I'll let them know that we are ready. Yeah, Hangtime and Dev I've seen play just individually, not necessarily in a uh, team game. But uh, yeah, the Axemen I've definitely seen in yeah. Milton Stream it probably uh, has <laughs> been opposed to them a lot of times. So yeah, I've been, they've been a, an opponent of uh, Commando and uh, any other team that Milton has been in on his streams. Yeah, yeah. Hang time also one of the the old players, a uh, British player who's also here and always shows up to QH land uh, at least the last couple of years and a really good player, a very smart guy. Also plays a lot of football games in the mean no, like when he's not playing Quake for some reason. And that's something Brits do. I guess 
you know, you Americans would call it uh, soccer, but yep. <laughs> we know the difference. We're yeah, adults. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I like that the... <laughs> Take the jabs where I can. Description of Last Minute Tear says, Dev made it, so I guess Dev must be the last, last yes. minute tier. Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, so he had 36 hours, and he decided to use those 36 hours in traveling from Spain to Sweden mm. to play a little bit at QH land in the Forum Force and then immediately leave. I don't think he's even staying for the party tonight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so he's man. like, I'm just going to play a few games and spend all that money just to get to Sweden to play like, you know, a couple of Forum Force. And I love that dedication from him. Uh, so we're going to start on E1 M2 from the looks of things. Uh, we're not quite, we're just waiting for a couple of F3s. Waiting on Greco and Racket. And uh, then we'll get this game going. And I believe this one... Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm, I, I don't know how to predict this. Usually I, I'm good at predictions, but... Hmm. So how, how was your game, uh, Kapali, in uh, in the Forum Force? Uh, against Fragus United. Uh, not as skilled, of course, as Commando. So maybe more... Yeah, more enjoyment from that, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, that's how it goes sometimes, unfortunately. <laughs> hmm. to go live here on E1 M2. And what I'm curious about is who is going to spawn rocket launchers. I'm going to start the camera on rocket launcher. That's going to be Timmy. No, that's going to be TCO. Never mind. Who gets who gets the first quad though? The quad is still available. Nobody has picked it up yet. Maybe it died actually. Probably did from the looks of things. Did it? No, it's still available. Nobody has picked up the quad. It's gonna be TCO with the rocket launcher. The first rocket launcher gets the first quad. You almost never see that on E1M2. And now he's gonna get the second uh, yellow armor as well. So this is like the perfect beginning, uh, start to the game for the chosen one. Yeah. I mean, so TCO, that start, he gets the rocket launcher spawn, then he goes to quad, gets the quad for free because nobody had grabbed it yet. Then he gets a yellow, and now he's got the mega, he's got a full stack early on in this one. That's that's a way to start an E1M2, if I've ever seen one. Timmy now with the rocket launcher as well. So two rocket launchers for the Axemen. And you can follow all of that status uh, in the bottom le uh, right corner of your screen if you want to follow along with how many rocket launchers each, each team have. Um, or each team has. Because really that's that's a, a normally like a tell of like who's who's in control of the map. Do you have the rocket launchers or not? That's going to be a mutual frag. That's two packs. Barisi is going to attempt to save that one, but he's going to pick it up instead because it was just way too low to, to take that risk. Now he's going to try to defend this mega as he gets the pick up and then try to make his way over to either stay here at quad or all the way to the yellow. It looks like he's going all the way over to the yellow. It's going to be picked up, however, so it's not going to be available for him. And now he's under pressure down to 24 HP, trying to run away 12 HP all the way to end. And he, is he going to survive, though? He's so, under so much pressure. He's like just trying to hide here, waiting for more help to spawn. And in the meantime, on the other side of the map, the quad is about to spawn in 10 seconds, but he's not going to be there. Let's have a look. What it looks like over at quad hang time and dev getting ready for that. So it's gonna be a pickup for dev as he get, gets a couple of kills. Yeah. Oh, you, oh my god, you gotta. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The Matrix moves again. We saw some of that in last game, but the uh, in the chat. The, the yeah, who was it again? 
I can't remember who it was uh, who just dodged all the uh, the bullets there, but yeah. just, I just said he's yeah. beginning to believe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's beginning to believe. Pre-mortem here with a rocket launcher as well. Three rocket launchers on Team Axeman as they have a very good start to this E1M2. Quad is about to spawn again. Let's hop over to the quad cam. Hangtime is hiding in the box. Is anyone going to notice? Now TCO is going to make the call for his teammates. Racket is going to steal it though, but it goes down immediately. So we're back on pre-mortem here over at the Mega, but they do have three rocket launchers. They didn't manage to get the quad, but that's okay because they have three rocket launchers in full, full control of the map. Yeah, that's the sort of a spot that the <laughs> like when what is in that spot, and uh, yeah, you, you just, you're in, in immediate risk. It can just uh, last for less than a second. Yeah, 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 it's very difficult. Like you need your entire team to help you to kind of control the area to be able to survive with that quad because it's in a very, very vulnerable position uh, where it spawns. But uh, the last minute tears, they managed to kill off a couple of weapons, but we're back to three again. So I saw them lose, I saw the Axemen lose a couple of rocket launchers, but then now they regained them. I'm not sure if those were pack, uh, packs or if they just got the fresh ones. What is coming up again? Primortem is trying to get in here. Greco is trying to steal it. Is he not, he's not going to be able to. It's going to be Barisi instead, but he goes down to a grenade from Racket. Racket gets three grenade kills in oh a row on the Lord. other side. Of oh, four! Oh. That's four grenade kills for Racket with one small grenade launcher. So when you pick up the grenade launcher, you have five uh, ammo in it, and he used four of those to get a kill. That's a nice play from Greco. 80% accuracy, yeah. basically. Yes. <laughs> single, like the amount of ammo you That's get That's a very there. efficiently used... Um, grenade launcher pickup. Also got the kill on the quad, of course, which is even more important. Uh, but through all of that, though, even though he got so many kills with that grenade launcher, they still have, well, one rocket launcher was killed off. So they do have two. Premortem still over here just defending this mega. Not really venturing out to the other side of the map. Timmy should be on the other side with the yellow, so that's why he, he doesn't have to leave here because the communication that they had, they're probably telling each other, well, the yellow armor is safe, so don't go here. Barisi is gonna be on the quad. He only has a boomstick though. And not a lot of HP, so we might see those one die pretty quickly unless he gets help from his teammates. Nah, oh. never mind. Yeah, no. Good target fire from uh, from whoever that was, Racket it was. And he also needed to be careful not to frag his uh, teammate there as well. The uh, quad is equally prone to uh, get your own teammate yeah. back, just as the enemy is. And it tends to happen, even to the best of them. We saw a couple of team kills from Commando, especially yesterday in the two on twos. They, uh, they killed each other a couple of times. Even when they had the quad. So one rocket to one, but this is a sizable lead on E1M2. So on E1M2, because there are so limited re uh, resources and only one rocket launcher, what tends to happen is that the scores tend to be very, very close. Yeah. But for s but the, the, the Axeman team have managed to, to really gain a lead here. 96 to 45, doubling the score of, uh, of uh, the last minute years. As Arisi gets another quad no. that is quickly killed off. Timmy with a nice oh, grenade oh. to the face of hang time. Waiting for this yellow to spawn. It's not going to spawn though, so he's going to go down. Rocket is spawning. That was picked up by Pre-Mortem once again. Yeah, and uh, the X-Men here, they, they've played this map since the 90s, so they, <laughs> they yeah. just know how to hold the key locations. Uh, hold the Mega, hold just the yellow and everything. Get the quad on time and uh, possibly get there <coughs> surviving with it. I like this play from TCO, so what he did, he picked up a bunch of nail uh, nail ammo in the start area of the map, which is uh, something that you want to do when you're planning to go for the rocket launcher later, because you need all that ammo to defend the rocket launcher. He wasn't the one who picked it up, he gave it over to Barisi, but he was there to help and secure it. Quad is coming up, however, and uh, the Axemen don't seem to be ready for it. Three enemies oh. here. Racket is going to be the one with the pickup. He has a yellow armor as well, but he's going to go down to Barisi. Nice defensive play from Barisi. As he's going to make his way over and refill that yellow armor. That was uh, that was three seconds this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still not enough to... Uh, yeah, we still haven't seen a single quad survive for a longer period yeah, of time. Yeah, and especially that quad still not enough to uh, get any substantial frags for the last minute tiers. They're walking by Axe, uh, by Bar. Barisi, yeah, Barisi doing a good job with this with this rocket launcher. Also restacking once again. 
on that yellow. He's under a little bit of pressure here, so he's gonna take the teleporter to exit. Actually, he's gonna try to defend from down below. He actually connects with that rocket, gets a kill on hang time. Yeah, this is uh, an iconic thing for Axemen, the way they name themselves. They only use three letters. Oh, they have the three letters. And then seven dots. I believe it's seven. Actually, it might be nine. Uh, and then Axe at the end. That's I how they always do it. I think that's correct. Yeah. yeah, nine dots. And then the Axe. Uh, Barisi is going to go down with the quad, so not a single quad has been able to survive. And Dev with the iconic axe out at all times. Whenever he's not using a weapon, nice shot. He's got the axe. I don't know why Brazilians do that. I, I've seen many other Brazilians do that as well. And uh, Dev obviously is originally from Brazil. It wouldn't uh -oh. much matter to the, the shotgun. I, I think you just don't drop... Any yeah, yeah. ammo when you just have the axe out? Like, not even shells. Oh, really? I mean, you might I, be right. I I'm not 100% sure. Because you, typically you just get the ammo of, the, of mm. the weapon that the player had out before they died. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm not sure. Either way, it works uh, to try to prevent dropping a rocket launcher. So, whether you switch back to uh, the shotgun or the axe doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. The most important thing is that you don't drop a rocket launcher accidentally because that could be detrimental this might be the first really good quad that we see as tc uh timmy is gonna wait for this um this yellow armor <laughs> he's getting impatient just wanting it to spawn yeah he hears the <laughs> here's the shotgun maybe a little bit scared like oh, oh nice yeah, he goes surviving oh nice rocket but yeah he gets the uh, the yellow holes on our rampage here yeah, the first real real quad run that we got to see. He got four or five frags with that. And most importantly, he survived and he's keeping this yellow armor safe. He's trying to signal to his teammates that the, the yellow armor is available. <laughs> Please come grab it. But nobody's here, so he's going to have to pick it up for himself. Which isn't a bad thing. He's got a rocket launcher, so just stay alive. A lot of E1M2 gameplay is just about staying alive. If you have the rocket launcher, just don't die. Don't die. You need that yeah. on your team. So just survive what, what, with any means necessary. As we get to see another quad run from Timmy having a pretty decent game here. Ten minutes nope. have gone. Still doubling the score, basically. Axeman is. Yeah, he's not, he's not even going to really push with this squad. He's just keeping yellow safe, playing it super, super, super safe. Just making sure that, well, you're not getting this yellow. This is ours. This area of the map is ours. Yeah, that threat that the quad has keeps the uh, Axemen in control. And yeah, the last minute tiers at bay from the uh, the yellow area. This grenade launcher area as well. Oh, there's a rocket launcher down there. Trying to fight team. Oh, nice oh. shots from Racket. It's going to bring Timmy down. That's an opportunity maybe for Racket to rocket jump up to the yellow armor. Actually, yeah, he, that's exactly what he's going to do. So Racket was the one who got the pickup on on that. Let's see what this looks like with the X-ray enabled. Not the way that I wanted it to look like. So let's not do that. TCO with the quad here. Yeah, once again, well, actually, I know why, because I need to press that button, because the skins <laughs> are reversed. That's why. Now it should look exactly the way that I want it to look like. <laughs> and it does, yes. So this is what I want it to look like. Sorry about that. Might be useful at times. Obviously, the X-Ray was so good for the dual tournament when there's only one one per other player on... Oh, whoa! Oh. Okay, well, okay, I think it was intentional, just giving that rocket to his teammate. So Timmy... Oh, it could actually up. be true, yeah. Yeah. Looks sketchy at first, but um, there are ways to give your a weapon away to a teammate without having to use a rocket like that. So what you can do, you can select the um, and wield the weapon, and then have your teammate just boomstick you or axe you to death, and you're still gonna drop the the rocket launcher. And that way you uh, preserve the ammo and you don't use a rocket. So that's the probably the favorable way to do it. Uh, the better way to do it on E1M2 because uh, ammo is so scarce. You don't have too much too much rocket ammo on this map. Nice grenade, but Tim is too healthy. He's going to survive in a restack on this yellow. So every single quad run from Timmy so far. Oh, no, oh. that's going to be a quad bore as he sh manages to connect with the, the pillar or like the, the wall. 
and that's a dead Timmy. That hurts because I was just about to say that every single quad run from Timmy, he, has, he had just been, you know, keeping yellow safe and not really venturing out on the map. But that time he decided to kind of test his limits and he ended up killing himself. Yeah, I did the, uh, get a, uh, a few frags there, but yeah, it, it's uh, unfortunate if you just lose the quad like that in the middle of a uh, nicely started uh, rampage there. Which it really was, yeah. The few uh, kills there, but yeah, an unfortunate rocket. Pretty good opening here, though, for the last minute tiers, as they do have two rocket launchers. They have the quad on Dev, of course. He's waiting for this yellow to spawn. They're going with the ooh, same plan as what the Axemen are. Yeah, the only difference is that uh, the last minute here is they need to chase for a couple of frags here because they are 79 frags behind. Oh, nice defense from the chosen one, TCO. Trying to save this pack as well. It's not going to work, so he's going to have to kill that player who picked it up and just grab the ammo and be happy with that. Could probably be the first, like, somewhat of a successful quad run for the last minute tiers, actually. It didn't yeah, like, last yeah, the right. entire way there, but several seconds. TCO again controlling the Mega here. His team is letting him know when the uh, quad is available, but uh, yeah, last minute tiers are already on a hang time. Getting a hell of a rampage, but gets uh, fracked by uh, Pre there. Racket. Oh, he needed those rockets from that grenade pickup. So his enemy picked up the grenade launcher yeah. and then he died. So he gave away five rockets to Racket and he desperately needed those. But here comes the oh, nice bit oh. of rocket. But that's going to be two packs. And I think Dev got one of them. So it wasn't a wasted rocket launcher pack. But that was that was scary. But the frag scores are not really, or the scores are not really changing. There's still just about 80 frags behind. And uh, time is running out for them. Yeah, the Axemen aren't getting exactly that much, should I say, income of frags right now. But they are keeping it at 80 very steadily here. They still have somewhat like good control here. And Timmy now picking up the quad once again, trying to get uh, Mega drop down out of the... Uh, Enemy control. Slightly misses the uh, boomstick shots, but eventually gets... Who's that again? GRG. I, for <laughs> I forgot his name, actually. Uh, Greco. Greco. Gre Greco. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just uh, trying to organize stuff at the same time as... The Axemen are kind of running away with this. They're just increasing the frag lead here. Even though they're up against three rocket launchers right now, they're not really. We, we're not seeing the scores really tighten. Still 92 frags between the two teams, which is a massive difference on E1M2 and basically impossible to recover from in four minutes. They actually have four rocket launchers. Okay, Greco <laughs> is going to go down. So does Dev. And Primordium just comes in here and he's got to steal the quad. That was such a weird turn of events where for a split second, the last minute tiers had four rocket launchers against zero. And now, five seconds later, uh, the Axemen, they had three. So it just turned just like that. Primordium is going to try to just defend this yellow armor area. He's under a lot of pressure though, so he's going to go down, make sure not to drop a pack. Good job by him. Hack time has taken over the the uh, yellow armor room, and he's gonna get the pickup as well. But only one rocket, so he's looking to find some ammo. Yeah, you got a few uh, rockets there, just as they spawn. Gotta take control of the yellow area again. A little bit of splash damage here and there. Does not end up getting it, just ends up conceding on that. It tries to control the mega area instead. Goes to uh, Primordium. Dev gets the quad this time. Yeah, two and a half minutes to go. 93 frags. It's going to be difficult for, for Dev. He's trying to find a couple of frags, but he goes down. Nice defense from Timmy. And. Um, Yeah, just gonna secure this yellow armor room. He's the only one with a rocket launcher on his team, so that's basically all you want to do. Just keep yellow safe. 
and try to survive, and that's what he's doing. And this was a very good game for for Axeman. They're uh, they're really yeah, they're all neck and neck basically on frags, and uh, they're pretty even. I think they don't have like uh, any specific like roles on e one M two like who controls who, so they they sort of just sometimes maybe end up switching uh, like positions and stuff like that. Or it could be that they are playing wherever they are just, uh, playing, oh and uh, there's just enemies everywhere. But <laughs> yeah, oh and God. teammates. He's killing everything. <laughs> Anything that moves, just shoot it. Yeah. Speaking of enemies being everywhere and teammates as well. Oh. There's Tim's just trying to just peek around the corner whether yellow is still spawned or not. And uh, yep, it wasn't. Oh, Hang nice time. shot. Ooh, nice. Nice vertical rocket from Hang Time. It's going to be too little, too late though. One minute remaining, 97 frags. Somehow, even though they're getting quads, uh, the Axemen are actually actually just extending their lead somehow. They're getting frags on the other Some side of the yeah, map. They've got a 20 frag difference more. And some yeah, probably ago, winning yeah. like the small, the small boomstick fights, you know, the, that always okay. happen on E1M2. And if you keep winning those, you will extend your lead. Like we're seeing here, Hangtime is doing a great job with this rocket launcher, getting a couple of frags, but still, Axemen are getting more kills overall, which is uh, a little bit strange. But they do have two rockets against two, and Hangtime. Oh, nice, nice rocket from TCO, the chosen one. On to hang time, that's gonna deny that quad run. I especially like the uh, super nail gun users, just putting the enemy slightly weak and then finishing them off with a, uh, a rocket. Oh, <laughs> that's a nail gun frag right at the yep. end, but 278 to 170, a pretty dominant victory for the Axemen. They do love E1M2 though, so yeah. that's really their home map. And immediately I can see that Racket, his name translates to Rocket, and he's got a favorite map, and it's DM2 because there are only rocket launchers on there. Oh, no yeah. lightning guns, no nothing else. <laughs> it's all about the rocket launchers, which uh, suits him. As we start moving into map number two, which will be the Claustrophobopolis, as uh, Lockhart would say. Yeah, I still say like that. I just oh, look, <laughs> look at that. Our friend's back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know, we know what we're talking about. He's very reliable. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Never missing a beat. This... Yeah, D DM2 against uh, Commando and uh, Fraggers United was uh, yeah, some monster of a map to control, like I said earlier. This, like, the many, many, many cramped corridors and uh, even zigzaggy corridors are, don't give much room to uh, dodge rockets or just any mm. shots in. But it's going to be hard to predict this one as well. The X-Men have... Already won their favorite map. Yeah. So I think we're going to see a swap here. Uh, where... So, uh, obviously, the Axemen, they have five players here. They actually have more players in total, but five at the LAN. Uh, so we're going to see Pre-Mortem leave the lineup. And Trigve come in. Another Norwegian from the Axemen. Mm. Uh, perhaps more comfortable on DM2. Which is a smart way to do it when you have five players. Pretty much like Commando are doing. They also have five players here and uh, they're gonna swap depending on like who who prefer prefers which map and who's feeling it, who's on fire. And then just uh, kind of use that. So we're about to get ready here very soon. Just waiting for Dev to ready up. Obviously, this map does have two rocket launchers. We got here one here at low, we got one here at high. So high rocket launcher, low rocket launcher. But those are the two main weapons, but that creates a very uh, unique dynamic on this map where you try to control both of them. So what usually happens is that you go for this quad. If you get the quad, you try to make your way over to the low rocket launcher. 
and and steal that and you can do that once every 30 seconds and that's kind of how you control this map um the high rocket launcher you control that this one you control by controlling by controlling this tele area you prevent your opponent from stepping through this teleporter which would bring you here and that's how you kind of control this this high rocket launchers uh ro rocket launcher of course there are ways to trick jump up here to get up there but that's basically dm2 and it's very very different from the other maps in how it plays because of that because of the fact that there are two I <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Get a big one. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it is indeed a very interesting map. There's many ways to the, uh, quote from the big room, or at least two ways, but, uh, but yeah, one also from the uh, yellow armor teleporter. And, uh,. I must yeah. say, like, the, the team cough where I was in uh, did not uh, manage to control that too well. Uh, both, like, the Commando and uh, Fraggers United had always somebody in the Fragger team. Yeah, you can indeed uh, pretty much lose control of the game if you don't have somebody watching there. Nice pressure here from the Axeman denying Greco. So Greco got the first low rocket launcher. He's still gonna be alive, though. He may no, actually, never. No, he's still alive back here somewhere probably in the back room and Barisi going balls deep he's going all the way to the back room this is a very risky play <laughs> this is a very risky play and he's gonna go down he's gonna pay for it that was not a very wise decision you don't need to go that aggressive with the first quad of the game but he tried as both weapons are gonna be spawning again we see one picked up by Trigway, one picked up by hang time different sides of the map which means none of the teams are really in control just yet so the real big fight is probably going to be over the next quad which is going to spawn pretty soon in 10 seconds from now first we got the low rocket launcher spawning tco picked that up the high rocket launcher is spawning that's going to go to timmy and here's the quad fight Oh, that's a rocket pack on top of the quad as well. Let's see who gets there. Timmy's gonna rocket jump, pick up the pack and the quad as well. So Timmy with the quad run here. Doesn't have any armor though. No armors for Timmy. I don't think even a, a yellow is down there. Yeah, he's waiting for it. And yeah, yeah, he's yeah. getting frustrated. He's like, where is this de goddamn get, get armor? Spawn already. Yeah, I'm spawn gonna get this already. one instead. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, there is a, a secret cubby hole right here where there's a second red armor. Yes. The other one is right next to the mega on the other side of the uh, the map there. Oh, so that's the again. trick jumping that I was talking about. Yeah. They're trying to trick their teammates up there. Funny, one, one thing that uh, I was taught in the, uh, the Kof team before yeah. we started our games on this map, uh, you could... Uh, Form a quote unquote ladder with your teammate. You just have some one teammate pile up uh, underneath the quad and somebody else step on them and uh, yeah, climb up to the, uh, the quad without even taking a rocket jump or another bow to the uh, quad. Hang time gets it, goes on a rampage, waits for the uh, secret red armor, which is now his. And then on the lower rocket. Doesn't manage nice. to hit. Oh, there we are. Finally goes in, but with a very great cost of his health and uh, back the quad as well. Oh. This Gre is... Yeah, yeah. So there are two spawns down here, and Greco is just trying to defend the high rocket launcher by defending this telly. So by defending this telly and holding it, you make sure that the other team cannot slip through and get to this rocket launcher which Greco is gonna slip through and just make sure to keep this quad safe. As Racket is under some some pressure here, there's gonna be a fight for it. In comes Barisi. Barisi is gonna be the one who gets the pickup of the quad. He's trying to save that pack as well for a teammate. He's gonna help him trick up there. Some uh, teamwork there to, uh, to bring himself up there. Yeah, that's what he just did, the uh, the letter as we uh, called in the Kof clan. <laughs> But yeah, I, I've never seen actually just uh, 
Like even if I played against Commando and uh, Fraggers uh, Unite, uh, nobody really controlled the uh, yellow armor area on this teleporter from here, where uh, Breezy is standing right now. They were always in the stairs. They had like both ways still pretty secure. But yeah, that is actually pretty good cover of the pillars. Uh, if they're not opened, uh, which most of the time they really can't be if you have the stairs controlled, uh, you, you have pretty good cover from those. Reese is gonna sweep the high rocket launcher, just make sure that nobody else gets it, even though he already had a rocket launcher of his own. He's the only rocket launcher on Team Axeman though, but he is gonna be able to secure this squad all on his own. Nobody from uh, the last minute here is really... <laughs> Really able to challenge for the quad. Oh, we heard somebody pick up Mega up there. That was a rocket. Oh, ends up losing the quad here. It was a pretty good run, I think. Uh, actually, the X-Men are tailing here. Uh, yeah. Last minute tiers are uh, ahead 17 frags. Have, have pretty good control over uh, quad every now and then, but mostly the items, especially I think the secret uh, red there, has been picked up by them most of the time. Hang time also in one quadrant, just uh, assured that, yep, that's ours. Nice, nice shots from TCO as he's trying to secure this quad as well. They now, now have three old. rocket launchers on Team Axeman. Oh no! Oh. The grenades from Greco getting the kill on the quad there. That's going to eliminate one of the rocket launchers as well as the quad. And there goes another. So one rocket launcher remaining on Trigvay. However, none on the last minute here. So still a bit of an opportunity, but it's a very open game right now with, where no control either side. Oh, he's gonna oh, die no, to his own, <laughs> his own grenade. It was a little bit too early on that jump. I was about to say that the rocket was just gonna spawn. Yeah, there was yes. a grenade there, it was gonna delay it, but he just went into it. I was confident he was still like high enough health, but nope. They still, uh, last minute tier still keep the lead. 69 won't make that 70 frags, not any more than this. But Less than 14 minutes remaining, and uh, the X-Men still aren't too far away. In a 4v4, anything can really happen, but, and here we go. Trudbet with the uh, quad goes into the secret red and waits for that, although the quad is also taking down because of that, but there is still plenty of time to go for a rampage. For a very aggressive moments from the secret hallway. Trigvay trying to connect here with Greco. He knows that he's back there, but there's no reason to kill him. Actually, no, he didn't have any rocket launcher. Oh. Just spamming away. <laughs> oh, he gets a double even. He knew that two players were back there, and now he's going to nice. rocket jump as well and secure this back room. So that's a red armor for me. I think Mega is going to spawn as well. That nice timing, though. He had the timing of the low rocket launcher, so he had to pop out and make sure that he died. That's a pack as well. Oh forced to pick that up, but Quad is spawning Trigvay having a pretty decent game here. Playing really well right now, he's under pressure, but he is going to get the pick up of the Quad. And obviously his main objective here is to get back to that low rocket launcher and try to deny that once again. I think it's going to spawn in in three seconds here. So he's going to try to make his way down here. He gets the kill on Dev. It has spawned. But it is going to be picked up by Dev again. Trigvay wasn't able to make it there on time. So that's usually the, the main objective of the quad is to deny that one rocket launcher because since the weapons are on a 30 second timer, uh, on the respawn timer, and the quad is 30 seconds long once you pick it up. So if you survive, there's always going to be one rocket launcher that spawns at low every single quad run. So what you want to tr try to do is to time that quad run so that you make it there on time to deny it and pick it up or maybe save it for a teammate. Oh, that's going to be a pack over here at the water area. Barisi is going to pick that up. But this is a very, very close game now. 88 to 82. Six frags. Actually, yeah, certainly. Very close. With uh, the Axeman now getting more and more quads. Timmy this time. Not fine. Oh, I was about to say only fighting teammates, but there is Dev getting discombobulated on the platform. 
and I was trying to get, take control of the uh, back room. There we go, Red and Mega. The racket <laughs> falls to the lava. Yeah, and now that he says hello to Zorak. <laughs> Now with the rocket jump trying to deny this high rocket launcher making sure that a teammate gets that and now look at that the axemen with well make that two rocket launchers three oh they're oh. trading rocket launchers back and forth back over on the other side of the map Timmy is setting up for the next squad though that's why he's just up here gathering that mega and now getting ready for this squad which is about to spawn pretty soon here get this overview the attack is coming in though. He's gonna get the grab. It is gonna be Timmy. But he's down to 39 HP, so he's gonna have to be careful. He might not be able to make it down to low on time. He needs the secret red armor, oh, but it's gonna, no, be, it's stolen gonna be, stolen be stolen by Greco. And no! Oh. He bores! He shoots into the water and damage, damages himself enough to kill him. I, it, must, it wasn't one of those bores, you know, those uh, suicides where you, got, where you just shoot straight into a wall. He actually yeah. tried to angle that in a way so that he wouldn't take damage, but it was just a little bit off with the angle. So he did take splash damage himself and ended up dying from that. But look at this. Four rocket launchers for Team Axeman against Nil. Not a single rocket launcher on Team Last Minuteers. And with 10 minutes remaining, that's the situation you want to be in if you're an Axeman. Yeah, you don't even have to save this high rocket launcher. You should just sweep it because everybody on your team has one already. Yeah. So once it spawns, just grab it. Make sure that the enemy can't. We're going to see a Trigve quad run here. I wonder if they've timed the uh, rocket launcher. This time it is going to be difficult with the enemy being on one side. Possibly on the uh, lower rocket while you are picking up the, uh, the quad with the rest of your team. Yeah. So it is going to be difficult to try to be... Uh, Nice two places at once, even with four players. Yeah. Nice controlled shots here from Trigbin, making sure not to damage himself the same way that uh, that oh. Timmy did. And that was a very successful quad run. He didn't make it all the way down to low rocket launcher, though. But sometimes you don't have to. Oh, he's going to oh. yell about that. Don't <laughs> shoot me, man. <laughs> don't do that. Also, Trigbe for... Uh, we got to give a shout out to Wimpe, of course, for... Uh, giving Trigbe the nick nickname, the Step Cop. Um, <laughs> so Trigbe is actually a police officer uh, when he's not playing Quake. So at, during the day, he's a police officer, and uh, during night, he's a Quake World Pro. And um, he got the nickname Step Cop. He wanted to use that in this tournament, but I politely asked him, no, please, just use Trigbe so that uh, we don't get confused over here. But yeah, shout out to Wimpy, the Dutch player who didn't want to attend apparently, but we wish to see him sometime maybe at a QH land. It'll be fun. Trick me up here, waiting for this mega. I think it's going to spawn in three seconds though, so he's got good timing on it, controlling it still. And now, maybe no. Okay, it's, it's the one that's going to spawn in the, five uh, seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, he, he leaves. He probably lost lost track of the timer, but it would spawn. So he, he had the right idea, but that's going to be a trade between Trigbe and Racket. Actually, Racket didn't even go down. Racket just getting a lot of frags on the other side of the map. Barisa with a pickup of the low rocket launcher. Quad is about to spawn 10 seconds from now, but we see the Axemen. They've really extended the lead here. 167 to 100. Just a minute ago, we were basically tied. Oh, he misses the quad pickup. Yeah, there we go. There we go. He just wanted to pick up that hack first to make sure that he doesn't leave that for an enemy. Gets a couple of easy frags down here in Telly. He says, thank you for opening that for me so that I could <laughs> grab the yellow. I like this. Do they have someone on the low? Yeah, they do. Okay, so Trigway, they're actually developing a map lock here. So a map lock on DM2 is where you can essentially just keep spawn fragging the enemy team. Trigway was forced away, but what you need to do, you need to have two players here at the water area and uh, the telly, and then one on all the way on the other side at Red Armor Room, and that's where Trigway is. So I'm going to swap over to Trigway. Oh no, he oh, just took no. a lava bath. So never mind, Trigway does go down, so never mind. The map lock is no more, but they almost es established an entire map lock and you can get hundreds of frags in quick succession if you manage to develop one. It's not easy to do though because the positioning needs to be pretty perfect, but they were close. 
And they yeah, once we, again have four rocket launchers. We witnessed that with uh, Commando yeah. <laughs> being on the opposing team. It yeah. was just no contest for them. Like, yeah, it's brutal. It was quite something else. There was, I think, Milton for the longest time controlling Red and Mega in the back room. And uh, yeah, everybody else just being in the red, uh, sorry, yellow tail motor and uh, in the water area. It is a brutal strategy. Pretty hard to do for everybody else, but yeah, for the commando, it is probably just second hand. Okay. Trooper here. <laughs> Struggling with a, a boomstick fight there, but winning uh, with uh, the yellow armor. He doesn't close one of the pillars, so still has some cover, but wants a little bit of a uh, larger angle for aims. Easy he covers a uh, lot for himself with some nades and uh, steering rockets. And, uh, I'm actually surprised a little bit because this is really Racket and Gra you know, Greco and devs, like, they love this map. They're very good yeah. on it, but the, the Axemen, so traditionally, um, just a year or two ago, the Axemen would say, like, we want to walk over every single DMT. We don't even want to play it because they hated it so much. They thought they were bad on DMT and uh, just kind of forfeited every single game on DMT. But nowadays, that's not true anymore. They've gotten so good on DMT, and as you can see now, they're beating Re uh, uh, Greco and Racket and Hangtime and Dev, which is surprising to many. I mean, a year ago, this was unbelievable. But nowadays, the Axemen, they have been practicing so much, and they have really picked up on DM2. And as you can, as you can see, they're very, very solid here. Four rocket launchers still on the Axemen. As we get a Barisi quad run here with four minutes remaining. Yeah, you can just... Oh, nice. Oh, the controlled super shotgun. So a lot of players would just reactively shoot a rocket there and most likely uh, kill themselves in the process. But Barisi, the presence of mind to use the super shotgun instead to kill that rocket. Well done. Now he's going to try to attack this low. He actually makes it there on time, but he's going to go down. Good play from Dev to get the kill on him. Dev did go down in the process though, so no real ground gained for uh, uh, the last minute tiers, but at least they got the kill on the quad, but time is running out for them. We usually say that you can easily get 100 frags in 5 minutes, um, but, well, we're there below is, 5 minutes yeah, now. There's no 5 minutes left in No, and, uh, so it's not looking good for the last minute tiers. Although I'm so happy that they did manage to, to make it here, especially Dev, and get to play a couple of games. They did win in the group stages, and uh, but it does look like they are about to be eliminated by the Axemen. But we'll have to see TCO with another quad run here. We still have three more quads to go after this one. Nice job by Hangtime to escape there through the teleporter in order to not die to, uh, to this quad. And yeah, TTO just gonna have fun here. That's the pickup that I was talking about. There's always gonna be one low rocket launcher that spawns. That was completely denied of uh, last minute tears now. Uh, with that quadrum. TTO waiting for the, uh, the next ready. Just picked it up. So a little bit early on it. And here would come the, uh, the next quad uh, also. A very, a very early setup for this one as well, but uh, yeah, he's kind of on his uh, teammate there, especially uh, uh, Trooper was uh, bombarding the, uh, the last minute tiers in the other room, on the other side of the map, and so TCO is again free to pick up the quad. Yeah, TCO with the quad yet again. Let's have a look at the scoreboard actually. Trigway topping, but look at that, they're so oh, yeah, close to one oh another. My Lord, that is even. Yeah, that is very even between the Axemen. So they're really all contributing to this victory, or well, what seems to become a, a victory. <laughs> with two minutes remaining, we still have two more quads to enjoy, but things are not looking good. Nice little. Um, Ambush, I guess, from hang time. He's trying to set up another one. Also saving a pack there. You can see it's red on our screen. That means it contains a rocket launcher. Greco is going to be the one who picks that up. And here comes the second or the penultimate quad. 
Hang time might be the one who grabs it actually. Yeah, he oh, will. Yeah. And he's gonna survive for a little bit. Down to 62 HP. He's dodging the rocket. Oh, what a kill! Nice job by Hang Time. And he's under so much pressure. He's he manages to save that pack for a teammate. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> and I can see Hang Time laughing over there because he's actually pretty close to us. <laughs> so he actually enjoyed that himself. And yeah, well, he did such a good job just before then. But yeah, then with he, the quad board. He received so much pressure there. and uh, Yeah. <laughs> he was under so much pressure oh. and he handled it so well. And then he jumped down towards Telly and just yeah. managed to board. That's, that's very unfortunate with, for him. With just even two enemies attacking him at the same time, you just... It's incredible how you just make a fast decision like that to even switch to the uh, the double barrel shotgun and uh, yeah, yeah. not fire a rocket accidentally. Close range, dealing like max 400 damage to yourself. Oh, Paris is gonna kill himself uh -huh. as well. As Greco is getting ready for this. We're having small sound issues. Don't worry, we'll fix that. We're at the end of the game anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. This is the last quad run of the game though, Greco. No rocket launcher though, so there's really not much that he can do. He's gonna grab this yellow and just try to, I don't know, get one kill maybe. Yeah, he will. Uh -huh. He'll get a pack for that as well. But with 10 seconds remaining, that is gonna be it for the last minute, minute tiers. Yeah. GG, TCO top fragging, 73 frags, 271 to 133 in total. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for the last minute tiers. Unfortunately for Dev, who made it all the way here just to lose in the quarterfinals, <laughs> but I'm sure he was happy uh -huh. to, to just participate regardless. Yeah. I do believe. It was, that DM2 was pretty even for some time. But yeah, that, the Axemen just know their game. They know how to uh, quickly take control back. And uh, yeah, the, the, especially the quad runs at the very end was, uh, Something else from them. Well played by the X-Men. Yeah, I mean, great control. And for the longest time, they had four rocket launchers and just controlled DM2 against players like Racket and Greco. Um, that is something that is not easy to do. And that's yeah. just a testament to how good the X-Men have become on DM2. That they're, they're no longer the no DM2 team, uh, which they used to be. So, yeah. Hello, Jar. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, sorry about the, the audio there. I'll get that taken care of. But, man... Uh, I just wanted to see the end of that match because, yeah, on DM2, they were hanging on to it for a while. Yeah. It runs away from them, as, as it does, but you are playing against the Axemen. Yeah. Retirees, yeah. pensioners. <laughs> right. AARP card holders. Nowadays, good on DM2, somehow. <laughs> yeah, but great job by Axemen, yeah. too. They practice so much lately as well, so uh, they really deserve to advance to the semifinals. I mean, the semifinals for the Axemen, yeah. that's that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, I'm so happy for them. And it looks like Boova's going to try to scour them up, but uh, I think a lot of the focus is going to be going into the semifinals here pretty soon. Um, Capelli, you're, you're lucky. You don't have to survive into that. <laughs> you get to take it easy now. Yeah. Uh, but for these teams, um, the... Uh, uh, the pressure's still on, for sure. Yeah. It's it's going to be something else entirely. Yeah. All right. Four v fours are definitely yeah something else to commentate compared to the even two on twos yesterday. Yeah. 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 That, uh, yeah. Four on four takes a long time to just try to understand because so many things are happening at once. Um, but uh, but you know it's a very enjoyable uh, game mode once you do understand it. it that's why all the Quake World players. Kind of almost all of them uh, prefer it over the other game modes because there's so mu much strategy involved and there's um, there's no other feeling than having a quad and a rocket launcher against a bunch of boomsticks and just getting 10, <laughs> 12, 13, 14 frags. That's the best feeling. Absolutely. Skipping, yeah. skipping 11 because then, I don't know. <laughs> all right. It looks like we've yep. got uh, Boov here over with... Uh, ooh, okay. Well, with, with the Axeman here. Let's see how we yeah. go. Oh, here we go. My friends. QH Land 24, another match in the books. We got the Axemen, the only Norwegians here at QH Land. You've made the journey, not that far, but what does it feel like to be in Sweden? It feels good. Feels good like to home. be back. Yeah. Good to be back. Uh, it feels like home. Yeah, it's just like being home, a second home, Sweden. I'll, I'll stand in between so that way I can, I can pass the mic back and forth. Um, Something that uh, Jahar wanted me to ask you guys, what's the secret sauce of keeping a team together for as long as you guys have? Uh, banter. Friendly banter. 
You have to keep each other down. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, no, he said it. We, uh, we have a good communication in internally, good humor. And uh, if the mic was a bit further away. Oh, so, no, uh, no, it's so, going to be close. Oh, it has to, yep, it has to be yep. close. Yeah. No, and um, we have a bunch of real, uh, real life friends, so uh, that's all, that also helps. So then, when QH Land 24 was announced, who amongst you was like, we're going, let's make it happen? Oh, we didn't speak to each other. We just signed up. Yeah. You just knew. <laughs> you just you knew automatically everybody was coming. Yeah. Yeah. So then the same thing we asked commandos. You have five. Who usually gets sat? Is it map? Is it something? Uh, map and feeling. Yeah. Depends how you feel. Yeah. We do a random. Yeah. Then. Yeah, we do a random. <laughs> when you do practice, you do a random yeah. and just uh, rotate. And officials, we do. We have one rule. That's uh, to give a place uh, DM2. That's the only rule. Yeah. What do you guys have to do to beat commandos if you face them? Well, I think that uh, most of the X-Men members should play more dual to grind their skills. But uh, so if uh, if they do that, then we might actually beat commando in a couple of years. If commando is still alive, then. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to drink some more beers. Yeah, honestly. All right, so well attacked uh, DDoS attack, I think. Yeah. On commando. Uh, I don't know. Well, uh, we started really good uh, versus them on EM2 uh, last time we were here. If we can play like that, then we might have a chance on EM2. EM but the other maps, you know, I don't think so. But uh, we will try. The chosen one has to be really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you had the opportunity to wind back the clock and play a different game, would you ever change? Or is Quake that first love, always love, you'd never cheat on her? At first level, or always love, yeah. Yeah, basically. It's just, uh, nothing gives the same feeling. And it just, it's like the first first drug you do, you know? <laughs> huh? uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, Quake will forever. Yeah. yeah, honestly, I think we all cheated a few years, but then we came back in 2020 or so to join the revival of the scene. That's been excellent, yeah. I'm already like uh, contemplating the time lost playing Quake World, so that means uh, what the hell would I do play would I, if I was playing another game? Would I? How much time would I regret having missed? But then again, Quake World has given me so many friends and so much uh, good experiences in real life as well. So uh, uh, I don't regret anything. I would only play Quake World. I don't think I'll ever switch uh, a game. Would you guys ever think about playing any other mode? Or is 4v4 the, the, the pinnacle? Is it's the most prestigious out of all the game modes? 2v2, 1v1? I guess uh, when it comes to one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we don't have the aim. We don't, we, and we know we're getting too old. We can't get the aim. So when it comes to 4 on 4 you can actually practice how we move together. So that's what's motivated, motivated us. And that's why we play 4 on 4. Yeah, duel is fun, but uh, 4 on 4 is the best, really. Yeah, for me, Quake is all about the social. So it has to be 4 on 4, and uh, I can't grind uh, 1 on 1 anymore. As a kid, I could, not now. Yeah, I consider more warm up the 2 and 2 is, and don't have the time to spend to become that good. So, yeah, neither can I. Yeah, 4 on 4 is the only game mode that uh, actually gives me anything. Jewels is just for grinding. I hate it intensely, but I have to do it to stay sharp. So, <laughs> so last question for you guys. For, uh, for moving on, thinking about the future, two years, Quake, on, or, uh, Quake uh, World becomes 30. What is that, what's, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? In two years' time? Two years' time. Are we going to be top two? Yeah. No. <laughs> Ambitious. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think we're going to keep, keep grinding because two years ago when we started, we were like Div 3. And uh, last time we were here, we were like Div 2. Now we're moving into the semifinals as, and that's, uh, that's an improvement. So we'll keep, keep grinding. Yeah, but about Quake being 30 years, I'm pretty, feeling pretty old to be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, I think I need to make some kids to start recruitment. <laughs> 
As long as the Forum 4 scene is alive, then I will play Quake. And uh, it has to be less time, but uh, still Forum 4 is the, the last pinnacle. You have to stay, you have to keep playing Forum 4. You heard it here, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Another great matchup by the Axemen. You've seen them. They've been here forever. They may be old, but they still kick ass and chew bubblegum. Andy and Jahar, I, we, we got to keep these guys under wraps. We got to get them on ice so that they can be cool, calm, collected if and when they face the commandos. So back to you guys. Thank you, Boove, and we will be rolling right in with our next uh, quarterfinals here in the four-on-four -four bracket. Uh, we're going to be running out of um, some of those poor teams who have managed to sneak themselves into the playoffs just to get crushed yeah, yeah. by these utter veterans. Although, although, the next game I don't think will be the same kind of like... It's not going to be a commando versus uh, versus whatever that NZ team was. <laughs> it's not going to be like that. It's going to be uh, Sudden Death versus Snackers. That, that stupid NZ team, who did they think they were showing <laughs> up out of nowhere? Not even four-on-four four players. Not even really Quake World players. Who do these guys think they are? Oh, well, oh, hey, Zorak. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, hi. <laughs> we're trying to fill out the bracket. Uh, we did a good job at that. There's four of us. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Commando's good. Yeah. Um, we warmed them up. And Actually, we gave you a lot of credit because you yeah. guys kept trying. So a lot of teams, uh, uh, what they do against Commando, they stop trying and they they just do stupid stuff. You guys actually started to you know team up in the rocket launcher room on E1M2 to try to get two rocket launchers. Then you tried coordinated attacks on yellow, like one from below and one from above and stuff. You kept trying even though you, I mean, you understood that it's going to be difficult to win that game, obviously. Uh, but that's what I gave you a lot of credit for that because I, and we listened in as well and you guys communicated pretty well yeah um so yeah kind of going into that uh, we were like all right we're gonna try our hardest um and then if it's the 15 minute mark and we're down 400 fr frags we're going to drop every weapon we get just trying to get frag movie material yeah. and uh um so we got a couple good shots uh that i was happy about and then uh yeah uh we we had a really good start to e1m2 i was like guys yeah. Stay focused. It's actually still close. How that? <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see Commando uh, go on and face uh, stronger teams in the uh, semis. So. I, I think that's, that's definitely going to be the case. And uh, I'll, I'll underline what Andy was saying. Really calm and collected. You had your goals. You wanted to... Uh, to uh, discharge on the on the quad, and you did several times. So so A plus. We are getting the uh, server sorted for uh, for sudden death and the snackers, not the slackers, uh, and, and not uh, <laughs> not uh, another team like Zorax. Well, I mean these guys have played together a little bit, but uh, we've got Blaze, Koj, Niv, and uh, Zunito. Um, di did you play against them in practice at all, Zorak? Um, I have not but i i play with uh blaze and uh coach all the time in the na because uh you know we all live in um america and we play a lot of mixes so coach and uh, blaze are extremely experienced uh tdm players um niv and zunito are as well uh i don't know as much about them since i'm kind of new to the four on four scene still but <laughs> um uh, it's kind of a a grab bag team of really strong players who are all good at the mode and so um i know they're um, they've been practicing a lot just here at the LAN, um, and so, uh, yeah, they, sh they, they should probably uh, show us a pretty good time. Now, we are facing them off against Sudden Death, of course. Um, I think BPS has left at this point and yeah. will be swapped in with Rio, so don't worry. You're going to see BPS's handsome face, but uh, just copy-paste it for Rio's handsome face. Just a little more hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite a bit more hair, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but other than what that, was he the third baldest guy in the? What did we say about BPS? The third baldest? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> no, that yeah, yeah, BPS, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But Rio definitely not. Um, nope. He's got a lot of hair. Yeah. 
Uh, on his chest as well. He's been around the game. He's been around the scene for a long time. And, uh, yeah, plays very well for Sudden Death. Uh, it's actually a toss-up whether Sudden Death is actually reduced in, uh, in capability by swapping out uh, BPS yeah, think, for, for re oh, at this point. I think point. it's less about, like, individual skill and more so BPS is sort of like a leader on, mm -hmm. on Sudden Death. Uh, he does take command a little bit. And uh, while Carapace might be, like, the strongest player and their, their version of Milton, if you will, um, <laughs> BPS is a very strong pillar in 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 that team, so that's and the big, that's and the big for loss. the event itself, which sometimes yeah, yeah. takes a toll on your ability to play. Mm -hmm. I should know, mm -hmm. uh, but he's been running himself ragged, uh, keeping the tournaments running, keeping the venue going, uh, managing everything that needs to be managed for for QH land. So big yeah. thank you to him. Can't say it enough. It does make him lose games against Zorak, though. But sudden death, <laughs> and uh, I mean, they're 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 so they're so uh, lucky that we had Rio. Rio was gonna do a lot of commentary, uh, but obviously he's a part of sudden death as well. Yeah. So he was like, "Well, I'll just step he's in." He's got games and to play. Yeah. Now he's got games to play. Everybody promised to do a lot of commentary, and I think they forgot like uh, that that they can't be two places at once. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, it's tough, even in Quake. All right, let's uh, get this show rolling. We've got Sudden Death. We've got the Snackers. And it's going to be a good time here. And I got your mic on this time. I know what I'm doing now. Things are getting better. We're learning. We are learning. It's day three. You would think we, we know what we're doing by now. So watch Blaze's eyebrows here. It's, it's great. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, some players do like the the nice even like linear path, and and some players just uh, snap it, like uh, Blaze and, and Milton especially. Yeah, no, it was great. You guys uh, did this. This is, I mean, I, we had a lot of fun uh, watching these in the tournament it's, area. It's a lot. Of, it's more effort than anybody anticipated. So uh, I'm really thankful that we got as much as we did, and really thankful to all the players for being so accommodating. Then again, they have Rotten Rose like hitting them with a stick until they come back and, and get their video shot. So that's our professional I love that on Coach, hitter, yeah. by the way. Look at Coach. He's just slightly turning and then he's not. Yeah, nah. he's, nah, like, nah, he's, he's nah. too good for this. Yeah, nah, <laughs> he's yeah. worried about Zuni, though. <laughs> he's he's like, looking nah. a little red. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so they're starting to get on the server. We got All the right. sudden death team, but not. we're missing two players from uh, the Snackers team. Surely we're not playing DM4 for you. Well, we are not. <laughs> not today. Not today. Not today. <laughs> Um, we are okay. So Niv is on the server as well. Sunito, okay. Blaze, and List. So we're, so we're only List, 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 List. As uh, yeah. Sasa would say, we yeah. always say RST. Um, <laughs> but Sasa is Sasa. He's gonna do his own thing. Um, so we're just waiting on Coach, and uh, Coach is someone who you know pretty well, as well as Blaze, Zorik. What do you think about their form four um, abilities and so on? Yeah. Um, so. I'll start out. Yeah, Coach, uh, he, I don't know, like, he's always playing four on fours. Uh, he's either playing in EU or he's playing in NA, and I guess he doesn't sleep because he, <laughs> he gets a lot of practice in. He's always playing in the leagues in the EU, and so he's he's uh, closer to the East Coast. He's on Eastern time, and um, so he's just uh, got a lot of practice. Um, he's very fundamentally strong. He knows strategy extremely well. Um, Four on four player through and through. Uh, Blaze, he's good in all modes, um, and uh, he's he's also just uh, extremely strategically strong. Uh, he studied it. He knows you know the correct things to do in every situation. He looks like Thumpa if you made better life decisions. <laughs> 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 yeah, I met Thumpa in QuakeCon 2016. Uh, I think <laughs> I don't remember what he looks like though. But I'll <laughs> yeah, take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, and of course Ganon over there. He's been in every mode. He's just been plugging away, doesn't complain, doesn't always make it to finals, but he just plays. So a lot of respect for Ganon. Yeah. R Rudist, we RST. We've heard a lot about. I haven't seen him play yet, so uh, I'm excited to see that today. Um, I got a question. Maybe I yeah. can test some trivia knowledge. Um, what was Sudden Death's lineup last QH Land? Uh, is this? different somehow yeah it's a little bit different so obviously bps was here mm -hmm. um and they had carapace ganon and rio however the addition this year would be rst rst originally was 
in the main lineup, but he couldn't make it to last year's LAN, so Rio stepped in once again. He did excellently as they made it to the finals and got beat by Commando 3-2. So Rio did a very good job then, but now obviously it's quite different because the addition of RST and the subtraction of BPS, unfortunately, of course. Mm -hmm. So that would be the difference for uh, for Sudden Death. Otherwise, I mean, all of these players play together all the time. Uh, so changing to Rio is not that big of a deal. Uh, we always practice together anyways in in the team. So Okay, cool. So, yeah, it's, I mean, strong team coming in from last year. I mean, yeah, you swap players out. That definitely changes a ton. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, this is the first time we get to see Sudden Death on camera this tournament, right? Yeah, absolutely. True. And uh, yeah, we got Kara and Ganon there. And uh, oh, a little bit of Greco as well. I like that. Uh, you're seeing the most common land party neck exercise is uh, where the hell is the player? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a good stretch. It's highly recommended. Uh, it, it's very well described in my upcoming book Zorak of uh, needs land to fitness. Teach them a thing or two about how close you should be to your monitor. <laughs> yeah, they're way too far away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, shoulders way too far back. You're you're gonna be able to read uh, MM2 <laughs> if you're that far away. <laughs> That's just distracting. You can also like move your like your timer a little bit further up or something <laughs> when you sit that far back. Yeah. Now, now, Zorak, do you have do you play on like a monitor arm at home? Uh, no, what I do is so I you actually still lean forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I got a, an old calculus textbook, textbook, and I put um, my monitor on. I, I have it on a stand when I'm working, right? So I, I work from home, but then I, I pull my monitor down onto my calculus textbook, and then I you know, <laughs> lean in, and uh, yeah, that's the that's the gamer pose right there. <laughs> uh, I I'll just recommend like uh, a monitor arm is pretty cheap. Yeah. Won't, won't break the bank, and you can put the monitor in your face while still, you know, staying upright. Yeah, I, you know, uh, a lot of players um, are really big on like configuring like everything uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to configs and setups and trying out every different mouse and uh, keyboards and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm kind of like, I don't know, I, uh, I, I tweak very few things, and then somebody mm -hmm. will tell me type this into your console, and then I will, and then just save it, and it's like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll try that, <laughs> you know. Um, so I'm down to try most things. I think you just made like half the players in the land just shiver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Con configs. That's that's a sensitive thing. Yeah. yeah I was uh, on DM2. I have this texture lineup for uh, grenades to bounce them into the telly. Um, so, you know, if your your opponent in one on one is he hiding in telly, it's really hard to get to him. But if you can get a grenade to bounce in there, um, then you can go run to high when he gets bounced through <laughs> to the, the, the exit. So uh, I'm not on my textures uh, here at QH Land because I didn't pack them into my. Oh, no. Oh. And so uh, I, I just had to, you know, oh, the textures are all different. Let me see if I can get that grenade in there. And so it <laughs> took me a lot longer than uh, it should. <laughs> finely tuned machine but it looks like we're getting started here we should have our first pet pick yeah we're waiting for uh college was in the bathroom yeah yeah and okay. also snackers need to make their first pick they're still thinking about it yeah there are so many maps to choose between so now enda you said four nationality snacking uh, are blaze and college actually from different places yeah blaze is uh russian originally oh he, okay he yeah in, he lives in washington uh. um, state um, and, uh, <laughs> Thanks for specifying. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> especially to Europeans, if you say Washington, everybody thinks of DC. Yeah. So it's important. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, Blaze. Uh, he's got an American passport, so we claim him now. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we actually uh, we have quite a few players around the Seattle area, and so we we met up for some beers. Um, only three of us made it after you know some people flaked, but uh, uh -huh. me, Blaze, um, and another player, uh, Chris. Uh, Flaked. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, Chris yeah, flaked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chris. Yeah, yeah. I had to shout him out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Chris. Here's your shout out. I know you're watching. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so you know, it's it's fun. Uh, you know, uh, meeting up with like all these people and being at the land. Um, everyone is just uh, enjoyable to be around, mature, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's a great experience. It's been really nice. The, the few times I've been able to get up, it's always just uh, just warm feelings all around. We're about to add some uh, warm dibs to those warm feelings right here on DM3. We are moments away from getting ready. All right, players are readying up. All right. And it's all you guys. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Cool. 
All right, and it looks like the game audio is behaving here. Man, we have been boxing it here, uh, so we're running, running through our own bracket. I think Andy's let him know that we're all set. Ko just needs to uh, make sure his hands are dry. So I think the delays should be longer the, the stronger the players get, right? Yes. Okay. That, that's how it works. That div zero delay, especially yeah. active on, on LAN. Yeah. It's, uh... Though, you know, Americans will, will generally go out for a smoke break. Um, it's one thing I will say is better about snooze packets. I, I'm not going to like condone the, the practice as a whole, but it's much more efficient for LAN parties. Yeah. Is that why they were invented? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's m much less... Okay, it's much less bad than smoke. It's not good for you. It's still nicotine. But also, you don't need to step away from your desk. True. Yeah. And you can have it just like that. Yeah. Uh, we have some uh, photos of home desks in the Discord sometimes. It's, <laughs> it's very interesting, the, uh, yeah. the situations people choose to live in. But <laughs> uh, spe specific players, I'm not going to name. But yeah, just having you know weed crumbles everywhere. It's legal, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's tough to clean up after the event, though. All right, where where are these guys at? Oh, okay, hey, cool. Here just we go. as I All say right. it, I'm just antsy because there's two kinds of four on four. There's the total stomps, where you say what you can about appreciating what the the losing team is doing, but then there's there's the good stuff, and I want to get to the good stuff. Yeah, so Zunito getting the punt. That's nice. Uh, classic thing. Get this grenade launcher, and then he's yeah. Pretty much standard uh, start going to yellow, but the quad is already dead, and so is Ring. Yeah, Zunito holding on to the YATP here. Look at this attack, but it's not going to go very far, as Zunito with a grenade is going to be able to secure that frag. And uh, yeah, half the frags already were just the initial telefrags, as it happens on DM3, but Zunito sweeping through that rocket launcher, maintaining that control. Yeah, that's a pretty big mistake uh, we saw there with, uh, he allowed an enemy to spawn on RL, and then, so he actually missed out on getting the second RL. Um, you're supposed to uh, probably get that one when you get the pent, but um, still their team has uh, decent control, so we'll see how this next quad changes things up. Yeah. Yeah, I like Blaze's stack here, oh, and yeah. And for these guys, they've actually got all the weapons on the map at the moment. Yeah, um, DM3 can get pretty brutal once you get a map lock. Um, we see that uh, Sudden Death has a couple, well, one weapon now on the uh, the overlay below. But really, uh, when they're on the weapon side of the map, there's it's pretty hard to get back into the game. Um, yeah. So we got to see uh, what they're able to do here, being out of control, and. Uh, Potentially, you know, going to give up a fair amount of frags to get it back. Blaze doing really good here, um, denying kind of the weapon pickups. Don't let them have too much, you know, armor or health when they actually come at you with a weapon. You know, it, you, you mentioned the weapon side of the map, and that is how this map is divided. You've got LG and rockets on one side with the yellow, and then, you know, you've got that center mega quad and red armor on the other side. Uh, you know, I've always been tempted to ask like the Willitses of the world, like, was this on purpose? Did you mean to do this? And I doubt I'll ever get an honest answer or one I could rely on. Yeah, it is It, it is interesting, um, specifically with these Quake World maps. Uh, I was making a joke with someone else uh, that, you know, it turns out the first 3D maps ever made in a video game are not the best, but some people are going to vehemently disagree about that. So they come with these unique play They're styles. interesting. That's yeah. the word. They're yeah, interesting. Very interesting. And it, it kind of works. Uh, there are a lot more maps we don't play. So yeah. we, we are playing the, the best um, of <laughs> what we have besides, you know, Kenya. Anyway, back to the game. Uh, so uh, Niv with this LG only. Um, it is a weird situation on this map. Uh, so... He's trying to earn this rocket launcher, which he does, and that's extremely important. Yeah. Because there's so little LG on this ammo that your your teammates are going to yell at you if you take red armor with LG and you have a rocket launcher. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or sorry, they have the rocket launcher. Um, but LG is extremely powerful with this quad. Uh, we'll see Niv go on a point and click adventure game. Uh, yeah, yep, and right now, Slackers, the only weapon they have is uh, LG in the hands of Kara. He would be unwise to show up here. Might be camping out in the water. Niv isn't really poking his head up there just yet. 
Yeah, so Kara's made his way to SNG Mega, uh, judging by the yeah the overlay. I'm looking at that a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so... Uh, Thank you, Andy. He needs to uh, stay alive with that LG and try to earn a uh, frag over in the SNG area. Um, a lot of times players, you know, they'll come for ammo over there or some health. And uh, if you got the LG on land specifically, it's just going to blast someone down with so much damage that uh, you can earn yourself a rocket sometimes doing that. Wow. And yeah, as we look at it, not only are the Snackers enjoying a, a hefty lead, they've also got almost all rocket launchers here. This is massive for them. This is going to be a lot of inertia that'll be difficult for Sudden Death to take down. And right now it's a little bit quiet. Are we going to see any kind of attack on the quad? Just barely. Niv getting away with it now. He's got LG. He's got Mega. He's got Red. He's got Rockets. He is fully loaded and ready to extend this lead. Yeah, and I, I think Snackers are in the position with this pent coming up in about a minute. They're really trying to deny all possible opportunities for uh, sudden death to get on that pent and change up the, the control of the game. So they're going to lock down the armors. They're going to try to kill as many weapons as possible. And then uh, if they can secure this pent cleanly, that'll give them a, a good next few minutes of control probably in most circumstances. Yeah, we do have a couple weapons in the hands of Ganon and RST. But Nib is still so, so dangerous here, and he can basically move at will. But again, on DM3, you don't always get to choose where you want to be or where the fight's going to happen. Wow, Rio hiding in the attic is going to get taken on down. It's time for Pent. Just a few seconds before that quad, Niv is on it, and he's got the pickup. Yeah, he stayed alive that entire run, and now he can restack back up. Yeah, uh, very responsible pen take uh, going up that lift uh, is a, a good way to suss out any potential, uh, you know, steals. Um, so it uh, looks like Quad ended up dying. I saw Carapace got it. Um, Niv, I think the standard is probably ending your, your pen with red, but he's choosing to attack into yellow since his team has pretty good control. Wow. This lead just keeps getting bigger. And the, the momentum here for the Snackers is going to be tough to take down. And yeah, we're keeping our eyes on Niv here. He's really going to be the linchpin to everything for the Snackers, or rather for Sudden Death's ability to get back in on it. Coach, though, going on a bit of a tirade with the frags. We have LG from Ganon, but Niv is just chilling on red, ready for this next quad, really. The longer he could just stay stacked up with weapons, he can just appear whenever he wants, like Puxatani Phil. Yeah. Um... I think Ganon did a, a good job of the last red uh, kind of coming out with 100 of it and getting a weapon. Boom, he gets quad. This could be Ooh. a turning point in the match. 20 HP is rough, but he's going to go SNG, and maybe his team can hold that red for him. Yeah, and uh, he was able to delete a few weapons with the attack on the quad itself. We've still got some lightning guns to deal with, so Ganon's got a few seconds to figure out how to make the best use of this quad. Chasing somebody off of the red, it is tough to chase through that teleporter, though maybe not advisable. Yeah, I, I guess his feeling is probably, I, I got this quad, it's not going to last forever. Uh, I need to make something happen. I need to kill some enemy weapons, uh, swing the control. And uh, he got baited through the telly. Um, and uh, it's rough, but uh, at least Carapace has a little bit to work with here. Yeah, so in that situation, you go through the telly or you go, all right, cool, you just gave me the red armor room. Yeah, um, the fight, you know, you can take the fight in another place and... Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of nerves or something, but uh, it it doesn't end up working for him. But it looks like Carapace might be able to secure this quad. Wow, Chris is here too. Yeah, they're they're wanting to make good on Ganon's last pickup, and and yeah, they're just completely on mid. So Kara's on it. A little bit of extra health. Yeah, interesting delay there because uh, it seems like Snackers may not un um, have uh, the audio cue on that delay. We'll have to see if they realize the quad's a lot later than they think it should be. It means that for the next ring, there's going to be like, what, 15 seconds to the quad? So you could have double power-ups there. Yeah, uh, Carapace has done a really good job with this quad run. Every enemy weapon dead saves a pack for a teammate. Um, so you need to pick them up, you know, the, the fresh spawn rocket. But... Ending the, the run at red, but he misses out on it, so the the control is not quite tight for uh, Sudden Death yet. Yeah, that means that their Sudden Death will need to secure the next two quads in order to make good on, on the pent strat, right? So Carapace holding on to this mega. That means there's going to be a lot of fighting over this red armor. This is going to be absolutely vital. Carapace doesn't want to get too involved here. Raining down a few rockets. Oh, I love that rocket around the corner. Very good defensive play. He's got all the rockets in the world. Yeah. And this quad is coming up. Kara's got it. 
Yeah, uh, as much stack as you can really hope for, and uh, he's got a rocket launcher. Yeah, he's going to use that stack to bore most of it away, but uh, he kills an enemy weapon, which is more important than uh, maintaining that red. He'll come back and... He really uh, doesn't want to die, though. Yeah, he wants to stay as defensive, but this is possible. Well, he did his job. He killed an enemy weapon. Uh, he got the pack for his teammate. He gets a red. Uh, now the enemy team, you know, uh, Snackers, are... LGs only, which when you have two players with LG, mm -hmm. um, it, it's kind of like World War II. Like, who gets the gun, who gets the ammo, right? So <laughs> We need to have you on here more often, Zorak. <laughs> All right, but it's a 60 frag deficit, but the tide seems to be turning in the favor of sudden death. Uh, the more this run continues for Carapace, the, the dicier it gets, right? Like, Carapace dying here would be awful, and everybody's just piling in on him, even without weapons, just to try to suss him down. Doing a lot of work for that, and he's actually got to worry about that yellow armor mega player. And here comes the play on this quad. Yeah. He's gonna die? Um, yeah. Kind of, yeah. So s sudden death didn't really show up, and Coach managed to steal it and die. Um, it stems the bleeding of the control that sudden death has. I don't has, know. But. I don't know, because Carapace didn't die there either. He's still got rockets, they've still got priority on this red armor, and this is the one that matters coming up here. This is the ring going into the pent. This is where. Everything could happen for them. That being said, 10 minutes to pick up, you know, uh, 50 plus frags. Um, it's it's going to be tough. Yeah, and you see uh, Carabase has essentially infinite rocket ammo here. You can spam away very responsibly. Uh, player in the window. This pent looks pretty secure, but we'll see if uh, Snackers can come in here at the last moment. Oh, Car oh no! <laughs> Zunito <laughs> coming Zunito! in. Oh! Wow. He uh, just ruined everything for sudden death. Yeah, that is actually a, a <laughs> huge uh, change in control, and he's going to come in for Oh, there it is. Well. Yeah, there's the double. Yeah. Somebody but... predicted it. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Every enemy weapon has been killed. My God. And now Snackers uh, are feeling good about the 10 minute pen. This Snacking is... nothing. This is a buffet. Zunito. We haven't seen much of him throughout the entire map, but that was his defining moment. That was the hero moment. Yeah. And he made good on it. Wow. Yeah, and very uh, responsible end to the quad. I'll get my red armor. I don't need to push my advantage so much that I lose out on anything. Um, he does have a responsibility as the only rocket on his team. He needs to uh, maintain this tight grip of the red armor room. But we'll see uh, what he ch chooses to do here. Um, is he going to, you know, maintain that? Or maybe he's going to attack in a little bit. Boom, he earns himself an LG. That's yeah, interesting. So yeah, yeah, this is really dicey. We're not seeing any point where Sudden Death has no weapons. They're able to hold on to something at the very least, but it is a big fight over this next quad. Koj is looking at an awesome stack. He takes a couple rockets in the face before the pickup, and now he is out of there. Taking away this red might not get a lot of damage done with this quad, but really, now that they've taken control of the power-ups once again, this 65 frag lead is really going to take them far. Yeah, uh, with six LG ammo, it's it's rough to make frags happen. Um, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, the LG ammo spawns this quad. Oh my gosh. Yeah, coach's <laughs> LG is probably not the best in the scene. Uh, Twelve cells will do it against the fresh spawn. But um, yeah, uh, we got to look back at the uh, the control that we see here. Um, Carapace earns himself a red, um, so we're not on his pop right now. But Zunino boring a pack to an enemy. Uh, control could have just switched right there. It might have. This next quad will be kind of the defining one here. Ten seconds to it. Carapace has got red. He's got rockets. He's looking for drops from Attic. Yep, there's the one. It's actually a decent amount of damage from Blaze. And, uh, does he want the LG pack for uh, himself? Or? Okay, yeah. <laughs> no. He's going to give it off to a teammate. Um, so Zenito trying to play for this yellow armor. And... Um, what, what do you do here? You got to defend yourself against Carapace. Uh, okay. That so at this moment, uh, Zorak, whose comms would you like to listen to? Um, you know, I think uh, we can go into Snackers to hear how the Americans uh, talk about TDM uh, with their uh, European comrades that they've uh, contracted. Right. Let's hear Niven crew. Took Mega. Oh, don't shoot me. <laughs> rocket at red, rocket red. I need the cells at SNG. Rocket red, watch out. Yeah, I'm caught now, I can't get it. Took the red. Nice. 
He's leaving for quad. Enemy, Enemy quad. quad. 21 LG. Okay. I, I'm waiting for the mega at SMG. Look at Check out the, on, the, on, on the lifts, please. Run right. rocket red. We get a uh, red. Nice. One dead. Yeah, he killed his teammate, the quad. I don't think quad the quad has a. Quad is... Does he have a weapon? No, no, Make no. a soon at SNG if someone needs. I yellow. I need it. Ah, come, there's two enemies here. It's yeah. up. Oh, I died. Mega is still up at SNG. Yeah, I'm coming. Took a G05. Cells. Six. Quad now, please. They have enemy at the yellow. I don't have cells or quad. You can hear the focus as, you know, there's 60 frags up, but in these, these last six minutes, taking a map off of sudden death would be such a feather in their cap, and it's tantalizingly close. A lot of chaos there on the quad. Yeah, this next pent is uh, what they call uh, crucial. Um, <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, uh, you hear the communication, um, and some of the most important information you'll hear these players telling each other is uh, enemy weapon, where are they, what's their stack? Um, and that's a lot of DM3. Uh, well, probably most maps. Um, <laughs> but uh, RST setting up pretty early here. Yeah, super early. He's got uh, a Mega and a few rockets, but uh, here comes the dog pile onto it. Ganon is actually body blocking the pent and going for the grab himself with that yellow. Gotta love it, and... <laughs> Second time's a charm. Cool. Yeah, luckily, there's such a delay on that quad. It... At some point, it's like almost too much delay. Um, yeah. You don't really get to go around the map being all purple and shit, but uh, you, know, you get to enjoy a few seconds. Yeah, uh, rock jumps uh, not working out right now, but um, <laughs> now that one will do. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, definitely uh, it's it's like, okay, I've used my pent to secure quad, but now I didn't get to use pent. In Invincible is kind of fun. Uh, so Ganon, um, he's got a lot of work to do uh, here. Uh, be kind of the responsible stacked quad player with a weapon. Um, he needs to earn enough control for his team such that they can make up the 60 frag frag lead, which four minutes you can do it. But, yeah. Um, you're, you're gonna need, you're gonna need every weapon, every armor, everything. Yeah, it, I mean, you'll need Zenito to be the hero once again, but uh, we'll have to see how that setup goes. Carapace and Ganon have rockets. Rio's doing some good damage as well. So we've deleted a few weapons from the Snackers. Yeah, from what I can tell, um, Sudden Death now has timing on both the armors, which is um, very important, and uh, two rockets to work with. Kara is delaying this quad even more. Okay. Matters a little bit less now that the last uh, pent is over, but Kara is doing really good damage here in the red armor room. Yeah, is it too early to slow spawn? <laughs> Three <laughs> minutes, uh, 50 frags, I mean... The That's thing is, four on four math, yeah. Yeah, um, Blaze, uh, I know him to be a player that is about total efficiency um, to the point of making the game maybe less fun than it should be. <laughs> and so I wouldn't be surprised to see some of those uh, strats come out of Snacker's team uh, when it gets called. But, you know, as a team, you gotta you got to do everything together. Half and half isn't going to work. So at what point does BPS call from his phone and say the tournament is now double limb? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... Well, I, I wish we had so much more time to work with with the yeah. man and just uh, double them the whole way. But, um, yeah, it's, it's these top eight teams. Uh, were you eighth place? Were you second place? Uh, yeah. Well, who it knows? Gets, <laughs> it gets you into casuals faster. Yeah, yeah. Lots of mixes going on. And Ganon with the squad. Oh, nice. Yeah, so Still they've got frags. near total weapon domination at the moment. And, yeah, Ganon's looking at a great stack here. And he's just hunting for targets at this point. But, uh one rocket the wrong way could end everything for him. 11 HP. He's going to need to restack. Red's coming up in 10, but he's actually looking back over here at the server room for this Mega, maybe. Yeah, and Koja's damage there, you know, he doesn't get oh, the frag or anything. Oh, no. Yeah, it's enough to just, uh, he's calling out to everyone, hey, this guy's weak. Um, yeah. And it's enough to just stifle the quads. And down goes Kara as well, so that is a weapon reset for sudden death. Zuni is the only rocket. No, I'm sorry. Kara's the only rocket. He must have stolen that pack. 
And just like that, they've got all their weapons back. Okay, a lot of packs on the ground. Yeah, all the weapons. <laughs> uh, they're not two stacks. Uh, ammo's a factor, but uh, 50 frags is... Yeah, it's, it's tough. tough. Uh, Zunita, though, he's on this quad, and even if he dies here, that is a deleted quad from the hands of Sudden Death. And it will be a slow, agonizing death for them on DM3. I really have to hand it to the Snackers. They've played this excellently. Yeah, um, this is a huge confidence boost. I didn't check uh, whose map pick it was, but um, taking down a DM3 against uh, Sudden Death is uh, yeah. uh, obviously not easy. There's three maps in the pool. You can't afford to be bad at any of them. Yeah. And so uh, this is a best of three. Uh, somehow you're able to do best of fives with the three map map pool. The Quake World players figured it out. I don't know how. But uh, <laughs> we'll eventually see that in the finals. But uh, yeah. you you drop this map and you're not feeling good no. uh, dropping the first map for sure. Yeah, really incredible stuff. I love the shifts back and forth. And we there were several moments where it looked like uh, Sudden Death had the opportunity to get back in and take control. But... Uh, the little fights from Koge, from, from Niv, um, they've both done excellently on Zunita, of course. Yeah, um, some uh, extremely important moments for from all the players on Snackers. Uh, that kind of dominating control in the beginning, um, even though, you know, uh, there were some things that didn't go to plan, uh, the, the control they managed to secure themselves and the pen steal as... Uh, specifically uh, makes this game just unreachable even though know, hunting down all these spawn frags maybe you'll feel a little bit better going into the next map uh, having you know reduced wow. the score difference but the, the game was lost a, a minute or two ago for sure that's exactly what we want to see from the snackers really really well done they might have an opportunity here to uh, solidify themselves at not as not just a spoof team but as a real team yeah um, and this is uh, definitely something where you bring like a, a bunch of good players together, and just because you're all good doesn't mean you're good together. Um, and it's definitely uh, something they've been practicing a ton, uh, doing mixes and stuff. Uh, well, I guess uh, scrims. Um, <laughs> yeah, you want to call them mixes. Uh, to, to get used to each other. Um, and there's certain play styles that, you know, Sudden Death as a team, they're going to know the play styles of their members. And... Snackers has to somewhat learn the play styles of each other. I'm, I, Coach is probably you know very comfortable with all the European uh, players and their play styles since he plays so much uh, in their tournaments and everything. But uh, Blaze is going to uh, have to acclimate to uh, the European style of play, maybe. Yeah, he's, he's used to it, though. Yeah, we, <laughs> we heard on the comms, like, there was a lot of chatter going on. Like, it was all good chatter, but I actually really agree with what Paradox said in his interview yesterday, that you do generally want one person to be the fire hose of information. Um, so that would be something that, as a, as a team that plays together more often, would get tightened up. But we'll see how far it'll carry them here today against Sudden Death. Ganon on this first quad with Rockets. We've got Niv on the other side with his own rocket launcher and Red Armor ready to shut Ganon down if he comes around the wrong corner. But no! Oh, what a sniper shot just down the highway. Niv wasn't even looking, and that is weapon deletion for the Snackers. Yeah, that's actually huge because uh, Sudden Death did not get a full start, but uh, Ganon with that quad is earning them full control. Uh, two weapons on uh, Sudden Death's side. And so, Snackers, how many frags... Um, are they going to give up to try to get their first weapon? Well, second weapon. Let's see if, uh, you know, the first weapon for the team to hold right now. They get none. Uh oh. <laughs> Zero? <laughs> All right. Three rockets on uh, the side of sudden death. And uh, let's see if they can constrict this control. Uh, this this is uh, a map that is uh, known for its brutal map locks. Um, and Sun and Death are no strangers to putting people through the ringer. Carapace in charge of this low spawn. He gets it, and he's out. As long as uh, enemies don't get it, he's happy. Blaze gets the high. Um, did he? Uh, yeah, he ended up dying again in there, dropping a pack. Doesn't really matter when your team, your enemy team, has so many rockets. But, yeah. Yeah, this is a much better start for Sun and Death so far. 
Yeah, um, and the thing about this map is you don't have the pent uh, that kind of changes things up and, you know, is a p potential uh, catalyst for the change of control. Um, if you're able to seal it or something, you have to somehow flood your way back. Uh, frags are a currency that you're going to trade for uh, the killing of enemy rockets, and sometimes you have to give up 10, 20, you know, more frags just to kill enough enemy weapons, get yourself on one, get some stack, and then earn your way back onto the high side. Yeah, that must be mad now. Carapace is just staking his ground here at Rocket Launcher, burning a lot of his stack, but getting a lot of frags for his trouble. And yeah, this is much more clicky than, say, DM3, where you can uh, you can farm a lot more spawns here, and Carapace is happy to do so, giving them a, a hefty lead just in the first three minutes. Yeah, um, and still, I think it's, I mean, Blaze got that high <laughs> RL, but it's, what, what do you do uh, since then? Uh, yeah. they, they haven't been able to get on. Okay, grab some armors. Everyone rush it. Nice. Boom. Zunido. <laughs> okay, double. So he kills an enemy rocket and gets a rocket. Um, when you have enough armor and mega, you don't need a weapon. You are the weapon. You just run up to the guy. Let yeah. the splash damage do the work. Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, optimal. Uh, <laughs> you need them to bore on themselves because your boomstick is not good. <laughs> but, uh, but Ganon's taken this next quad. So even though Carapace got bullied on down by Zunita, and Zunita is still alive actually, he's got rockets, he's got red, it's really going to be up to him to take down some of these bigger stacks, delete some weapons, and start to, to get a foothold on DM2. Yeah, uh, he manages to bully Carapace off of the secret. Oh, God. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, Ganon, really good push there. Uh, extremely important frag. Uh, the difference between your enemies having one rocket launcher and zero is insane. Um, it's literally infinitely more <laughs> rocket launchers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we got a we got CZM math uh, professor in the I chat. I was just about to say, uh, it's more of a philosophical question. We really should defer to him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll ask him after the break, and I'll let you guys know. But. How much more is one than zero? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, oh man, Snackers have not been able to work their way onto much of a rocket. Yeah. A, a couple rockets here and there, but they get killed off. Uh, they're hunting so well. Uh, sudden death is um, the enemy rockets, and every one of them has a little bit of red next to their health stack. Well, Carapace goes down. Yeah, Sudden Death is looking way, way too well off right now. Niv has a rocket launcher. Yeah, Doesn't Niv. look like he's going to last long, though. Yeah, earns himself an RL. Um, but, it, uh, okay, he gets a yellow armor. Uh, can he work his way onto the squad now? He's getting here rather early. He's got literally all the rockets in the world yeah. to just rain down. Even if it takes down a few teammates, just being on the pad is going to be worth its own weight. Rio has so much armor coming into this. Niv is taking a slightly more defensive position. Yeah. He's still here. Here's the rocket jump. There's the quad. What a turnaround shot from Niv in order to maintain the control. Everybody's trying to dogpile onto him, and Ganon takes him down with the boomstick. Yeah, he, he does a really good job with that quad. He does die, you know, uh, but... Overall, he's able to turn some uh, amount of the control there. He kills some enemy weapons. He denies an enemy quad. Um, does really good for his team. They give up a lot of frags there. You saw the flood come into play. And uh, the control isn't great, but yeah, they got a secret and a red armor. Or, yeah, a red armor and a rocket um, from secret. So, Blaze, uh, let's see what he does with his rock. Well, wow. Yeah. Dominating control again. <laughs> yeah, Kara's looking a little battle damage at the moment. Three rockets for sudden death, though. And this isn't about, uh, okay, we've got the weapons, we've got some yellow, let's let's go kick some ass. It's like, oh no, they've actually got enough armor that they're going to be burning us a bit if we try to do anything. So a little bit more waiting, but there's Ganon on this quad, totally uncontested this time, which leaves it a little ambiguous about where the Snackers players are. Yeah, and uh, in this map, um, this this 90 frag frag lead probably seems like a lot, but um, the thing is, uh, Snackers are doing a really good job of choosing situations um, to flood in and try to attempt to wrestle that control back. And if they're able to get strong control, uh, frag lead can blow up the other direction really quick. Yeah. So um, they're being very responsible, and it, it, they've had a rough time of it, but um, the game's not even close to over now. No. 
Coach with uh, Red Armor and a Rocket. Cannon, of course, is still looking very strong here as well. Back through the TP. I'm looking for the move back towards Secret. It's going to be Claude coming up here pretty soon. Yeah. And Kara's Two on the pad. Rockets. All yellow armor, but Kara's also got Mega. Yeah, so one strategy you can do here. Um, well, they don't decide to go for it. <laughs> well, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, actually, uh, RA Mega. Both rockets uh, from Snackers are an RA Mega. They're going to wait <laughs> out this squad. <laughs> All right, uh, you got to hit the shotgun first. Zenita is a genius, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not quite a rocket launcher, that one. Yeah. Um, and so you see Niv and Coach are behind here. Boom, nice, rocket nice. to meet them. Good team info, the quad glow helps, and all that kind of stuff. So three to, three rocks, three rockets. We're going to see a push from Snackers here. They, they're going to know they got to push their, advan uh, their advantage here. So a huge team fight at the water. Ganon's still alive, just barely holding on to it. But this is where they can start to mill some of the some of the spawns. That's exactly what they need. It's well over 100 frags in the lead now, and yeah, Ganon has done his part to secure that. Yeah. Um, yeah, they push in. They lose a lot of rockets, but off the spawns, uh, it's not terrible for him. Uh, Rio having to take this quad. Yeah. With almost no stack. He drops a oh, pack nice. even. Three rockets for the uh, Snackers team, and uh, what are they able to do uh, to try to wrestle this control back? This is, it's getting to be uh, time to do it. Yeah, let's uh, actually see, or rather hear, if the Slackers, or not the, not the Slackers or the Snackers, but rather Sudden Death, if they're feeling a little better now. Let's get Rio on here and see if he's uh, leading the charge. Never go on, on man. That's all in Swedish, of course. Man måste hålla tela. Men vad hände? Jag hör ju inte att någon är kommer. Här ligger. Nej, jag måste ta. Där de är, de är. Asså. Slip, slip, akta. Okej, kom för ett kill. Åh, det var nära ögat. Pack under quad. Kommer. Ja, kommer. Ja, det är en till här eller? Snodde low. No, jag dödde low åt håll. Åh, han har ett i liv under quad. He's got one HP under quad. Nej, pack, pack under quad. Pack, 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 pack. Tink kvar. Bra, bra. RL dödade under Q också. Man, RL path, RL path. Min high. Ja, bra. Uh, mega ligger bäst. Uh, rasta. Ja, <laughs> ah, jag kan inte. Low nu om på sec. Zorak, I think your experience mirrors that of a lot of Quake players where you become somewhat multilingual with uh, a lot of different languages, but a very specific vocabulary. Yeah, I know how to say, you know, Zazatka, which is trap in Polish. I know Krasnyarma, which is Russian for red armor, you know. Uh, you, Things you, you would find you in any to. tourist phrase book, really, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, mean, 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 ra, mean, mean, hi. Yeah. It, uh, it all translates pretty well. Um, it's not that different. Yeah, and so this 100 frag lead has been pretty sticky for the past few minutes. Uh, sudden death. Um, they never got a full map lock so far, but uh, it, they've they've had dominating enough control that uh, the frag lead has not been able to be earned back from Snackers. Coach with this quad, things can turn around. Yeah, it's only 100 frags now in the last 10 minutes. And yeah, this is a really good start. He's getting some good spawns out of this. Yeah, if you take a look at the overlay right now. Uh, well, but down to two uh, rockets. But one uh, important thing about this map, uh, and it's not entirely obvious from anything you see on the screen, but uh, you have to think of where the rocket ammo spawns. Yeah. Um, and you get one little 10 pack over on low, and of course the low pickup itself. Uh, if you are relegated to the back rooms of the map, uh, you run out of rockets so easily, and you're fighting each other for the rocket ammo on your own team, even if you have you know, two or three rockets. There's just not enough ammo to go around. And so being on this high side, uh, now that Snackers has control of it, um, they, they can uh, do a lot of work here uh, to turn it around. Yeah, I'm hoping that Zanito can make some magic happen on this quad. He's being pretty conservative with it because he knows he's got a big target on his back, quite literally, as players keep spawning big and coming after him. But now they've got uh, all kinds of rocket launchers, even if they don't all have the ammo on the eye. You can see that Zanito only has five rockets himself, so he needs to be careful. But he's making such good wow. use out of it, getting a few more rockets out of that pack. 
Yeah. So many frags. Uh, that was huge. Uh, killed a, an enemy RL. Um, denied the low. Uh, Rio 8 HP in the NG area. Oh, yeah, dead. Okay. So, two rockets for uh, snackers. Um, now, uh, it's their turn. Uh, they have control of the high side. Uh, I think Zunino is probably going to be the quad carrier here. No. Maybe call him to a teammate. Jump on the head, please. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. give it to Zenito okay. again. He, he just wants to keep the party rolling. And I, I'm more than happy to let him. Yeah, so he takes the high. He probably got a call from an uh, ally that, yeah, tell he's lost. Take high. And, uh, oh, that is too juicy. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like fish in a barrel. <laughs> uh, yeah, and... Uh, okay, so Carapace is going to be the dangerous one here. Zunito's taken a rocket on the chin. Down to 30 health. He's going to be stopping his aggression here. Carapace is going to be the one to take down. So that really did help. Uh, 30 frags in just about three minutes. So we're on pace. But Carapace might just be the one to break that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, 25 frags. There you go. Uh, you earned back a bit. Um, they don't have the control they would desire. But uh, coming into this next quad, um, I think... Uh, Sudden Death is going to play for it. Okay, we see rocket fights here. This could be huge. So Zanito's going to try to uh, get milk from a stone, but with just this yellow armor, he's asking for a lot, but he, the way he's moving through this hallway, he is just getting untouched and getting so many frags out of it. Yeah. Absolutely huge and kind of ridiculous what he was able to get there. Boar potential is huge in, well, every area that of the map, but specifically under quad, um, all the people that can run into your face. Yeah. Uh, it's extremely difficult he to get out of that all. situation. Oh, two yeah. rockets killed the yellow. Yeah. Oh, no, wow. but the grenade from Ganon finds him shutting it down. Snacker still has two rockets and Coach has a red armor. Uh, Carapace is still looking really dangerous on the other side of the map, but this is getting closer. Yeah, and Carapace, he, he understands the situation on the map. He knows if I lose my rocket, it's really bad for my team. He's being uh, careful with it on path, giving some pot shots. He's not going to commit, though. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I think they're probably going to give up this quad unless something crazy happens. Yeah. Niv is here, and he's actually taken the, the other way. Yeah, Carapace was pushing over towards water. And so Niv is going to take a bit of a slower route with this Mega. Okay. And to Hallward, that's not going to be my favorite. But, oh, he finds both uh, Ganon and uh, Rist. <laughs> 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 Had to try for it. Yeah. So this is uh, actually rather big. So Niv doesn't have a huge stack, but he is taking an area here that oh. Carapace has been calling his home, and he is moving in right. squatter style. Here's what we call a map lock, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, saving the red armor for your teammate. Boom, four rockets to zero. That 50 frag uh, lead that um, has been you know, whittling down, uh, it could blow up pretty quick. Snackers have a big chance here. It's time to go get that rocket again, though. Like, leaving that room open is going to be a little dangerous. Nobody's gone for it just yet. Yeah, so low timing. Someone needs to be responsible and make sure the enemies don't get that, but no one's there. Yeah, RST is in danger of picking that up. There it is. But what are they going to do about it? Like, uh, he might need to do what Carapace has done and just keep playing it slow. Niv is back on this quad again. Is he going to go aggressive to lower? Oh, what is Carrot doing? He is just trolling for time and splash damage, getting a lot out of it. Niv might just need to chill. Yeah, um, a little bit of uh, armor is going the way of the enemy team. That low, you never want to see, uh, you know, the team, the enemy team get that for free when they're out of control. But, um, yeah, it's the, uh, Sudden Death has worked themselves back onto two rockets now. And um, they might be able to, you know, uh, stem the bleeding enough. So uh, the big question there is Niv with the, the quad before this last one, he wiped lower, he had total control of it, and then he left and nobody came in to fill that vacuum. So, yeah, that's where we s saw these rockets from Sudden Death get picked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And uh, a lot of times uh, you, you give the responsibility to the quad carrier is, hey, take, you know, the common area is go path. Uh, on path, we might see it here. Go attack low. Kill enemy rockets. Uh, deny the low. But um, it seems like maybe Snackers has, has lost the timing on this low. Um, nice. That kills a red. Yeah, reds are going to be everywhere for sudden death. But three rockets, Zunito 
they're not going to push this. Like, they're actually happy to waste as much time on low as, as possible. Yeah, Carapace is still there hiding under the lift. Yeah, and uh, you may see this situation where every player on the map gets to have a weapon. Uh, four and four, that doesn't happen too often, but... Um, this is so tense. Yeah, and it looks like Sudden Death is going to try to play it slow in the back rooms. Uh, maybe now that they all have weapons, they're going to oh, come attack. Oh, this is a push. Yeah. Huge. It's a lot of splash damage, though. Carapace is still alive here as well. They are just now coming in and cleaning out. Yeah. Taking over just before the quad, and here comes Carapace with it. Perfect timing. Absolutely textbook, and that is going to secure the lead for them and remove all this control that Snackers has built up. Yeah, extremely coordinated push there. Uh, the chaos that comes in almost immediately. Uh, you saw Snackers was just not quite ready for all those fights, and uh, sudden death kills uh, almost well, all of their rockets until they pick one up. Uh, and I, I have to say, it goes all the way back to that quad, you know, um, leaving low after wiping it out, you know, that you just let them rebuild in the Rhineland, basically. Yeah, and, you know, that's the one opportunity uh, where you know, if you have perfect map knowledge in your team, you know, if they could see this overlay, it's like, oh, obviously, you know, the correct decision is I got to do some damage on this low, if not deny it. But uh, when there's so much, like, information to be processed uh, around the map, you know, what armor, what health, what you know, yeah. uh, rocket, uh, they missed out on it. And they could have had a, a full map walk, but uh, it went the other way. And now Coach getting this quad. It's not going to be enough, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. That was the push, and it was a push that was several minutes in the building. Just really playing the long con, and uh, it, it's going to be a narrow victory for uh, for Sudden Death here, but they are going to pull it off very decisively. Yeah, um, they had the lead uh, from the first second to the last minute, uh, and the last second, so... Uh, it, it seems pretty comfortable, but uh, I think an experienced player... Um, you know, like these uh, players in the stream are, um, they are not going to feel comfortable even 100 cracks up on this map in certain situations. Uh, and Sudden Death had, had to sweat there for a little bit. They could have gotten locked out. Um, and so uh, we've got to see how happy they are about this win. Um, it, it's not as dominant as you would probably want to be comfortable with, but it, a win's a win, and we're going to see an E1M2. Yeah, let's listen to the Keebler Elves one more time as, uh, as this map closes out. Not a big. Follow. Han är död. Low fem till gång. Två är den slow. Över arm. Ja, så det är tjänar knappt att vinna de här matcherna. Ena var ju spelad dåligt. Oh, sounds fucked. Oh, they're grilling themselves. <laughs> really? They weren't happy about that? No, they're saying we <laughs> we don't deserve to win this match. Wow. No, that was I I completely disagree. That was brilliant um with the takeover towards the end there. Really really well well done. Yeah. I I think so they had dominating control and then um the uh it it, it is a frustrating situation where you we're in control for so long, and then you're on the back foot, and you have to play that back room with your lead. Uh, you don't like winning like that. Uh, it's it's an acceptable way to win, and but it doesn't feel strong. You want to feel strong winning your map, and then coming into the third map, it gives you confidence. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see, because E1M2 is a good sudden death map from what I remember. Coach would rather play on Schloss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, TB4, you know? Yeah, yeah. I... I I approve of it. Yeah, uh, a lot of players have been talking. Um, uh, I've I've had the same conversation with a lot of people. Uh, we got four maps uh, for TDM, at least in NA, that we really like, and I think EU is taking a liking to Schloss as well. Hopefully, next QH LAN, uh, we get a fifth in there, and we yeah, can we uh, need to find a fifth. Yeah, let's get a five map map pool. Yeah. Because uh, Schloss is good enough, but we need that fifth map mm -hmm. because a uh, four map pool doesn't make sense. Yeah, yep. it, it's been 30 years. It's about time. <laughs> here we go. Right. Yeah. All right. So map decider here. Honestly, I didn't think that any of our quarterfinals would come down to a three mapper like this, especially with a team thrown together like the Snackers. But they've been playing incredibly well. 
E1M2, no red armor. You're not going to be seeing these god tier stacks. It's going to be a lot grimier, a lot grittier. And uh, in my eyes, that just means that Zenito can do crazy shit more often. He doesn't have to wait. Yeah. Um, it's uh, boomstick aim is uh, <laughs> extremely important here. Uh, the 50%. I was talking with uh, uh, Recall last night. Um, and, uh, he's... Well, actually, no, that was today. Yeah, that's all blurred together. Anyway. Time is meaningless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he says, you know. Especially countdowns. Your boomstick is so important on specifically this map, uh, also DM3, and uh, a lot of these really top tier players are going to be hitting 50, 60%, which yeah. is, is crazy. The way it calculates your boomstick isn't um, how many pellets do you hit as a percentage, not, you know, did one of your pellets hit. Anyway, I eat the right, stuff, the right but, way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so. Uh, uh, I know Coach, um, he's really good at this map. His boomstick's not the strongest, but uh, he has a really good idea of uh, the mental model of how to control the map, how to stay alive with, when you have your rocket and everything. Let's see what the spawns give us. Coach with the rocket, RST with the quad. Seems kind of balanced, Blaze gets the yellow. Okay. Okay, so nothing too crazy there. Reels got the grenades here as well, so RST should have had more support coming into the grenade room. Yeah, so, so that's we'll going to be a dead quad. We'll see uh, if Koja's, uh, my praise of him is correct, if he's able to keep this rocket alive. He, yeah, he escapes. Well, nope. Comes around that corner, but uh, pretty hectic. Zunino gets second yellow. This rocket, nobody wants it. All right, no, <laughs> actually everyone wants it. <laughs> and it actually gets handed off to Ganon, who's got the green armor. Coming back in here towards TP exit. Didn't finish that frag, okay. Yeah, that SSG I, it sometimes just misses. Uh, you, you will be like, uh, it should just hit a good chunk here, and then most of it misses. Ganon running away here. Is this nerves? He <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, he, did, he doesn't drop, so obviously uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, this quad being fought for. Blaze gets it. Yeah. One HP. Blaze did a really good job of hoping that everybody's uh, eyesight was movement-based. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's the funny little uh, tricks you can have on this map where you you hide in certain areas. Everybody knows them, but you forget to check sometimes in the hectic yeah. of everything going on. Uh, the super shotgun is a good gun on this map. Um, so Zanino with the screen and SSG. We'll see if he's able to get into this wow. rocket. It is a shotgun party. He's uh, Rio, very good steal on that rocket. We're still uh, we're playing uh, you know DM one here where uh, <laughs> there there is no rocket launcher, but uh, got some grenades, and some shotguns for the sudden death team. That ac actually is uh, nobody's got weapons at all. Yeah, this is just shotgun city. Yeah, Kara's gonna be waiting for this rocket. So whose boomsticks oh, are more sorry. coordinated? Oh, watch out for mana. Huh? These tellies, uh. <laughs> yeah, almost had a tell right there. Oh, Koj, RST getting some frags as well. Quads up. And yeah. Carapace has got the rocket launcher, though. So Zanito's got to be a little bit cautious here. Did he want to fall down there? Okay. Um, I think he, he called to his team. Uh, yeah, you take yellow. Okay, um, okay. He, he has 72. Yeah. Some players are more generous than others. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, a big debate <laughs> on when you, you take it for yourself versus, you know, leave it for your teammate. And but there's Carapace. The oh. Ooh, great rocket angle there. That was... that. I was fooled by that, actually. I thought that was Carapace who came around the corner because those rockets were coming from above. Teammate dropped down in close range with a shotgun, and then there was rockets from below from Carapace. So, yeah, nobody uh, would nobody would coordinate that unless they're speedball and burn couch, but, uh, <laughs> but that worked out really well for Kara. Yeah, um, definitely. This, uh, just adding in that second boom sticker into a fight, uh, it makes it so much more difficult to uh, you know, correctly prioritize your targets and everything. Um, so this quad is looking pretty strong for Carapace. Uh, he's got yellow, rocket, quad. Let's see what he can do on this run. He's even got uh, you know, the, the smaller weapons you would... Uh, yeah, SSG extremely important with the squad. All right, we'll have to see if Carry Pace can <laughs> tie things up and push things into a lead for Sudden Death. Yeah, Carapace, uh, somewhat of a StarCraft fan. Uh, <laughs> he, he has a carrier has arrived. Uh, he always posts that when he top frags. So let's see if uh, he's able to post it this uh, game. Very apropos, yeah. Oh no, they just keep coming. <laughs> it's not a Steven Seagal movie, guys. Like, you need to find Kara and, and trap him. Actually, 
If you're going to assess them anywhere, you got to do it here in the grenade room because you have a very good chance of being able to keep it going. But nope, they just die and don't respawn there. Harry's going to kill one teammate, but oh. as, as the only rocket launcher in the village, wow, that uh, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, that yellow fight got hectic. There was a drop pack. Uh, enemy spawns. Niv gets that rocket. Um, and now, well, Snackers has uh, two rockets, uh, but Rio has this quad. What can he do? Kills one rocket. Just chilling. Yeah. Uh, gets the yellow. <laughs> you can hear a up? huge party in the next room, but Rio doesn't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Well, he's going to know this next rock is coming up. He's got quad. He's got yellow. But uh, <laughs> really well done by uh, Snackers to do a lot of damage, though. Rio's not comfortable. Um, no. He got the rocket, but he's super low on health. Wants to get out of here. Yeah. Holding one open for Kara. Yeah, and this is a strategy uh, I see the Euros employ quite a bit is, well, not going to do it this time, but sometimes uh, the, ro the you take a rocket launcher so you can secure a rocket launcher. Yeah. Um, and uh, Rio deciding, uh, you know, teammate giving him info. Mega's coming up. Get Mega, get quad probably. And so let's see what he can do. That is going to put Niv on the pad for the rocket launcher, so it might not work out well for them in the long run. So Rio here with rockets and, and quad and Mega. He's going to be very strong indeed, but he's going to be waiting for this yellow. A full 10 seconds, maybe? That could allow Niv all the breathing room he needs to make good with that rocket. Yeah, um, there's quite a few spawns around this yellow armor, so if you leave it for too long, uh, your the enemy team can all just spawn there. Yeah. And then um, yellow's huge on this map. Uh, and so Rio decides, you know, let's play it safe. We got somewhat of a lead. We got, you know, some rockets. Let's just control the yellow like we should. Uh, we don't need to hunt too hard right now. I think the long-term thing here is that Rio going defensive with that quad specifically when he already had Mega, um, that's going to give Niv a lot of breathing room. Now, he's holding on to the grenade uh, choke point here. Here comes, a here comes Niv. It's yep. going to be rockets on rockets, and they Great kill each other. Nobody's a big got reset. Oh, yeah. Uh, Snackers gets the packs. Yeah. Rio steals a quad, though. Snack packs. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. And this time, it's Blaze and Kara with the rockets and Yellow Armor. Okay. How, how they didn't, like, clash while being able to get all those items, I don't know. But, wow, what is yeah. happening here at Yellow Armor? Yeah, Holy every, shit. Yeah, <laughs> great fight there. Niv is called out. Yeah, get the yellow. Blaze, does he survive? No. But, um, Carapace uh, has a rocket. It's a little bit of yellow to work with. 35 yellow is essentially 100 RA if you're compared to DM2. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Kara's still doing a lot of damage here, extending this lead just a little bit. Whoa, oh, no. Oh, that's grenade room for you. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a couple spawns in here. It, it gets fun when you have enough ammo, but it's getting flooded down quite a bit. If Kara can secure this yellow, uh, Sun Death is going to be pretty uh, pretty comfortable here. Yeah, for better or worse, that quad was uh, just keep uh, keep it out of Carapace's arms, or, or at least like Rio's arms. So mission accomplished there, but Kara's still the one to take down. Oh my god, he's still here. And yeah, his rocket aim and reaction on these spawns is incredible. I, I guess the break point is, do they have time to get one shot of Boomstick off before they die? <laughs> yeah, um... It's uh, it's land, so um, you don't get this uh, anti lag stuff where oh they're spawning and shooting me before I even see them. But that so that also means that as carapace, there are specific angles you want to avoid standing in, so you don't get that spawn shotgun. Yeah, exactly. Um, and carapace, uh, he's he's going to be watching the kill feed a lot here, and he's going to you know see when an enemy dies. He's going to have his crosshair trained and ready to. Uh, yeah. Ooh. So. Which player had the Mega there? The, the low mega. TTK of Quake World makes it like uniquely the Quake, where like here and also on DM4, like knowing where to stand for for those spawns really is the most important thing. It's literally gun kata. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and there's kind of a, a target prioritization to the spawn points as you're reading the key, kill feed, and uh, so much efficiency you can eke out yeah. on, an, on E1, M2 uh, with. You know, each boomstick you're able to, you know, avoid taking is uh, extremely uh, important uh, for maintaining control like uh, we see Blaze doing here. Yeah. And uh, burst fire assess weapons are way better than machine guns. 
I'll down that hill happily. <laughs> yeah. We're interesting it. Anyway, so 128 to 90. Blaze had that last quad. He survived with it. He still got rockets. He's handed some off to Zanito. Uh, so this has the beginnings of a play. Niv taking away yellow armor. I like all that. Kara's just hanging out in the rocket launcher room, uh, denying coach. But now that they've got the call out, that could be dangerous. So Ganon's getting this quad. Okay. Yeah, they, they decide to attack into the yellow and while well, quad's spawning at the same time. So uh, Sudden Death say, all right, you can have the yellow. Uh, we want Rocket plus quad. And uh, Ganon with a quad run now. Um, a little bit of yellow to work with. Carapace uh, takes that yellow spawn. So what is he going to do here? What's his objective? Is he going to hunt down Blaze in the Mega Room? Or is he going to give it up? That would be a viable target. It feels like, yeah, Ganon getting that quad was a bit of a case of split attention from Snackers, where they had just gotten some rockets, they would just gotten some armor. Uh, really wanted to find where Carapace was down at the rocket, but that left Ganon at the quad. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there's, uh, in that situation, Ganon, with the quad, he didn't have quite enough stacked attack into Mega, and Blaze did a really good job, you know, perk yourself into Mega with that green armor, uh, don't die, you have a rocket, it's important, and Zunita with the rocket launcher. Okay, another quad to, uh, sudden death. It's looking good. Yeah. Yeah, this is the, the worst case scenario for them. For, for Snackers. Mm -hmm. Carapace with the quad. Back in the grenade launcher room, ready to play whack-a-mole. Yeah, and maybe a, a tendency I'm seeing on this map is the yellow armor is going uh, sudden death's way, and that is uh, doing a lot of the difference here. Really good movement there. He's holding the pack for the ally. Oh, good denial there from Blaze. But yeah, don't, don't let things get worse, right? Yeah, Karen does kind of take himself out of the, the map for a bit to, to hang out at Mega. Like, there's a spawn here, and he, he really does want that Mega. Uh, but that means that he's not going to be that helpful to the rest of his team for a little bit. RST and Ganon also have rocket launchers, but maybe this is where the Snackers could do some damage. Yeah, so I think he's going to know, yeah, you know, blasted Blaze with the uh, quad rocket. Mega should come up soon. Though. How? Okay, how... Kara's at Mega... Snackers had two rockets. How is Ganon just allowed to walk away with that quad? I don't understand that. Yeah, uh, prioritization of the yellow there, I guess, from uh, Snackers. But uh, Ganon comes in and kills everyone right when it spawns. Uh, earns himself a yellow. There's dominant control here. Um, Coach at the RL box with RL. Hiding. You got five ammo to work with. Um, yeah. So... We'll see if Snackers can get themselves back into some control here. Yeah, I still want to call that a huge miss because ideally, if you know that Kara's at Mega, like that makes Quad even a bigger priority. You can put so much pressure on the Mega with the Quad. And even if you have other teammates coming to defend, you know, that's just cannon fodder at that point. But here it's 55 frags, 8 minutes on the clock. Definitely doable. But yeah, the priorities need to get sorted out a little bit here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, I think Sudden Death has had really good uh, prioritization prioritization of which items, you know, as a team they're going to fight for and stuff like that. And yeah, a little bit of split brain on uh, Snackers, which um, can happen in uh, these kind of teams where you don't yeah. have all the experience in the world playing together. Um, good rocket there, though. Uh, three rockets on Snackers teams. They've, they've done the whole sit in RL box for a while until you get enough rocket launchers to work with. Oh, great rockets there. And yeah, that's this is exactly the situation I wanted to see, you know, Carapace being on the other side of, where he's kind of trolling the rockets at Mega while still having teammates trying to come and help, but still taking a lot of damage. My god, the, the frag's happening right now. It is just yeah. a meat grinder. Wow, he even shoots that last rocket with 5 HP, but doesn't drop. Um, all rockets off the map for Snackers. Uh, sudden death with three. And Ganon, you know, is... is, is his job's not too hard here. You got a rocket in yellow, nobody's going to come attack you with anything useful. So. I know there's time to bring it back, but that was such a demoralizing exchange. Uh, Rist with the, with the quad. And, and you mentioned, you know, the yellow's going to, uh, to sudden death, but also the quads have been. And I, I just haven't been seeing, like, the big stupid dumb attacks on quad that you need to see on E1M2. Yeah. And uh, one thing about this map is uh, a lot of players say there's just not enough 
uh, material on the map for four players to run with rocket launchers, but we're seeing Sudden Death do it. Uh, four of them with rocket launchers. Most of them have some yellow stack, so the damage is not coming up out from Snackers. Um, uncoordinated floods, maybe. Uh, they're giving up frags, but uh, Sudden Death is still healthy. India here. We've got Carapace. Really leading the charge here and uh, kind of stepping into that role for, for DPS. But yeah, Rio's had several moments of glory here as well. Wrist has been really dependable. Ganon has kind of been that wild card where he's he really is where he needs to be at all times. Even if he's not able to do a lot with the quad, he's going to be there. Yeah, and uh, you see Carapace with, uh, yeah, quite quite the frag lead over everyone else. Um, Carrier has arrived, and, yeah. uh... Yeah. <laughs> but Ganon, he's he's doing an important job, but not a yeah. glamorous job. He's right. getting all these yellows, and that, I think, is a, a quite a big key in uh, how you would get back into this map, is he needs some armor to work with, some weapons, uh, and Ganon's just not letting them get the materials they need. Uh, Snackers, that is. This is one of those many, many times I'm going to feel bad about the, the posterity of this matchup on the wiki, just looking at the score, uh, because for the first half of it, it was, I wouldn't say neck and neck, but it was uh, an appreciable uh, gap. And the Snackers, for being a, a, a ringer group, almost took a series away from, uh, from Sudden Death. Keep wanting to say Aeronauts. Yeah, I mean, we saw Snackers with a ton of chances um, on uh, all maps and taking the DM3, of course. Yeah. And uh, four minutes left, 90 frags, well, or 100 frags, I can't do math. Uh, I should look at the net and not the, uh, the scores themselves. But both here and on DM2, there were like specific moments where things could have gone one way, and you just watch the decision making, and, and it doesn't really pan out that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the thing about four and four is you got uh, the process. You know, there's so much information to process on the map, um, and when your team loses out on the information funnels, you know, get get the timings, have the the whole brain of the team understanding the the situation on the map where they need to be, all that kind of stuff. When you lose that, not only do you you know die and you lose your 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 rocket, your weapon, your armor, whatever, you can lose information, and uh, that can make it really hard to get back. To so we need a quad steal here. Uh, doesn't happen to do much with it, but yeah, maybe a little bit of fragging out now. 113 net. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I hate to call something done at, at three minutes, especially for a map that that wasn't that far for the bulk of it. But here, yeah, this is just a victory lap for sudden death. I, I want to hear if they're like not berating themselves as much now. I want to hear a little bit more joviality from the elves. Oh man, stackers go better at all for Molan. Yeah, it's tomt. Are are all på quad now. He's calling it enemy are all quad, I guess. Min är Vad gör han? Kvad, kvad över. Nej. på kvad. Jag behöver också på möga. Nej, det är Här kommer Spikes med RL. Jag är på OG, ja. Har du det, Rio? Det borde vara snart. Nej, det var jag. All right, all business from them. All business. Yep, these are uh, these are the best teams. You know, they, um, they when you're a competitor, you keep it serious the whole time. Uh, you got to be in the mindset. Um, and uh, so yeah, uh, maybe we'll you know afterwards they'll uh, share some like, congratulations and stuff. But yeah, I think in their minds, they probably think this is a, a best of three. They sh they need to you know they they normally win, right? Right, right. Um, I I think. Uh, sudden death. Uh, you could hear the frustration a little bit um, last map that they should have won harder, right? And so maybe they're not going to be totally happy with a 2-1, but it's looking pretty comfortable in the end on this third map. 
Yeah, I mean, they are going to have to play against the winner of Firing Slackers and Fraggers United, which is going to be our fourth and final quarterfinal. Uh, and honestly, that's the one I have the most question marks about. Uh, Firing Slackers is a composite of, uh, of several teams. <laughs> Firing Squad and, uh, and Slackers, of course. And uh, Fraggers United um, is pretty solid as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, Firing uh, Squad Slackers... Um, FSR, uh, they are very strong. We played them in the groups. Uh, it went about as well as it did against Milton's team, uh, the Commando. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll have to see how the, the, the semis play out with that. Um, Rio getting this la uh, last quad. All right, get some frags on the board. Let's get some... Uh, I guess Rio didn't want to do that much commentary after all. Decided to win these matches. Yeah. And these uh, TDM players always use the right weapon. Um, it's like... I, I bore <laughs> so much. Compared to duelers? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, I, I There's three weapons in the, the game, Spencer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the rocket launcher is good, right? So, <laughs> yes, like, it I'm is. just going to use that. Oh, I have quad. Uh, now I'm dead. Right, I'm yeah, death. exactly. Uh, you saw Rio with the super shotgun there. He's like, eh, it's better than a rocket launcher when you have quad. But yeah. Cool. Carapace with the sentry. Um, and, uh, yeah. Seems easy enough in the end for the uh, E1M2, but it was not an easy uh, best of three for Sudden Death to win. Not even a little, which is where some of that frustration could be coming from, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Oof. All right. We're yeah, back. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. yeah, sorry. I know we're... we're QH land, everybody's doing everything all the time. Streamers are adminning, admins are serving food, cooking bacon. Can yeah, you smell I the smell bacon? That. I yeah, smell that. it's it's cruel and unusual, is what it is. Uh, we've got hosts also doing stream QA, so so thank you for everybody doing that. Everybody's doing everything to make sure that these matches, we can hold on to them for all time. Even the matches that uh, some players might wish get buried in a deep dark hole. Yeah, and um, that was that was a shaky victory. Mm. Um, they were not happy about that DM3. I, I guess I there's two ways to look at it. It was like, okay, cool, Snackers can actually show up and, and kick some ass. They had some good stuff going. You know, for a while there on DM2, I was scared for sudden death. I was like, are they going to lose in the quarter? It, it was that one moment. It yeah. was one moment, end a quad, kill lower, and then just abandon it. Yeah. Like... We've we we know the stories of what happens when you like partially kill somebody, but you don't like kill their son. You know they're gonna grow up, they're gonna have a vendetta, they're gonna come back to get you. It's a tale that's been told time and time again. It happened here again today. Yeah, oh, dude, I was I wasn't doing commentary for that, but I was so I <laughs> yeah, was so I engaged in that look game. Away. Yeah, <laughs> I was so engaged in this series because, of course, I'm a part of Sudden Death, and they're all my yeah. very very good friends and. I was worried. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, they pulled through. Yeah, they did. Did they need you to help out? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zorak, thank you very much. Uh, we're, we're going to get ready for this interview here. Stick around, especially in that sweater. You look nice and cozy. All righty. <laughs> okay, so we've got one more semifinal coming up here. Nope. We have one more quarterfinal. You're right, you're right. It's been a long, it's been yep. a long week. Yeah, one yep. more quarterfinal. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, that's going to be uh, firing slackers and fraggers united. Fraggers united. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's gonna be a tough one for fraggers united. Nice of them to make it all the way to the quarterfinals, though. I yeah. don't know how they, who they beat in the group stage. I can tell you because yeah. Alice is doing such an awesome job with the wiki. Um, again, all the organization here. Top notch. Uh, so Fraggers United went one one against a Commando and and Cough. So they had to beat Cough. Uh, all right. Okay. And they lost to Commando. So. Yeah, but everybody loses to Commando, so that's okay. Yeah, it's a bit they of a gimme. They beat Cough. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so they made it into the uh, quarterfinals. They're gonna have a. Uh, yeah, that's a tough hill to climb to beat <laughs> FSR, but. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have that game com coming soon. Uh, trying to get everything sorted. Of course, because of Rio playing the Sudden Death um, games instead of doing commentary, I'm trying to juggle a lot of things here too. Uh, just trying to get commentators for 
for for every single game and so on. Yeah. And also, a big thank you to Zorak. I know he needs to go eat very soon, so I, we can't abuse him anymore. I will watch him eat bacon. Maybe we can get him back for like later games, uh, <laughs> later semis or finals or something. Uh, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, how are we looking? I think we're looking ready here. Um, oh, do we have do we I'm have Boo sure. over there? I think we do. Sorry, I, I forgot he existed for a moment. <laughs> no, <come on. laughs> All right, Boo. QH Land 24, Masters 4v4, another match. The Sudden Death guys take it to three maps. A nail biter, <laughs> if I say so myself. We're missing somebody. We have a substitute that's normally not not playing. Was supposed to be our caster, yeah. Rio. What's it uh, What's it feel like to get uh, put in BPS's spot? I mean, it's a really tough role to fill. He's the anchor of this team, but trying my best with no preparation. But yeah, I want to thank our sponsors, Hyreslandslaget. It's great if you want to rent a crane or a Quake World teammate. Carapies. Was it was it any question just to have Rio slot in and take the uh, BPS's spot? No, we are very lucky to have a, basically a five-man lineup. I mean, we didn't have to broadcast. We had the microphone and the surround system here after our teammates. So we have a, a solid div Division One player. So, yeah. Gannon, no issue? No issue at all. Would you rather have Rio or BPS? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomatic. Exactly. No, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Rio is uh, has played with us before, so yeah. Well, I'll, st I'll stand in the middle of the guy so I can get both all, all four of you guys' uh, comments. Um, shaky DM DM uh, three. Andy's really wanting to know what is your guys' thought process to get yourself back on on track uh, when we're playing from behind or. Well, uh, it's partly sneaking weapons to see if we can do some damage. Uh, and then it's mostly about the quads. If we can attack from different angles and what resources we have. And yeah, I think that's, uh, that, that's basically it. I think most importantly for us, we, uh, um, we lost that map, but we did really well to like get ourselves back together put the team on a good position to take the other two maps and really like, no, it's, let's just re forget that map and move forward, win the other two, win the game. That's what's important. Yeah, same. Just shake it off and go again. Yeah, same here. You guys are going to have quite a little bit, bit of a break. We've got a couple more matches in the, in the, in the queue for you guys. Dinner is served. I don't know how you guys can play when you have this, these types of distractions. What's going through your mind when you're sitting there counting, uh, uh, doing timers, trying to watch for weapons, and a nice waft of, of food comes your way? Yeah, it's a little bit distracting, and the way we're situated in the LAN area, it's a little bit of noise as well, but you kind of get used to it, being around a lot of people. I mean, it's the LAN experience, so I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, I'd say it's same. Just shut everything out, everything out and just focus on what you're doing. Yeah, it's a new experience for me, especially, but uh, you get used to it, in, uh, and it's the same thing for everyone, so, yeah, just play. <laughs> I think it's nice just to be back in a LAN experience. It feels like the old days, you know, you smell food, you smell sweat. <laughs> it's all good, you just focus on the game while you're playing, but it's nice to be here, nice to be back in a LAN experience. So I was, uh, we were over in the spectator area and Sasa's got a little bit of like a betting pool going on and he's been kind of pulling people out of the woodwork. I, I think there's two older sudden death uh, team members that have, that have come to just hang out and see with you guys. What's your guys' feelings of like the longevity of the team that you're on? Or is this something that the, the main core is here and you're not looking for potentially newer players? I'd say we, we all know each other. We have played many years together, so I think it's just who's ever available, and uh, we go. Yeah, pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, we have been a core since 2016, and then a couple of us have had children, so it has been uh, some inactivity. But I think we have been the, the, the basic core for the team. Or, uh, with the exception of Rio, 
who is uh, a, a great uh, stand-in and uh, yeah, stepping in uh, yeah, when, when we others can't. But, but it feels like we, we have a, a core here. Uh, yeah. Last question, any words for BPS? Oh, I'm sorry, Guy. We would love to have you here. I think I know you practice a lot for this and I know you organized this event. I mean, I'm happy to step in, but I would rather see him play, to be honest. I'm, I feel sorry for him not being able to be here. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, we hope you get back uh, tonight, sooner rather than later, but I realize that's a hard ask. But I hope I get to see you before I, I go home, at least. Yeah. It's a shame, especially with all the work you put in to uh, make this land happen and all that. It couldn't play the last day, so it's sad, but it. Uh, I think it's... It's gonna feel better soon enough. Yeah, what can you say? Duty calls for him, so uh, let's hope we can play with us uh, at the next LAN. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks. So much. Good luck in the in the following matches that you guys have. Stick around if you actually have time to get some food. Do that. Make sure that tumbling's not rumbling and fill up that favorite adult beverage. Andy and Jahar, I think we got potentially some upgraded casters coming for you. Yeah, you do. Thank you, Boov, and uh, good luck uh, to Sudden Death, and, and good luck for, for your clanmates, of course. Yeah, and I also hope that BPS, um, if nothing else, he gets to catch the stream, uh, because yep. uh, we miss him here um, dearly. And I'm sure, I mean, my team does, and uh, but we do too, because uh, the LAN kind of lives, it, he's kind of like the heart yeah. of it all. So. At least the, the kidneys... Yeah, Liver. kidneys. Yeah. Maybe, maybe sneak it would be the heart, I guess. <laughs> but, He's um, the stomach. <laughs> true, true. We're kind of all just living in his stomach. Aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds. Uh, that sounds great. I'm just glad you said. Um, it I want to take this opportunity yeah. though, because we had a huge donation oh, from shit. ITA uh, or IT auction in Swedish um, oh. ITA store. Um, so that was uh, ten thousand. Swedish yeah. crowns, so that would be about 900 bucks. Damn. Um, so thank you so much to uh, Matthias and Nicholas. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I, th I, I believe they're in the venue as well. Oh, okay. So that's very cool of them to show up and see what, what we do. Then and they can the yell at me if I spell their names wrong. Yeah, it's Matthias and Nicholas. Um, C or K, no idea. <laughs> One of those. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you so much. And uh, Thank you for coming out here too, and uh, to see everyone playing Quake and see what we do in the production, yeah, and um, and all of that. So thank you so much for that donation. It means a lot for us and for the players. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Well, with that said, we're going to be looking forward to our final quarterfinal here. Yes, Fraggers United and, uh, and firing slackers. Firing slackers. Yeah, yeah, that. that that's gonna I'm going to stumble over that a few yeah, times. Me yeah, me too, me too. I mean, <laughs> I'm so used to saying slackers. I'm so used to saying firing squad. Firing slackers doesn't really make sense to me, but it's a very strong team. Um, the Fraggers United. Is this uh, Lethal hopping on with us? Is that yes, what's happening right yes, now? Yes, so thank God. <laughs> uh, so I actually missed the sudden death interview. I didn't get to listen to it. Yeah. So I need to watch that back later. I know you've been juggling a lot, but yes, uh, it's, um, it's a group effort here. Yeah, but we managed to get oh. two amazing commentators two for the next one. I want to bring them in very soon as they are getting set. And um, I'm, I'm sure you're going to be happy about this one. I am. Yep. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and after that, we're on to the semis after this. Absolutely. So we're going to have Lethal and Pepe, which I'm happy to see them, but it also means that it means that Pepe's bodega has been closed, hasn't yeah. it? Unfortunately, you're right, Jahar. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I managed to uh, sneak out of a couple of beers before we had to close down, but uh, <laughs> apart from that, we had a good run. Uh, yeah, we had some good games. Mm -hmm. We were in the same group as Sudden Death, though, mm -hmm. which we, who we just saw play, and they had a great form, and uh, we didn't really pack as heavy as a punch as the Snackers did. No, so not really. Um, unfortunately, that was a 2-0 for them. It was a 2-0 for them. Uh, but uh, just to stay on that topic, we did actually uh, manage to push um, what was their, their last last years? What, what were they called? The, la <laughs> the last, last. What was their name? <laughs> I can't remember. Something with last. Uh, <laughs> anywho, uh, it was a close one. I Never think we mind. lost by 
eight frags or something like that. Yeah, we so. lost by eight frags. It was a uh, it was a terrible moment in the final hunt on DM3. Yeah, what happened there at the end? <laughs> I heard you heard you shout. <laughs> You've heard the story, you and screamed. everyone in the land heard me shout. Uh, we were chasing frags. We we're behind by like six or seven frags. We we're chasing after them. I finally got an RL, got my RA, and managed to like run around the entire map and not find anyone. Rocket jump up to the lifts on DM3. Yeah. Find everyone standing there and immediately get spawn telefragged by Rocket. So that you had a juicy spot to like <laughs> pick a couple of three, four frags, and instead you got uh, telefragged. Yeah. So that was that was fun. Well, I feel it feels good to know that uh, I couldn't have done anything to help that out, help you out in that situation. You managed yeah. to fuck it up by yourself, so. So instead of, uh, <laughs> it's always nice to have you with me, Lethal Wiz, because you're like brutally honest. Not in a nice way, but just brutally honest with me. You I know, appreciate that's that. That's what friends are for, right? <laughs> exactly. So we're instead is, is it true gonna that we're going to be watching uh, Fergus United go up against uh, yeah. Firing Slackers? This is, is going to be a tough one. Zero, for Paradox. Do you have the party coming up? Oh, we're about to start. It's hard to say. Baiting us. No, no, no delay for us. No delay for us. Oh. Of course you had to go there oh, somewhere this during this cast. I thought you we were going to wait for a bit. Well, <laughs> but wow, a strong 
point taken. Rutgers United. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was about to say they so they were really committed to the quad and, and they got it. So. Oh, uh, Rusty thinking about exiting that teleporter there. Scared that there might be an RL waiting for him on the other other side. But Razor has already retreated back to the mega, and now they found they found another RL. So Rusty being the lone RL on his team, and keeping the yellow safe. This is going to be a very tough spot here for Fraggs United because the next RL and the quad are going to be up at roughly the same time. Yeah, and they need to, um, if, if they can, they can uh, close down this GL area and uh, make sure to have a decent stack coming into next quad. They'll be doing fine. Yeah, oh, Rusty taking some damage here by Razor, but manages yeah, to find a kill. 7 HP left. They can he take help. the quad? No! Where's his team? Help. Oh, Reppy stealing the yellow there, but here, oh. Oh, and he even gets a pack. Oh, that was so close. Oh, one uh, more of those. It's so hard defending Mega. You've got the RL, but you're so exposed. I'm still thinking about that that quad uh, moment there where, yeah, uh, was it Rusty? Um, probably was, yeah. yeah. And he was all alone, and he was the sole uh, rocket launcher, I think, on Team Fragus United. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't want, never want to be be uh, around quad alone with a oh yeah that is weapon. so that is so yeah. disturbing because you really sh you're shouting where are my teammates where are my teammates come help have me have you out. heard that before uh, from you yes yeah yeah okay but it seems like you're off, you you're wandering off on your own man you're a lone, <laughs> okay, you're a lone okay. ranger okay so that's how it is <laughs> that explains why I feel all alone all the time maybe I have turned off my mic or something well, I'm here with you I'm great. And with Reppy, we're going to find Kip, an easy frag there. But oh. the quad's coming out. Paradox immediately taken out. So no quad here. This is going to be an important part now. When a quad is denied, you really want to find all the firepower and all the resources, The uh, specifically the rockets, because there aren't too many of them. No, that's There's why the, uh, the GL area is super important to, uh, to hold down. Because, exactly. Uh, that's 15 rockets if you and count the, the grenade launcher as well. So... Uh, and a perfect display of that. Reppy's showing right here, mm -hmm. keeping this area very safe. But as you can see, he only had the yellow armor, so he's taking down the health. Oh, some boomsticks out here. Nope. He'll be all alone. He'll be safe. And that is why I really love this map. I, you, you need to be so conservative with your ammo. Uh, For sure. And that is a skill of SO. And you're, I mean, it's hard to get any armor as well. Sure, there's a green armor, there's a yellow, but that's yeah. it. Um, As I said to you, to Jahar uh, yesterday, the green armor is, it's like a mimic of an armor. It's not really. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it shows what do you mean? numbers. It's well, it doesn't is really it the color function your, as an armor. Or the amount of uh, protection it gives you. <laughs> well, it blocks what? 30% of damage taken? Because I'm partially a colorblind, so uh, I shouldn't be uh, um, commenting so you're on green armor. Because you that's have the yellow armor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck sorting that out. <laughs> We'll, yeah. have to we'll have to change the the end game uh, color of your armor then if it's bothering you. You, you could change it to blue. Swap it so it looks like it's red. <laughs> yeah, that would do the trick. <laughs> I don't All know right. how helpful that is, but Reppy here before a quad. Quad's gonna be coming <laughs> up in about ten seconds now. Where's the timer? There. No, that's the mega. Where's it's the funny though. I mean, it's it's even more it haven't okay. really looked like they're in such a big. Um, sub control on firing slackers, but uh, yeah. they're actually up 50 frags, and that's a lot on E1M2. That is a lot, and it's o we're only five minutes into this yeah. map here. Coming in hot, Reppy with the rocket launcher, got some yellow left, Might and be, he's uh, got a another one of those games where we get to call Reppy a rapier. Wait, where is it? Just me? <laughs> or that's that's just you. That's just you. Okay. Four RLs now oh, in the hands of firing slackers. Oh no, is he gonna hunker down on the RL? No, he's gonna leave it. All right, leave it alone, Reppy. Give him a ch give him a chance. Nothing in the what hands of Fraggers United slackers. right now. Fantastic amount of players. I mean, we know that Fraggers United is it's actually one of the oldest clans that's uh, still few active. Snorters. Sorry. Furious orders. What were yeah, Fraggers who are United? We about? Oh, Fraggers United. Yeah, yeah. Fraggers United have been around since uh, like early 1997, I think, and they're still active. They have, they've probably been in every tournament since every four on four tournament since. And as you say that, we 
here that the dinner is served. But oh. uh, you and I will have to wait another, I would say, at least 27 minutes. <laughs> at at <I'm> least. <laughs> at least 27 minutes. But now Koki has found an RL. Oh, uh, immediately taken out there by Repi at the yellow armor. He's uh, so healthy right now, and so is Razor, both carrying a rocket launcher and a yellow armor. Yeah, uh, Repi haven't uh, died yet in the last few minutes, I think, as I say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, we know we shouldn't say that, but we kind of have Razor to. Razor haven't died in... <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that to him. <laughs> the pure innocent man. Uh, but he actually has a decent stack now. Yellow and Rocket Launcher going in for the quad. An easy quad pickup here. So <laughs> that is so funny. I, I, so, uh, I can really relate to this. Zero was actually at quad with a Rocket Launcher, but he has <laughs> had a low stack, and he was like, ah, nah, I'm out of here. You, you go with this. <laughs> this is like the only map where you, you're not too keen on um, standing waiting for quad if you're not super stacked. Yeah, for sure. But they had the whole place locked down. And really showing some restraint there, not shooting too many rockets because there are so many teammates around and it's a tiny map. You don't want to send those rockets flying because they might just hit a friend. A hundred frags, over a hundred frags in score difference right now. That is that is actually That's massive rough. on E1 and 2. Really rough. But you know, one, one RL at a time, if they can find them and take them out, it's not impossible. We, uh, we're following the racer now, so which is kind of the most boring POV right now because he's standing in yellow, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, not, not yeah, or in general. Uh, no, but uh, it, it would be nice to see because I f kind of feel like they might be locking down uh, the, the RL area as well. Yeah, since their, their frag league is increasing. We can see that Razor has been doing the kind uh, of like a map lock we're we're looking at right now. Yeah, so this is his second quad run, and this time around he'll be scour uh, running around the map searching for any frags he can find. Whoa, that was a close, close bore there with the quad rocket. Manages to avoid it just about, and oh, if he he if, oh, if he's backed up here, don't go frag. through. Ooh. Oh, you're so ner I get nervous. Yeah. Because I, every time I do that. Like I see into the future. Sense. I mean, like a half a second. So, and it was so close. So, trying to navigate his way back to yellow here. No yellows right now on team FSR. No yellows. It's usually One a good bet uh, to a spectate racer, though, on this map. You really. Here's Kalki here. though. Oh, so close to getting taken out by a stray rocket there from Razor. Can he find the frag here? Yes, he can. There's a pack. You can't keep it with 9 HP though. You've got to take those. Oh, that Do you is know so how hard. you pronounce uh, Kalki on yep. uh, on Blekinge uh, Mall? Kalki. Sölki. <laughs> so there you go. Now you know. We'll see yeah. if we can watch For those more interested in, in Swedish dialects, we'll be having more of that very soon with Lethal Wiz here on the on the comms. Alright, looks like we're 10, 15 seconds away from quad, which means that uh, Rippy will probably want to wait for the Mega and then... If he's going to go for it at all, they have four rockets yeah. again. Yeah, you're right. I think he's actually going to lock down Mega here. Oh, he's getting he stressed here. Oh, yeah, that was stolen. This was Very stolen. well played there by okay. Kalki. Or no, that was Kip, sorry. Does he? Okay, I thought he was going <laughs> to wait for the Mega anyway, but he was kind of low on ammo, I think. Yeah, and all the health packs had already been taken, so he would have to wait for a long while. And Paradox, though, he's going to wait exposed. for that Mega because he knows his... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you only made it look like oh, a fool there. Yeah, he Thank should have the time on that now. Yeah, yeah there, there you go. go. Nice. Some easy boomstick and doing, making like, making his job so much easier with that quad. The boomstick in is already oh. on point on these players. Okay, but looks like we're getting ready to watch Sierra pick up a rocket launcher. Is he guarding the rocket launcher now? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I think because oh, seeing, that's dirty. That, you, you, you see this. I mean, they're almost up 200 frags. And yeah. The only reason you can get those kind of scores is when you uh, lock down uh, Rocket Launcher as well, because that's pretty much a map lock on this. Yeah, the entire map being locked down, including the RL. One thing to say about that is that you you can't really replenish your armor at all uh, and get back there quick enough, because the only way out is through some water and some 
Oh, Razor, really scary what are quarters. you doing? Ah, yeah, Razor goes down, but they can afford that, I think, because there's still three more Whoa. launches. Look, just, Rebbe just launched him straight into yeah. the air there. They're trying to make an attack here. They probably know that Reppy is not really too stacked here on the armor side, but they're not continuing the push here. 200 frags, eight minutes to go. I wonder what you're, they were, uh, what they're saying on on, uh, the on voice now on the voice channel for uh, firing slackers. Yeah, Team FSR. Being one of those teams filled with uh, very calm and collected players. And What's the communication like? Are you standing there, rock launcher? You're yeah. timing it? If there only was a way, we could find out. If there was a way. <laughs> <laughs> well, a quad run beginning here from Reppy, doing some quick jumps, making quick work Beautiful. of HTO, Horatio. He went on to Don quicker. Oh, the buckshot. I know that's your favorite. Yeah, it is. The quad is beautiful. The quad buckshot. It's just, Ooh. oh. It's like hot, a hot knife through butter. Yeah. Get all things Slicing with, through the enemies there with the pellets. Some nice leg work there by Reppy. Yeah. Just cruising around the map. What is that, that quad? This is when I'm too done quicker. <laughs> Do we have any speedrunners or like yeah, uh, we do. attempting speedrunners? Uh, <laughs> well, we have uh, attempt to uh, recall, actually. Uh, he did speedruns? Yeah, not, not in the Quake world, but in uh, some weird uh, some weird game that I can't remember, really. Oh, okay. But that was, that was the, the kind of speedrun. Oh, yeah, run, I was thinking uh, of Quake 1 he, he has a world record. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, it was only him and two other guys who played it, but <laughs> still. The only guy in the whole world. Wow. That's something. That's something. So All here's right. Rusty with a quad, but only a boomstick to his name. Can't really find any ground. Oh, they're trying to push through here to the Mega. Go through. All right. You got assistance. Not sure really what they're... Oh, I don't know what they're... No. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they, they kind of knew, probably knew that there were two RLs in there, and they didn't want to commit dropping one, one RL. So Yellow yeah. is up in a, in a second or two. Unfortunately, Kip goes down there, so they're back to zero RLs now. Okay. And FSR have three. Yeah, it looks like FSR are content with giving away a quad every now and then to uh, Frags United. Yeah, Reppy about to pass 100 frags. He's been super solid this entire lineup. He actually man. killed Zero because he didn't want to give away the quad. <laughs> That's so eager. All right, Reppy with the quad now. Going in for the Mega. But will he find any enemies here? He finds Kip. Oh, nice. And he finds Horatio. And now what? Where is he going to be looking for Jesus, frags? It's actually 250 frags there. Yeah. That's rough. That's I can't really remember rough. seeing these kind of scores on one of two. <laughs> the slight pause there. Wait, wait for his teammate to, to <laughs> die and yeah. then and shoot. There. I didn't even attempt to shoot the boomstick at the enemy. Why? <laughs> he, no, I he had a great him opportunity. Have it. Just, yeah, just, yeah. To, just help him out. He but worked no. his ass off for that frag, so why not just get, <laughs> give it to him? Passing 100 yeah. frags here is Reppy. Real a, bro. With a quad coming up in oh, five seconds. Oh, he's going in. Grenade spam here. Beautiful but he's, play by Re wow. Reppy. The movement on this oh, character. Oh, the timing. Whoa. Oh, and then he did. <laughs> okay. Well, that one's, that one's for the show, right? Exactly. <laughs> that makes for a perfect reel, you know? Yeah, you want exactly. those uh, uh, frag reels? You wanted them to end, like. <laughs> on, a <low> note? <laughs> <laughs> on a low note? On a low note. So he did all this amazing stuff, and yep. then he yes. shot <laughs> in a <the> wall. <laughs> Just to shut it down. We're, I'm done. <laughs> I'm hoping there, there's going to be some highlights saved from this tournament. We've seen some amazing runs. Oh, Razor down to 13 HP, but no one spawns close enough to finish the job. Oh, finds the health boxes so perfectly Come here. Come on, where, where's your... Okay, I thought he uh, was going to use the boomstick there for finish him off but had to find some rockets navigating his way back to yellow here and just as the next quad is coming up racer is probably gonna go for the yellow 
No, and he actually All takes right. the quad. Yeah, the yellow's not going to be confident up enough to. Stolen by Kulki here. Ooh. Oh, one HP. Oh. Very nice job there with the super nail gun. Yeah, he got nailed. The weapon that is the second most like efficient on this map. Like, not saying the buckshot isn't efficient, but without SMG the quad, is with, yeah, very effective. Here. Without the quad, the True. super nail gun matters so much on this map. Mm -hmm. And there are two of them, so you can pick one up yeah. here by the mega and the other one underneath the bridge where the GL is. Yeah, it's really worth just go to the mega if it's uh, available just to uh, just to get that SNG there. Maybe before quad you go up the stairs and, and uh, just go to head to head. On. Usually you can sandwich yeah. an enemy rocket launcher at quad. Yeah. And I've noticed so many so many players are good at keeping uh, the the top of the stairs by the quad there. They're keeping that safe. Yeah. With the super nail. Yeah. Gun. It's super effective. You, you squeeze against the uh, the wall like that, and then they, whenever someone tries to move up, move up, you just take a side step. And yeah. Deny them. So 31 rockets here on zero. No armor though. Can he survive this? Yeah, he's got some fresh HP there, but it looked like. For Agus United, we're going to make a push for it here. There's he another. has a Megan. Oh, my goodness. There goes Kulki try, uh, back Sulky. backpedaling in. Sulki. Uh, I think we have a close. new uh, what was that? high score go coming up. I 354 to 77 on E1M2. I don't know if that's a high score, but it, it is impressive. They've... They they haven't stopped. They're they're down to two rocket launchers right now, but that's not nothing, man. No, but I, I like it from FSR as well. I mean, they uh, even if they're confident going into this game to win, they still wanna. I mean, really play it tight, win uh, those, uh, in, just to like really get, get to try out your team play. Uh, yeah, for sure. Having someone stand RL for half the game just to make sure you yeah make sure tp is up to up to snuff before the next snuff, game yeah. yeah so with the second to last quad running out here paradox has done some heavy work with the buckshot right there and doing more work with the rl some heavy fighting going on here at bridges but they they can't seem to hit paradox at all he's just hiding behind his teammates Oh, tight squeeze here. Mm -hmm. 23 HP. Can they find him now? They walk, yeah, oh, yeah, he, they walked uh, out. They wanted to try yeah. it. Unfortunate, though. That's Couldn't the thing. really find him. So he's going to be backing off here into the mega room. Collect some HP. Oh. Oh, whoa. So he's taken out. This last quad goes Kip to the, the hands of, of Kip. Yep, and he has some armor left. Maybe he can. No buckshot, though. Oh, that's unfortunate. It looked like he was about to get a frag there with the quad, but he had he really uh, do it. gained some speed down the stairs, maybe just to uh, get up in Sierra's face. Yeah, probably. If he if he'd done the the nice jump there when you, yeah, you land like at the bottom of the stairs, yeah, yeah exactly. He could have probably pushed him away with the with the one twenty-five points. Nice attack there by Razor. Holy oh, hell, coming no. in hot. Gonna get taken like out. Can... Zero, very close to dying here. <laughs> it's pretty much a free for all now. Oh, they all just right. couldn't reduce his health hit points down to zero. So, uh, Reppy, Zero, they're all just showing off right there with uh, the frag count. FSR not breaking 400. I don't know if that's a moral victory, but. Could be one. They won the map at least. I think they'll take whatever they can get. I suppose that map was. Uh, Fraggers United's uh, pick, and the next one is going to be, yeah, it's going to be FSR going to be picking DM2. Looks like uh, Horatio was texting uh, his wife that he's coming home early or something. <laughs> I think he'll, he'll stick around. I hope so. There are still yeah. people in the spectator area, and they're, they're just going to be adding up as, as more teams get knocked out. That means more butts in seats in the spectator area, we right? We'll actually uh, have uh, some more... Uh, uh, guest appearances, n not on, on stream, but here at the venue. Uh, you have some friends coming over here? I have some friends coming over, one, yeah. One of those are uh, quite a notable name, at least. Yeah, not in Quake World, but he's no? uh, uh, a, a well-known uh, Counter-Strike player. Forrest is going to be showing up mm -hmm. with some buddies of mine and spectating the last, uh, the last games here, so that's going to be fun. 
Yeah. Oh, by the way, shout out to these amazing decorations on our sides, right? Yeah. Beautiful. They're real. They're not green screen. Look. Amazing stuff. I just want to shout those out because of those I'm so proud of these them. Home? Um, no. Um, maybe. All right. Let's see. That's a maybe. Do you want one? Which one yeah. do you prefer? I want the, the big one. To, uh, They're all have the same size. size. All right. Yeah. Kicking okay. it off. Apparently, everyone was ready but us. First well, quad goes to Kip. Right? Kip He's actually uh, got the, the last quad on, on E1 M2, and he now he gets the first on the M2. Perfect. Yeah. So he's going to have a secret here, a secret red armor. And, it, he's, and they're up. is he in time they're, for this they're low? They're in the lead now, Fragus United. Yeah. Not by much, but still, right. there's a lead. Get that. Nice one. Nice one by Fragus United. Can they keep this, though? Two rockets right now on FSR. Looks one like in the hands of Reppy and one in the hands of Paradox. Paradox waiting for the next secret. Keeping Telly safe. Okay, so we're closing in on next quad. Who's in a better position? Oh, we see an attack here from Rupi. Big Room. That's hard. Reppy's kind of low, night. though, but he gets the Mega, so maybe he wants to make a run for it. Yeah, yeah, Reppy's going to go for it. It's okay. not even contested. No. That's, a, that's a pity, actually. Oh, but look at that. Oh, no, oh. the angle on that rocket. One more rocket would have killed Reppy, too. Some boomsticks might do it as well. No Bomb spam. Oh, there it is. I was just going to say, no spam coming <laughs> through path there. And uh, lo and behold, I, what I say becomes reality. Yeah. All right. Well, this is a close game. But the thing is now, you need to uh, make sure you have timing and be on time for the next uh, low as well as the next high. Exactly. The next low is going to be R just before the quad. The Razor so. probably got the memo from Reppy that uh, Mega is about to spawn at high floating because Reppy had it before he went down. Oh yeah, that's true. So he's going to want that before the next yeah. quad. And we can see down in the bottom right there corner that they're <laughs> both carrying two rocket launchers. So this quad will be so crucial for how the Good. game goes on for the next two minutes. Pulky actually delays the low uh, launch now, so that might throw Free fire flickers off of it. But on the other, other hand, uh, Paradox doesn't really care. He just goes uh, on a quick killing spree. <laughs> Why not? On a killing spree, and the killing spree has just begun. Going through big room here with just a boomstick. Not you utilizing the rocket launcher until he Ooh. got this far. He's a bit low here. Can they find the frag? Yes, they can. So now Razor, no, he's not alone with the rocket launcher because Zero has one as well. Running around around the quad area and the high RL is up, the low RL is up. Kulki's gonna pick up that one. And Paradox with a fresh rocket launcher there. So three against two rocket launchers. Look at launchers that, right good for Para, huh? Yeah, he lost one, but he gained one. He died one. tragically with that rock launcher, guys. He wins some, lose some. Got a fresh one. Oh my goodness! Go. Did Para die? No! No. No. How? He was so low. Zero with a quad and gets the Mega. Oh, no. And Para is still so low. Oh my goodness, he survived through that. And now, and they, now, have, uh, now they have a clock on the low RL oh, as well. Oh, that's too close! That's that rocket oh. Yeah. And the red just spawns. Perfect timing on that. Zero twenty. That can be so feet. frustrating with the M2 though. When you're so close, sure. and, yeah. and all of a sudden there's a mega and there's a red armor, and it's like nothing will ever happen. Oh my goodness! Zero doing work here at low RL, denying everything from Fires United, stealing the low rocket. Did he get like this um, this role by by his team to be the most annoying guy? Because on Probably. E1M2, he got to stand on e, uh, at RL and just deny the rocket launchers. Yeah, uh, maybe th maybe they've, they've put him out to be the villain. Yeah, so we're going to see him standing low in back room and just uh, uh, just denying them any low rocket launcher. Oh, yeah, just the worst. Oh, we have some oh sorry, some some technical difficulties, difficulties here, but Reppy picking up that low RL, stealing it from Gregor United. Oh, Beautiful. oh, the... Dirty work with the box shot there. Okay, so, and low rock launcher was delayed by a five seconds or something like that. Should be up now. 
No. Is Rippy gonna wait for it? Yeah. This situation is so hard for rocket launchers against Zero. It's even even more delayed now. It took firing uh, firing slackers just three minutes basically for that oh. even start. Oh my goodness! You see Rippy. that? Th that's the why the entire team of Fridays and are there, but they can't bring him down. No, but that, they managed to delay the low, which made Reppy uncertain when it was going to spawn. So he, he extended the time that he was there, and yeah. in the end it was too long. So he got floated down. That's why that can be a nice little thing to do every now and then if possible. Definitely, definitely. It would also mean that if the quad goes down to, to uh, deny the low rep launcher, he will miss it. All this right. might happen. Great yeah. work there by Fraggers United, denying that quad any more access. Now, oh yeah, let's listen in to Firing Slackers, what their comms sound like right now. Can you push low? I can't. I can't. Oh, okay, I can, I can. They got it. I hit him, I hit him. Nice. Dead. Do you have the pack? Wait, fuck, we're all here. Yeah. Secret soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming for secret. I think it's empty. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, pack and secret, no rockets in the tongue. I can take what? I took high. Super weak. Think well. Ah, he got the rocket. Oh, it's low timing. Okay, he's going into lava. I got it. 21. Rocket at Teller, maybe. We need secret. It was in lava. He died in lava. Red Mega safe. Red Mega safe. Okay. Uh, uh, one was low. Well, 21. Can you take it or? I can it. Many enemies uh, slipping now. Just took high. Order. Okay, I, I stole the Teller. One more slipped. I killed him. Oh no, no, that's one. Oh no, it's done. Somebody took uh, high Mega. Nice. Yeah, I slipped. I'm, I'm spamming Teller exit. Oh. You can save. save. Yeah, as All you right. heard that. Um, we're talking about earlier that there was some confusion about what, what time the URL was going to spawn. Yeah, one of those things that's that's hard to keep track of. We noticed there that uh, fire uh, fire slackers were all at low URL at one point there, and <laughs> Reppy realizing their mistake, like, oh no, we're, yeah. we're letting go of half the map here. We're we're concentrated on on such a small area. Reppy with four HP, how is he not dead? Come on, this is just unfair. Even poking his head out through that window. Walking freely, like, come on. Okay, oh, that's so, uh, that's luck. That's four HP, high division oh, luck skills. Make it for, yep, it does. So uh, fire is like this is truly European team. We have a Swede, a Dane, a Dutchman, and a uh, Hungarian. Hungarian. Yeah. And now zero, as he said earlier. Wow, being the end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the hardest jump in Quake is crossing the floaty platforms there. The second hardest one is probably Red Armor Mega at Backroom <laughs> on DM2. Same map. Incredible how hard this map is. But yeah, as you said earlier, Zero taking the position of being the most annoying guy on the team now. Mm -hmm. Parking himself at low RL. Rafi now has the uh, timing there on the low RL. Oh wow! Gets taken out though in secret. That's that's that's, that's always a, tough, a neat trick spot. to go for when you're uh, down like that. You sneak into secret, uh, pick up the red, and then you stay if you know that they're they're gonna try to go for low. And all of a sudden you get a free red launcher from from a pack. Yeah. And it's not too uncommon. And usually, usually when you do that, they're they're really not prepared for it. I mean, everyone everyone tries to look down there and see like, is there anyone here? But sometimes you you're just too stressed, so you just jump in. Yeah, and I know, that, and your heart really sinks when you do the jump, and you realize yeah. halfway through that shit. This, I, I did that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, look if royally messed up. Oh, the beautiful double quad rocket frag there. Rappy keeping low safe. Oh, how many frags are that? Is that? That's five frags already with this quad. Well, looks like Rep is the uh, designated quad driver for uh, 
firing slackers. For sure, a beautiful quad run here by Repi. And still not losing his mega. Oh, he should work on his boomstick though, but... Uh... <laughs> well, there's time for that. Later on. Now, we're in 10 minutes left. Halfway through this map. And the poor Fraggers United have only collected 26 yeah, frags so far. rough scoreline. Um, They're up against one of the favorites for this LAN event, for this tournament. That yeah. is rough. And I feel like their uh, Fraggers Slacker's chances to at least take it themselves to the final has increased by the unfortunate uh, uh, event that BPS had to cancel his uh, World Four tournament. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We're um, we're gonna we're gonna miss nothing him against the rest of the night. Uh, Rio, but I mean, when you, they play together, and BPS yeah. being such a strong uh, offensive player on the team, usually, uh, I mean, that, that that really makes them a whole lot weaker. So yeah, for sure. Firing slackers, Commando uh, feels like they are the favorites to, to reaching the final. Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. Uh, Don't doubt it. But look at this. Four rocket launchers now again. Or still, I can't remember <laughs> if they lost one. Yeah, they lost uh, one in secret there a while ago, but FSR just holding down the fort. So heavy. One guy manages to slip. Gets instantly taken out. They're just cleaning the place of rocket launchers and armors now. Fire up. Uh, Inching even closer to a, a 300 score line, um, and that's just after uh, 11 12 minutes, so uh, they have plenty of time to extend this score. Yeah, even further, probably gonna be pushing uh, above 400 this, this time around. Razor pushing here without a red armor that's daring because he didn't know if they had a low rocket launcher there hiding behind, or maybe they did know because they've been there stealing them all the time. Racer being really cheeky here. <laughs> <laughs> the peekaboos are yeah. intense here. It's, it's really oh my goodness. <laughs> How? Look at this. How is he collecting HP frags still? still? <laughs> what? <laughs> They're just trying to squeeze him with that. He's got like five frags. And he's going to go for the yellow and he's going to make it out. Oh, that's so dumb. That's ridiculous. Now... The quad is about to spawn, which means that Fraggs and I are going to have a hard time picking up um, a rocket launcher here. Even be again, of course. Even again. <laughs> <laughs> the quad squish. It does the same amount of damage. Exactly. <laughs> so exciting. Trying to pick up, pick up the low RL. Unfortunate for Kip. He couldn't Ooh. really get it. See how he did the jump? Well, yeah, jumping over. Oh, that was close. Two more hits would have done it. And he uses the worst weapon <laughs> in the whole game. The gun. gun. It's only the worst if you don't hit it, hit with it. It has that measly sound as well. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's kind of boring. Yeah. It's like, is this a toy gun or a real gun? Come on. Bring me something that sounds way cooler, and then you find the super nail gun. And it's terrifying, and it's very loud as oh, well. Someone took a bath. That was Paradox, actually. Oh. <laughs> Fell into the lava. Well, Rusty here with an RL for Fraggers United. Let's see if he can actually make some work with it. They got three on FSR right now. Oh, he's going to contest oh, that no. quad load. Um, Probably should have waited for more teammates yeah, well, to, yeah. to disorient Repi there. The thing is, when you do that jump over the lava um, at low from, from back room, you, you, you can hear it very well from from no RL. So if you're with quad there, you just can react instantly. Oh well, gets taken out there. Repi does. So here's here's an opportunity. Maybe if they had more weapons, they only have a grenade launcher right now for Anderson United. So Razor can kind of jump up to the quad high with uh, just less than six minutes left to go. Quad coming up. Paradox wanna test this Lockwood quad. Yeah, let's see what work he can do. One rocket launcher here for Freddy's United on Rusty. Is he gonna be able to contest Very this no, now? No, Razor actually is gonna go with the quad this time. Decent stack of armor. Bread. A few rockets, although not that many. 
We're only down to his last rocket, which looks like he has realized his butt now. Oh, and so now he's pretty much he's worrying. Boom sticking here. Six to six eight. Oh. <laughs> oh, what? Two more hits would have done it. That's, that's unfortunate. That he's he going to try to go. Ah, oh, uh, there you go. That felt like a giveaway, Frank, right? Well, that I was an uncalled for. He could have. A yeah, success. it was more of an, more like an act of desperation there from Razor, trying to find some 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 space okay. in Red or Mega Room. So, Fergus United managed to slip from Telly to High, but uh, unfortunately no, off on the timing. No, exactly. No, no luck for them. Was trying to get that high aura. So. Next quad coming up, Paradox with it. Two rocket launchers for Frank's United right now. Rusty and Kip, can they find a way to kill this quad? Oh, close rocket, one more, that does it. Huh, Kip. Great way to end Paradox quad run there. He was probably not prepared for that. All right, Kip pushing path here. Zero is pretty low on health. health. Oh no, shoots it to oh. the wall, and there it comes. Who was that? That's zero not nice. Com com no, not zero. Oh, that was ganging laser. up on Kip like that at water. It's crazy to think that they can still like they're still in the game, which is which just just speaks about how quick players you're, approach you're the game. You're talking about, about yeah. There's snipers. no conceding. There's there's like we're gonna play this game to the end. We we're here. We're gonna play. No no reason to like be ah oh, GG. We give up. There. They want to test test themselves, and more props to him for it. Oh, look at the rockets raining in here from Kip. Zero so low. Finds some HP, and getting all the way down to low RL, and no issues, no enemies. We in haven't sight. seen Zero with uh, the quad very many times on DM2. This is one of the few. Yeah, he's uh, been keeping places safe. He's, as I mentioned earlier, he's been given the. Annoying or boring, but necessary role here. Keeping a lot of the areas just safe. He's doing now an admirable job. Again. Playing it safe. They're denying so much. And Kip has found his way into Quadway. So maybe he can backstab the entirety of FSR from up there. Let's <laughs> he's, got, he's out of ammo, so he has to oh, rely no. <laughs> on that buck shot. Okay. Quad coming up in five seconds. Can Kip find his way over there? Maybe. Maybe. Just maybe. But he gets taken out as the quad spawns and Razor picks it up. 53 HP left, though. Can he get Boomstick down here? No. Not enough spawns nearby. As Razor reaches 100 frags. Zero in a tight squeeze here at low. Oh, <laughs> what a great steal, but unfortunately it leaves a pack for a Reppy there. So Reppy's going to be able to secure the entirety of the back. Oh, beautiful. Passing 400 frags, two minutes left to go. Oh, aggressive play there by Razor. Aggressive. We're down to the last two minutes. <laughs> a lot of rockets. <laughs> Wasted there, but what are you I, do? I kind of feel for Fergus United here ending the, the tournament with a DM2 like this. It yeah, wasn't all rough. that nice, huh? No, it's rough. It's a really hard map. Like, once you're up against so good players, you know you're in for a bad time. Yeah, and as FSR, they really took no prisoners. They were super. Uh, they play, they play this one in real series. Yeah, for I sure. Mean, they could have, sure, they could have oh, given it more of an FFF. Players. F uh, free for all kind of game, <laughs> but uh, no, no. Three players on FSR are passing 100 frags here on this last map in the series. And the last quad is 30 seconds away. Well, F you. <laughs> all right, that's F two That's two. two for two. Oh, okay. We've done that now. Okay. Exhausted it. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to give it a few more minutes. <laughs> try it again. Well, you got 45 seconds, and... That is what's left of this game. Kip, a heavy stack here. Can they find a way to Boomstick Razor down? Oh, oh well, a rocket face. does it too. Right, so kick. Two rockets now in the hands of Fraggers United. 
three in the hands of FSR. Repi aggressively pushing the low here. 20 seconds to go. Just wants to find more frags and overtake Ooh. the lead yep. from Razor on the scoreboard. Six HP oh. left. He's going to go down. Repi is leaving a pack. Look at that. <laughs> Did well, he? All I right. He shot a boomstick there. Oh, <laughs> no need to hold the last RL there, Zero. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice thinking, but. Ah, uh, poor Racer. He didn't, didn't reach 100 frags. Uh, I sad. guess that's a storyline. <laughs> that's going to that's gonna haunt him later, is it? Yeah, definitely. Well, um, GG's well played. Firing Slackers. GG's well played. And take uh, it the result as expected. They uh, for made sure. a good run, Fraggers United. Yeah, for sure. I mean, E1, M2 is a hard map. And... What's, what's really hard about uh, playing DM2 on this level is that the first muni few minutes, you can probably get an even game going. Mm -hmm. And then later on, while you're, when you're approaching like the third, the fourth quad, that really mm. shows like, oh, no. Then we're it comes in trouble. all the timing, you know. Have we got uh, the communications on yeah. point? Who's going for the, the, lower, the low RL? Who's going for the high? Who's going for the quad? Who's exactly. Got the secret? Etc. You know. Yeah, the secrets are uh, you gotta really like push those through. Even if you're just a boomstick out, you don't have a RL, you really have to steal those because that is such an important armor for the guys keeping water and telly and the quad area safe. So if you don't get those, well, you're in for a bad time. Mm -hmm. So thanks. That's gonna be all for all for me and Lethal is here uh, throwing it over to Jahar and Andy once again. Thanks for having us here casting this last game. Uh, not last game of the tournament, of course. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, I think you had to rem remember my name for a second. Yeah. I felt that. I heard that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys go have some juicy burgers. Yeah, that I, I, were I had mine. Yeah, you did? I'm, I'm not even sorry. I don't usually get to eat at these things. This is kind of like, yeah. I feel like I'm getting soft in my old age. Yeah. But uh, Sneak is helping me get a little bit softer. I'm soft enough, but I still <laughs> haven't I haven't had the burgers yet. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> at some point, hopefully, I can get one oh, of those. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, what a it. beat up. Uh, what a beating yes. from um, FSR. Uh, firing slackers. Still can't really say that. It, it is a tough one, and unfortunately for us, it looks like we'll have to say it a few more times. I, at first, I thought, okay, you're going to take players from a good team and players from another good team and mash them together and maybe get like half of the performance out of it. But no, maybe it's like a additive rather than multiplicative effect. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Um, although um, it does mean that we have a pretty, pretty nice semi semi-finals between sudden death and uh, firing slackers, which is kind of, that, yeah, that's going to be interesting, especially with BPS gone, if that changes the dynamic or anything. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe we get to hear something from them themselves. Yeah, I'm going to check with Boov real quick. QH Land 24, another match is in the books for the 4v4, but this time it was a 2-2 two two that comes together to make one. How does it feel to be the bullies on the uh, playground? <laughs> Uh, it felt last game felt pretty good. Like very, uh, I think we all played pretty aggressively. Uh, lots of quad runs, lots of frags. So it's uh, fun games. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, big numbers, but uh, playing Dm2, practicing Dm2 is actually quite good, even though it's against a bit worse team, because you can practice the rotations and keeping control of the map and spawn fragging and like spawn fragging commando compared to fraggers united is not that different. So yeah, it's still good, good practice and fun. We had fun. <laughs> yeah, we definitely had fun. I mean, DM2 is a map where there's action from start to finish, especially with a team that doesn't give up. And uh, Fraggers United did what they could to to put pressure on. And uh, of course, it's difficult when we have a map lock, but uh, they're pressing on and they're really flooding us, which makes it not that easy to hold all position at the same time. There's only so many rockets on a map, but uh, yeah, it was fun and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's the same. I mean, it's it's good to just practice the rotations. That's why we actually picked the M2 because that's probably the map where we need to like practice a few things. We are missing a few K rotations, so I think it was it was great. So, a quick question in regards to who was the the loudest on the mic? Paradox. Well, 
To be fair, you've been more reasonable lately, I would say. Like we talked a bit about it. Like I think in Slackers, the the, the level of communication is a little higher, and in Firing Squad, it's a lot lower. And I feel like we met a nice middle ground now. Oh, hey, Sneaky, what's hey, up? Hey, you forgot your food. Oh, it's dinner time. Oh, is it is it dinner time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Swedish burgers. Oh, Swedish burgers. Yeah. Oh, from the Swedish chefs. Awesome. Well, thank you, Swedish chef. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm out of here. Coming back after no, all, no. he's going to go eat that burger. He's just out of there. <laughs> Thank you, Snicket. <laughs> Thank you, I Booth. love how the firing snackers were just like, what, what just happened? <laughs> Booth just left them. Yep. yep. And uh, firing slackers are going to leave us speechless with, uh, with the quality of their play. Which is a bit of a shame because it's our job to talk about them. Yeah. It's, it's the great irony. But uh, we're going to be coming into our first semifinal here. I'm just getting ready for that. Um, a lot of bells and whistles going into this. We're going to be covering uh, Commando and the Axemen up first. Yeah. They've both been kicking ass. Commando has the Milton on it, though. That's why yeah, it's Commando, not Commandos. Or the, or the Vala effect, if you will. Okay, um, okay. He's also up there. Yeah. I remember last year he completely dominated the DM3s and kind of won the land for them. Um, Milton, of course, always like that. That's a cheat code in itself, and just having Milton. Uh, but the Axemen, though, they've been playing so much lately. They've been practicing.